This is Sports Sound from BBC Radio Scotland. To European Sports Sound with me, Kenny McIntyre, and what is a massive night for Rangers? PSV Eindhoven stand in the way of Michael Beale's side and the prestige, the glamour, the riches of the Champions League. Rangers in the Champions League playoff round, live on Sports Sound from BBC Radio Scotland. He blows it full time whistle. Rangers are through to the Champions League playoff where they will meet PSV Eindhoven for the second straight season. They beat them 3 2 in aggregate to get into the groups last term. They're going to have to do the job. I'm not so sure about the, the things around revenge. Tillman pitches off the defender, squares it. SV nil, Rangers won, and 3-2, the Ibrox side lead on aggregate. It's two different coaches, and it's a lot of changes in personnel in both teams. Great ball in, and Suriel Desser has his first goal for Rangers. Everybody knows the Champions League. It's a massive opportunity, and now we are two games away. It's really close, but it's still really far. Lovely ball, brilliant! It's about setting the second leg up. We know we need to go across to Eindhoven and put in a fantastic performance, regardless of what happens. The corner comes in, drops to the edge of the area, it's a goal, it's in! PSV Eindhoven score! We're confident and, and, and we want to do something beautiful here. Oh, outstanding! Outstanding from James Tavernier! What a good start it's been by Rangers! So this one, we know we're in European football up to Christmas. It's what competition, and it's a fantastic opportunity for everybody. The referee has his whistle in his lips, and Rangers are mighty close now. Welcome to the show. We are live from Ibrox. A huge night ahead. Alongside me on the gantry, former Rangers players Neil McCann and Stephen Thompson, our chief sports writer Tom English and our big match commentator Liam McLeod. We'll get the team news in just a couple of minutes, Neil. But arriving here tonight, you can feel that sense of occasion, the buzz, the stakes will be massive tonight. Yeah, they are. Um, any European night's pretty special here, Kenny. Under the lights, even more so. I think there's a real uh, degree of trepidation, I have to say, amongst the Rangers fans. I walked in there and came across a few, and I mean, I wouldn't say they're 100% confident. I think there's a belief there because of the, the wonderful results that Rangers have managed to gain in European competition, when maybe others uh, others outside of the club might have thought, you know, they wouldn't get anything. So, huge night for the club. Um, they need a massive performance from the players on the pitch. I think they've got a, a performance from the fans in here. Um, the little band of PSV supporters over there are making some noise earlier <laughs> on. They're going to try get uh, get a bit of um, atmosphere going from their side. But if, if Rangers can come up with a huge performance, and it has to be a team performance, Kenny, it's not about individuals. Of course, individuals can make moments and match, matches, uh, um, can win games, but the team have to come up together. Uh, a real bit of cohesion about them, because I tell you, Kenny, this is a side that can attack and they'll have to do it together tonight if they do something special. Stephen, you were out in Geneva for us last week, similar to all of Rangers' performances this season. They were patchy, as Neil was saying there, a huge improvement is required this evening. Yeah, um, a massive improvement, really. This is a step up in terms of opposition. You're right to point out, Rangers have played in spells. There's been, in every one of their games so far this season, they've dropped their levels for 20-odd minutes, half an hour throughout a game, and it's not cost them so much, but you feel as though against PSV this evening, if they were to do that, then they might be punished. You can't do it against the better opposition. So it has to be a complete performance from them tonight. Defensively, they're going to have to be so switched on. I think here at Ibrox, I think that they will score tonight. It's just about making sure that they, they keep the back door shut. And as Michael Beale said there in that wee clip as we were coming in, you've got to make sure you're in the tie going away next week to... Uh, to Eindhoven, that's massively important. And the crowd, uh, as Anil points out, make a huge difference here um, on European evenings. The atmosphere's incredible. They've got to feed off that. It can work in two ways, because if you start well and you get the crowd behind you, it really boosts everybody on the pitch. And, you know, you just use that and feed off that. However, if it's the opposite way around and, you know, you don't start well and things are getting nervy, that also feeds onto the pitch. But what they've got to do is remember, this is a huge opportunity. You are two games away 
from being where every single team and every single player in the world wants to play two games away. Yeah, no doubt about that, Tom English. We'll, we'll hear from Michael Beale in a few minutes' time. We covered Rangers' European adventures last season. It was humiliation, embarrassment in the Champions League. But this club will be desperate to get there again for financial reasons and also for the players to test themselves against the very best. Yeah, and they'll be testing themselves against against a really, really accomplished team tonight. Um, you know, this is a team that uh, beat Arsenal in Europe last season, 2-0, beat Seville, 2-0, um, beat Ajax, 2-0, 2-0 and 2-1, and we know what Ajax did to Rangers. They're a serious team, loads of pace out wide, goal scorer up front, um, solid, move the ball quickly, accurately, a lot of dynamism. This is a massive, massive test for Rangers. If they want to get to that, uh, the filthy lucre, of the Champions League. Yeah, we can't wait for this kickoff. Eight o'clock start tonight. Let's then get the all important team news from Liam McLeod. No easy task these days, Liam, predicting a Rangers starting 11. No, but uh, I don't think it will come as any surprise that Michael Beale has kept things pretty similar to last week's second leg in Switzerland against Servette. Just one alteration from that one. Of course, he made a whole heap of changes for the Morton League Cup tie here on Saturday, eight in total, but the only change from the second leg and that draw in Geneva last week is that Danilo drops to the bench and Cyril Desser comes into the starting 11 for Rangers this evening. So it's Butlin in goal, Tavernier, Goldson, Suter, Barisic, Sifuentes, Jack, Raskan, Cantwell, Sima and Desser. And on the bench is uh, Robbie McCrory, the sub-goalie, Lundstrom, Lammers, Matondo, Dowell, Sterling, Wright, Davis, Balligan, King, Devine, and Danilo. So Rangers with seven and a half to eight million pounds worth of summer signings sitting among their subs bench this evening for this one. PSV Eindhoven, the school of thought is that they are stronger than they were this time last year. That's despite the fact they've been shorn of Cody Gakpo, who of course signed for Liverpool last season. He starred particularly in the first leg here in Glasgow against Rangers last season, that 2 2 draw. So the lineup for them this evening shows a couple of changes from the second leg against Sturm Graz in Austria last week as they got the job done very comfortable they were against the Austrian runners up over the two legs as they made it through to the playoff in this big rematch this evening. They've already gone on record as saying they are looking for revenge tonight. There's no Patrick van Anholt. He has been left at home. Vertessen has gone to the bench. So they start uh, in, with a debut in their defence as well tonight and the record signing, he was an injury doubt for this one. They broke their, their transfer record in the summer to sign Dutchman Noah Lang from Bruges, around 15 million euros. He was a fitness doubt. He starts tonight, as does Serginio Dest, who arrived on loan from Barcelona yesterday. So it's the Argentinian Walter Benitez in goal, he played both legs against Rangers last season. There's a few of them in the starting 11 who did likewise. Jordan Tez at right back. The centre backs, the Brazilian Andre Ramalo beside the Frenchman Olivier Boscali with Dest over at left back. He was born in the Netherlands, but he's a USA international and played all four of their matches at the World Cup finals last year. Uh, Joey Veerman, Ibrahim Sangari, who scored the opener here in that 2 2 draw last season, along with Ismail. Saibari and Morocco International making up the middle three and the front three, the young Belgian lot of hope is on this guy's shoulders, Johan Bakayoko who has started the season ever so well, he'll be on the right wing Noah Lang who I mentioned will be over on the left and the main strikers the experienced Luke de Jong who has managed four goals in his five appearances this season including scoring from the spot and their come from behind win over Vitesse Arnhem at the weekend, the PSV bench, two goalies on there, Drommel, Waterman, Sambo, Pepe, Till, El Ghazi, Shouten, Babadi, Land, Vertessen, and a certain Malik Tillman, who Rangers hoped would be back at Ibrox. Perhaps not in PSV colours, though. He's arrived on loan from Bayern Munich, as he was here last season. PFA Scotland, young player of the year he was last season as well. He left his mark in Ibrox. Rangers and their fans tonight will be hoping he leaves absolutely no mark whatsoever because if he does, it will be to the benefit of his new club, PSV Eindhoven. They've signed him for a, a loan fee of around about €1 million, Euros, I think. The referee, well, sorry, Kenny, the referee yep. tonight is very experienced Frenchman, Clement 
Turpan, who did Rangers defeat in Liverpool last season. He also, though, did their victory in Dortmund the previous campaign in the Europa League. Thank you to Liam McLeod. We'll get the lowdown on PSB from a Dutch journalist in about 20 minutes' time. Stephen Thompson, your thoughts on that Rangers starting eleven? Yeah, I mean, I think um, looking at last week's game, obviously there's big changes at the weekend for the Morton game here. You expected that and you expected big changes coming back into tonight. Seven of them from Saturday, just the one change from Servet. And, you know, you can't really argue with that. I think that um, for me, the, cent- the, the central midfielders last week, especially Raskin, I thought Raskin was absolutely brilliant his energy levels were incredible Jack did well protecting in front of the back four Sifuentes had a decent game but when you watch the game the player that was looking to light it up was Cantwell and whenever he got on the ball he brings a spark to Rangers he brings an excitement he puts the fans on their feet in the stadium and he's going to be a big player this evening um, for them the one question mark would have been in central forward areas Danilo last week for me struggled I said that during the game I didn't think he was offering enough in terms of what you know. What was he bringing to the game? Was he creating chances? Was he was his link-up play good? Was his movement very clever? Was he you know scoring goals? He wasn't doing any of those things for me. I'm not surprised to see him drop out the team, but I'm still not overly convinced with Dessers. This is a massive opportunity for him this evening in the in the starting lineup and such a, a huge game. Rangers have invested very heavily in forward areas uh, and as much as it's early doors I'm still not sure who I think is the main man for them I'm not even sure that Michael Wheel knows who the main man for them is up front Jack Butland of course made that fantastic save early on in the game over in Switzerland last week uh, in a one-on-one situation and you get the feeling if Rangers are to get something tonight you might need to pull off a few more of those saves Talk to us Neil about the system that Michael Beale prefers to play and the strengths and weaknesses of that well, last last week, Kenny, um, before the game, I was, I was doing it with, with Alan, and we were talking about Alan Hutton. We were talking about what what we felt that the system would be, and looked at it. I thought it would it would go with two up and Cantwell. I've been saying now for a couple of weeks. I think Cantwell's position off the left, although he's um, he's influential from maybe from a deeper line position in terms of trying to get balls through the, through the lines into the striker. I think he's better as a ten. And I was surprised that last week. Um, and how Rangers set up in the first half I thought they got they get murdered down the outsides um, and of course Michael had to address that with his coaching team he then went to the two up with Cantwell inside and how he combated the fullbacks going forward is that Sifuentes in the right and particularly Raskin in the left had an incredible shift as Tom was touching on the amount of work rate they did they went out there and shut the fullbacks off they will have to do similar to that tonight I think you'll see Rangers playing with two up and I think Cantwell off and I think they'll just separate a little bit I think they'll force um, PSV to try and play um, they've got the, the target man of course of going forward to look de Jong but you would you would like to think that that can be taken care of but I think Rangers approach tonight will be very aggressive now talking about that that three midfielders we're asking Jack and Sifuentes they have, one of them have to get in contact with Cantwell, Dessers and Seema and if it's uh, if Tavernier and Barisic getting up on there so it's a nice balance I would be targeting Noah Lang I watched a lot of them. Um, obviously, Jack Hendry was at Club Bruges. He's a wonderfully talented player. I'm not saying he's lazy, but on on a lot of occasions I watched them playing. Um, they reneged, let's say, on a lot of that defensive side of the game. And I think Tavernier's best ability is, is stretching teams. And the way Rangers are playing, I think he'll get lots of room. And that's if Sima, if Sima's playing off the right and he allows Cantwell to get in touch, if Sima can play slightly left side of that centre-back on the left-back and occupy the full-back, that'll allow Tavernier to run off a of line. So I think it could be a real uh, source of joy if they're brave enough but they have to be brave tonight Kenny they can't sit back in this team because they attack in fives and sixes Uh, Do you you have concerns with the lack of pace in the Rangers side? I think pace is always a brilliant commodity to have whether you're utilising it That's because you had it Yeah well (laughs) (laughs) well, I know but but, but you you, you can have pace but you have to be in in situations and games where you can you can utilise the pace um, well, well, PSV use a high line. Dessers isn't going to. I, I know. I know. Michael said at the weekend. It looks like he's getting fitter. He yeah. will be getting fitter. I think Seema's uh, place in the team is his leggy. He can run. Yeah. He can stretch the game. I think that's why he's chosen him over Danilo. Because I think Danilo, um, he knows the league. Uh, he might know a lot of these players. He's sharp. He's really. I think he'll come good for Rangers. But I think Dessers and Seema might be a better partnership because they can stretch it. 
I, I, I see your point about pace. I don't think Barisic is overly quick. I don't think Tarnier is overly quick. Rassin can, can get about the pitch. You look at the others, there's not lightning pace in it. So you have to find a different way. And I think that's why I do believe we'll see the two strikers we can't well just off because I thought it was miles better when they did it last week in the second half. Tom, very early days, of course, for this squad. But w what are your thoughts at the moment on the players that Michael Beale has pulled together? Because as the guys are saying, he's been heavily backed by the Rangers board. Yeah, he has, and, and it is the, you know the emphasis on early days, and it is. So you you can't make kind of snap judgments on players this this early. Um, but you look at the track records, you look at the goal scoring records of of Adessers, two and five last season, ten and thirty four the season before, twenty one and forty six the season before that. That's decent, you know. That's decent. That shows you that this guy, if he settles, he could become a dependable goal scorer. Uh, Danilo not so impressive. Lammers, I know he's not an, like an out-and-out -out striker. His his numbers are really really poor, um, and I think he has a bit to find. Sima is a very young player, but he had a brilliant season with Sparta Prague a few years ago. If you can get that player back, then it's you know it's it's a potential real weapon for Rangers. But it's it's early days. It hasn't settled down. I think these guys need a couple of big marquee wins to calm everything down. Uh, and maybe it's, maybe tonight's tonight, but it's it's a ju the jury is out on on nearly all of them. But it could only be the jury is out. There's not too many Furahashis out there that come in from a different country and bang instantly, like from day one practically they hit the ground and they're and they're banging in the goals. These guys have taken a bit of time to settle. I know Michael Beale was saying to the to the media says, look, come on, let's give them a break here. You know, give them a little bit of time. They're in a new country, and I think that's fair enough. But this is Rangers and, and fans don't, don't listen to that you don't know no they don't <laughs> no. No, they don't but you know maybe tonight's tonight I, I look at PSV and I I, I I looked at as much footage as I could yesterday and today and I watched as much of the Sturm Graz matches as I could they look a very serious team they they'll look, got this right from the start tonight won't they they'll be in the front yeah, foot yeah, right from the you, start you, you, look, you look at out, out wide right they, they, they cause mayhem out, out wide with Bakayoko and Lang incredibly pacey brilliant footwork brilliant delivery to the young who it, it, it kind of if you, if you flick the ball into the box and you, in or around the young's airspace yeah, he'll get his head in it and he might good. score he's exceptional exceptional in the air um and in the midfield, they've got they've got tricky ball players. It's a lot of pace in this team, a lot of goals in this team, and they're going to take a hell of a lot of beating. Right, let's then hear the thoughts of the Rangers manager, Michael Beale. He spoke with the media yesterday, and he knows all about the threat PSV will face this evening. It's about setting the second leg up. We know we need to go across to Eindhoven and put in a fantastic performance, regardless of what happens. I think we're up against a formidable opponent. It's... When I look at the draw of the other legs, then I think we're saying we're playing against probably the strongest side we could play right now. It's a real big opportunity for the club, for the players and the fans and everybody. And so I'm looking for us to show a real strong foot in the first leg and set up the second leg in Eindhoven. Michael, there's been a lot of talk of revenge on the PSV players' minds, coupled with the start they've had to the season and what they did against Sturm Graz. What sort of test are you expecting against them? The sternest test I think that we'll probably face across the season. I think they're a very, very good team. They've invested in the squad heavily, really good players. There's no doubt about that. I'm not so sure about the, the things around revenge. It's, it's two different coaches. I think me and uh, Peter have got a lot to live up to in terms of Rude and Gio. They both did excellent jobs in their times at the club. And it's a lot of changes in personnel in both teams. You obviously made changes at the weekend. Do you now have a, a clearer idea of your, your strongest eleven, or indeed did you get anybody food for thoughts and, and what could be your strongest eleven from the weekend? Well, little things are starting to happen. The new players have all now started a game, and I think Jack in goal has had his big moments last week in Savet, which you need as a Rangers goalkeeper. The forwards have started scoring, so Cyril's got two goals and assists in four starts. Danilo's got two goals in three starts, so I'm looking at positives in terms of. Certainly after the first weekend of the season, we've, we've shown a positive face in terms of getting results. We made a lot of changes at the weekend and uh, we won and have gone through and we've got a nice home draw, so everything's fine with that. I think it's a squad game and I think we're going to need 14, 15 players in both games to step up for sure. Just how important, Michael, is it that your forward players are you know, at their most clinical in, in these types of matches? 
We've got a lot of variety. So when you're looking at maybe playing against us, you're unsure of who we're going to pick and, and how the, the front line is going to look out. I think that's a bonus to have as, as, as a manager of a team when another side is looking at seeing how you might set up. And certainly if you're not playing, there's a way that we can change the game with the guys off the side. And I think the front players, it's a, it's a big moment, these two games, and it's a moment where big players will hopefully step up and show their worth. Just how important is it that Rangers aren't playing Champions League football this season? Well, it's hugely important to the players because I know it's their dream and their ambition. It would be important because it would be more finances than obviously going into the Europa League. We know we're guaranteed that, so these two games we can play with a clear mind and go right for them. We don't need to worry about whether we're in or out. I've sat beside Steven Gerrard in our time here where they were real do or die moments against Galatasaray, Leisure Warsaw, Ufa, for example, to get into Europe or not be. So this one, we know we're in European football up to Christmas. It's what competition and in our way is an excellent team, but it's a fantastic opportunity for everybody. Michael Beale there speaking with the media yesterday. Both sets of players are now out doing their warm-up. It's really building up here. The stands are starting to fill up at Ibrook. Stephen Thompson, what then have you made of the job that Michael Beale has been doing? Have you seen progression under him? Certainly since he arrived at the club, I think there was an improvement from Giovanni Van Bronckhurst. I think that if you look at his record for last season since he arrived, it was impressive. All right, it wasn't enough to get the job done eventually. Obviously Celtic winning the title. Um, a big turnaround of players this summer. He wanted to put his own stamp on it, get his own squad together, as every manager does. He's had that opportunity. The board have backed him. He's brought in a lot of players. They've spent a decent amount of money. So this is when he will be judged more on what he can achieve this season. Um, I don't think, think that necessarily what he does in Europe is going to be the be-all and end-all for him. I think it's about what he does in the domestic trophies. Um, obviously, Celtic going out of the League Cup at the weekends, a bonus for them. Rangers become red-hot favourites. For him to pick up his first trophy um, as Rangers manager now, so they've got to capitalise on that. It will be difficult. So, progression is too early this season because of the turnaround of players to, to see what the progression is. We'll know more in a month or two uh, what the situation is looking like but as Tom said I do think the jury's out on uh, a number of the, the new signings it takes time to adapt and quite often you don't get time and not everybody hits the ground firing but they'll need to learn quickly that when you're playing for Rangers you know you, you win every game you've got to win every game and it's no different going into this evening's game the Rangers fans are here in huge numbers expecting to beat PSV they've got to make sure at the end of this game they're still in the tie now whether that's a win or a draw fine what they can't do is make a situation arise where they're travelling to what is we were there last year an incredibly hostile environment over in PSV um, and having to you know pull a result out from behind maybe one or two goals that situation can't arise they've got to come out of tonight um very much still in the tie. Would you not, would you not make Kilmarnock the favourite for the League Cup? Eh? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, you, you probably wouldn't bet against them, Tom. You probably wouldn't. What about, this, what, what, what about this place tonight? Because we've seen Dessers get a wee bit of flack from the fans early doors. It can be very unforgiving here, can't it, if you don't get off to yeah. a good start? Yeah, like all, you know, all big clubs, you know, you get a... Your honeymoon period is, uh, is a relative blink of an eye, you know, but... What would you rather? Would you rather be at a massive club and playing on a massive stage where the pressure is kind of really, really intense or somewhere where you're told, oh, well, look, you know, best of luck, hope for the best, expecting the worst. This is where you want to be. You want to be at the big club. And you'd hope that Michael Beale and his staff have done research not just on the player, but on the person and whether they're capable of handling this pressure. But... I'm, I'm laughing at myself here because obviously PSV are coming here, Dutch side, and probably the best ones in the business I've ever come across for having absolute bulletproof confidence is a Dutch. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> and by the way, not every one of them started well at this club in my time here. A lot of them had to come through difficult times, none more so than what guys like Fernando Rickson getting mm -hmm. hooked against Celtic <laughs> 25 minutes in. Guy goes on and just was an absolute stalwart for the club. But these boys coming in. You're right, and Stevie's right, and Tom's Tom's absolutely spot on. I mean, you you want you come to a big club, you know you're coming to play under pressure. I don't think they realise what type of pressure until they walk 
out of this environment and they're, they're 75 minutes into a game they've not scored yet it's nil nil or maybe down you've missed a couple of chances and then you really start to feel the heat because this support will, will not be slow in telling you that they expect more they've seen goal scorers in this club uh, be wingers midfielders top players performing and winning things and if you're brought to the club to do that and they don't see that that is, uh, that is on show then they'll tell you but I, I think they can take a lot from the from past players gone by where they come here with a reputation that maybe hasn't started well but they've gone on to be a success the only way you're viewed as, as a success is if you win things this Dutch side roll into Glasgow tonight and I think there's an arrogance about them and I think that's part of the Dutch makeup anyway there's a, a thin line of being you know, overconfident in yourself and, and, and arrogant or just ultimately supremely confident in what you have to offer. This side they're coming here and, I, and I, I'm sure it was Veerman had said in the paper that they're coming to win. It wasn't like they were coming for a good performance and yeah. get a good result you know, and take it back. It was like we're coming to win. That's the swagger they bring to it. They're obviously confident in their own ability. But as I've said at the start of the show, this Rangers side have proved against proper big sides, favoured sides, fancied sides, uh, that come into this environment that they can get a result the only thing that I could temper it is PSV have already been here a lot of these guys have experienced what Ibrox has to offer so it might not have the same impact but believe me Kenny when this place gets going at the start of this game this PSV group of players will feel it and, that, and that's why I believe that Rangers have to capitalise on that start Cantwell Tom has spoken about it's really important that he has an impactful start to the game what he did in the previous rounds where, he, where he's, he's not playing from a deeper role I want his energy his enthusiasm the way he can lift the crowd his teammates to be right up in the game and if they can start the game well possibly score then it might just put a different reflection on the mindset of these PSV players Neil you mentioned the role the supporters will have to play this evening we've been joined on the gantry here by Rangers fan Craig Dennett from This Is Ibrooks podcast good evening Craig thanks for joining us on the gantry how are you feeling ahead of this massive match tonight uh, I think it's safe to say I'm not confident heading into this game yeah. um, I think PSV have strengthened a lot since last year and we've had a bit of a stop to that um, start to the season so far so um, look, it's, a, it's a big night it's a European night at Ibrox we've seen especially in recent years how um, potentially not last year but the year before how, how good Rangers could be and how much the atmosphere can play into that but um, I think PSV are a very good team and it'll be really interesting to see how both teams set up against each other tonight Talk to us about the new signings Who, who's impressed and who's giving you cause for concern? Um, it's, I think everyone's been up and down so far recent, uh, recently. I think Jack Butland has been um, has been good so far. I think the, the two strikers have come in and they've scored goals, but they've not really set the header alight uh, going forward. They've also got Cantwell and Raskin from January who, who, who have been good. Um, so it's been a bit hit and miss so far. We're waiting for the team to gel. We're waiting for the team to, to sort of start to hit the ground running. But... Now, now is when it matters now is when they need to step up and now is when they need to really make a difference someone that's been here for a few seasons Yanis uh, Hadji I listened to your podcast the other day you guys were discussing him following his comments at, at the weekend Derek Ferguson here for the, the the game two weeks ago he said look he didn't think he had any future at the club that certainly appears to be the case it's interesting to get the guys thoughts on that as well but from a Rangers fan do you think it's right that he moves on or do you think he's not been given the opportunity I think he was unlucky with the way the injury happened obviously against Stow and Albion it was a bit of a freak instant he was out He was out for a full year and um, coming back into to a team of, that's expected to win every week is difficult he wasn't given much game time he's, he's obviously trying to prove that he's fit his comments at the weekend in the press conference said as much in terms of he's made every pre-season pre training session he's one of the only players that has done so he, um, he felt like he did, he did well on uh, Saturday against Morton when he came on and there's been a lot of, a lot of calls from, um, from Rangers fans both on social media and in the stadium in terms of wanting him to um, wanting him to get more game time and, and then it was about, I think I was a bit surprised to be honest that he, that he was left out of the squad altogether for, for tonight that was a bit of a, a strange one we were talking on the podcast about we, should they start or should they not start and then he's out of the he's out of the squad altogether so uh, some fans have not been as impressed with Sam Lammers as, as others have been and they thought Yanis Hadji could be an alternative to that and someone who plays a very similar role but is, could offer something a little bit different obviously they can play with both feet but I, I, I'm, I'd be a bit sad to see Yanis Hadji leave if I'm, if I'm honest but it, it looks like that's the way it's heading I mean, had, had you had a decent season uh, when Rangers won the league? I think he got 10, 10 goals, 10 maybe league goals. Good, good contribution. 
I was going to ask you, of, of, of the forward players, if there's one striker you think will emerge and make the jersey his own, which 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 one do you think it's going to be? I think it has to be uh, Danilo. Uh, I think he has to be the one that, that, that makes the mark, and that's why it's, I guess, a surprise he's not starting tonight. If you're spending £6 million on a striker as Rangers Football Club, you'd expect him to start the big games, and, and to see him on the bench tonight, it just tells the pressure on Cyril Dessos a bit. He's, he's obviously had experience against PSV in the past. He um, he scored quite a of goals against them as well for Feyenoord. So it'll be really interesting to see if he can hit the ground running tonight on that one. What, what did the Rangers say? Because there's chopping and changing. You know, Dessus comes in and Danilo and Sima. There's this, this, this kind of... Uh, rearranging the chairs up there what are the Rangers fans thinking of this did they think now the deal should have settled on who's first choice and who isn't Michael Beale's always been a manager that changes his team depending on what the opposition are like and how the opposition are going to set up so it's it's come to be expected especially a wee bit similar under Steven Gerrard as well in terms of how they how they set up in that way but if you're, like I said, if you're paying six million pounds for a striker, you expect expect them to be starting the big games. Um, but it'll be, it will be really interesting to see how Rangers set up. If we expect to dominate the ball tonight, I'm not sure if that if we should expect to dominate the ball against PSV tonight. The um, the, the lineup that Michael Beals put in suggests maybe he expects more of a defensive performance than he would normally do at Ibrox. So it'll be interesting to see like so Ryan Jack, Jose Sepuentes, um and then see how they set up and if, if, if both of them sit or if one of them sits and one of them plays that number eight position. So it's, it'll, be, it'll be really interesting. But to answer your initial question, I do think that Michael Beals should have started to settle on his, his starting 11 by now. There's a bit too much talk, chopping and changing to my liking. Neil, your thoughts on Hadji? Um... I think he's a very, very talented player. Uh, I read. I also read his comments about he can see that he's hurting a little bit. Yeah. You know the fact that he's that he's uh, been left out of the squad. He's not starting games. He feels that he's played all the training sessions. He's feeling stronger than ever. I look at Hadji and I think, for me, I've always wondered what his best position was, and I actually think he's probably best position because he's so two-footed. He's not overly quick but he's got a great idea, he's got invention, as in the number 10. Mm-hmm. Now, if Cantwell ends up playing in there, who's best served to, to to get that jersey all the time? I think Cantwell's got great imagination, he's got probably more energy. It's more dynamic. Yeah, I would I would agree with that. Um, he lifts the crowd in a different way. Um, I don't see Hadji being like that. I just wonder whether Hadji becomes a saleable asset that they f- they can afford to lose under Michael Beale. He's think, brought in Lammers and yeah. he's, he's, he's got Cantwell. And I think if, if there's a possibility of moving someone like Hadji, if he's not happy, I think he'll let it happen. I feel sorry for the boy because he's worked ever so hard to get back. He probably thinks that he deserves a chance and then he misses out. Um, it's tough, but if Michael's going out and he, he, he spends so much money and so much recruitment hours bringing in a very robust front line that you look, can look behind then and think, right, I can change it with good forward players. But I still think Hadji's got a lot to offer. I really do. From a player's point of view, though, he's missed... What did he miss? Was it, like, a year and a half a year, out? Yeah, over a year. Yeah. And he's now got himself back fit. And you know what the process is like when you're coming back from a long-term injury and you're busting yourself and it's, it can be a dark place and you get back and you just feel as though you, you can't get a sniff and you feel as though you deserve that. You're not going to hang about because you've already just missed such a large chunk of your career and he's still quite young. And he feels in himself, I need to be playing football every single week. I've missed a chunk of my career there. I want to be playing and enjoying football. And it's clear that he's not enjoying his time here just now. So for both parties, if Rangers can get money for him and for him, he can go and reignite and, and reinvigorate his career somewhere else where he's going to play, I think it's the best for both worlds. Craig, as a Rangers fan, what does success look like for Michael Beale this season? What's the bare minimum? I think the bare minimum from our side is winning the league. I think that is that's got to be the aim, and it always has to be the aim. There's been plenty of discussion over summer: uh, is, would, would we prefer the Champions League group stages, or would you prefer to be in the Europa League, where we probably feel it's more like our level and where we can compete more and potentially go a bit further? Um, either or, to be honest, I, I'm more focused on the league and the, the domestic trophies. Um, we also got a wee bit of a boost on on Sunday with the with the result at Rugby Park, um, which maybe opens it opens up a little bit. But um, I think the domestic trophies are much more important this year with the league, the absolute priority. Right, we'll get Neil and Tom with one of their favourite European memories of nights here at Ibrox. But from a Rangers fans' perspective, your favourite night here in Europe. It's difficult to go past um, that second leg against Leipzig. 
now. Yeah. Um, I think that has to be has to be up there at the moment. Uh, John Winstrom shot hit the back of the net. Uh, it was just an absolute pandemonium, and it's, it's difficult to to beat that. Neil. Uh, I don't, a lot of people won't know this, but I'm, uh, I've scored in half of the games that I've played against PSV. Oh, here we go. How many times you have that, John? Here's a blue pair badge. No, 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 um, and then when Ovan did the job over in, uh, in Parma to qualify for the Champions League was, was unbelievable considering the side if I'm just going to go on uh, tonight's opponents we beat PSV here 4-1 um, Mikey Malls rolled into, in, in, into Rangers and we're wondering who's this guy What's, what like is going to be and that guy was just a phenomenon from the start I, oh, I, I remember playing against Haka over in Finland and he was just, I'm thinking my goodness this boy's a bit special and then we came here Mikey scored um, down in this end to my left and uh, the place went crazy that was a team that uh, had Vanisto Roy in it as well and in fact I think he scored a penalty that night Big Oz tried to let him back in it gave a penalty away and <laughs> Vanisto Roy scored but um, we had a very comprehensive 4-1 victory so that that, uh, that looms large in my memory Tomo yeah, I mean, I scored here against CSK Moscow. Oh, well done, Tim. Well done. <laughs> uh, I tell you what, what a goal it was. 18 yards out. My other favourite memory was actually away in Porto when Ross McCormick scored late on to take us into the oh, group yeah. stages. Not because I was particularly good, because we got an absolute fortune for him scoring that goal. So those are my two favourite memories, really. <laughs> Just finding yourself, Craig, you know, the fan media is a massive thing now, isn't it? On Sports Out now on a Saturday, we get the fans on, podcasters on. Talk to us just what it's like briefly for yourselves now. You get a chance to win the gantry to go to the media conference. A lot of clubs are now embracing the fan media. Yeah, absolutely, and it's, it's great for us to have this opportunity and to, to give the fans view, but also to have the access to the players, to the manager, and to ask the questions that we feel that the fans want to want to ask um, and to get the answers that, that, that we think the, that fans deserve to hear. Um, so we... Um, we're all about providing free, free content for, for Rangers fans. We're all about, um, we do three regular live podcasts a week. Um, with us, we're also started the last six months or so here on the, the gantry live at live at Ibrox, um, and it's been it's been great. And all the fans, all the fans love to hear from fellow Rangers fans. We give honest reactions, we give honest opinions, and um, I think that's what fans want to hear most of all. What what, what happens when you have to put the boot in? <laughs> Quite happily. Do you still get? Do you still get the access? Do you still? Well, you clearly do because you're standing here alongside us. Yeah, I've made, I've made a few mistakes in that time as well. I called, I called John Winstrom out last year, and that was definitely a mistake. But um, he's kind of um, he's, he's kind of gone back on me on that one. So um, no, I'm not scared to call people out, but um, it's, it's great for us. It's a great experience, and um, hopefully it continues. Just, do you think there's there is this kind of between? say fan media and, and mainstream for the want of a better word media that there's a them and us because I think we can all coexist no problem here in this world the world is big enough for all of us but there is, a, is there is this tension between the two I think with some there is I don't think there's I don't think there's any denying that but you guys have been kind enough to invite me invite me on here and um, we're delighted to give the, the Rangers fans view on that and I think there, there is there's certain worlds where we can coexist and I think there's um, there's certain relationships where it might be more difficult can, can, can you stay because I know the lads are going to bang on about all the goals they score for Rangers did you stay and one of the lads can Tom, I'm done. clear I'm off one, one goal one goal <laughs> Good stuff. Craig, thanks very much indeed for joining Cheers. us in sports. So, Craig Dennett there from This Is Ibrooks podcast. We'll get the lowdown on the Dutch side in just a couple of minutes' time. But let's then hear from the PSV manager, Peter Bosch. He was speaking with the media yesterday. Rangers is Rangers. Playing here, I've only done it twice now, but it's something special. If the crowd is behind the team, it is something special. So it's our job to keep them quiet. And we can do that by playing good football. Yeah, and what, what will be key in these games? That we play good football. If, if you follow us since the, the, the beginning of the season, this is what we try to do. And this is what we do. And this is our strength. We have really good players, absolutely so. Play good football with good players. And what is the biggest danger of them? Of, of, of Rangers. Oh, they, they, 
they have experienced players, they have new signings playing up front we know well from the Dutch league. Um, they have quality players in the midfield, they have a good team, absolutely. That's why it will not be easy. But I always believe in my players and I always believe in my team. And I try to tell them that we have a good team because this is the truth. Um, and that's why I believe it will be an interesting game. Attack, attacking football? <laughs> you know better, of course. <laughs> Can I also ask you um, how much confidence you, you've, you've taken from the, the previous round and your performances and result against Drumgratz? Yeah, but I'm looking wider. It's not only those two games that gave me confidence. It's since the beginning of the season I work with these, these lads and like I said, they're quality players and we have good results. We won the Super Cup against Feyenoord. We're number one in the league with two wins. It's not just started two games, but we're there. And that gave us a lot of confidence also in our way of playing. They do really well, so we have a lot of confidence. Is revenge something you use as a psychologist to motivate your team? No, no. Why not? First of all, I wasn't there, so if you want to talk about revenge, it's maybe something you're involved with. And I don't believe that that will help us to win the game here. I believe if you play good football, that will help to win the game here. So not these kind of mental games you want to play with your players. I don't believe in that. The PSB manager, Peter Bosch there, Tom. It's interesting, as soon as the tie was uh, known last week, that's what appeared on the social media account, yeah, didn't it? Revenge. That, that's what the club <laughs> tweeted, you know. Yeah. Um, so, I, I, but, I, I, you know, Peter Bosch, I, he's, he's right, like, you know, revenge. Where does revenge get you? Revenge, re, revenge is meaningless, you know. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, they look, they, look, they look at the Rangers team tonight and they look at the Rangers team that knocked them out. Very different teams. I mean, McLaughlin was in goal for the 1-0 um, in Eindhoven last August. Uh, Sands was playing Lundstrom and Kamara and Lawrence and Tillman, Kent and Cho Cholak. They were all starting the game. So if you're taking revenge on these guys, well, they're gone. So, you know, it's a new it's a new night. I think he struck the right tone there. Revenge, it's, it's, it's something we go on about sometimes in journalism. I would love it. Oh, yeah, like, you know, battle this, and revenge that, you know. I tell you what, what comes across loud and clear is he? He likes his team. This does, coach, doesn't he, he Bosch? Yeah, he, he, he's very matter of fact. Yeah, yeah. um, he talks about the football they play. Um, he, he's right in a way the revenge. I know sometimes it can. If you're still here, then uh, the young will remember it. He'll want, he'll want a bit of sweet revenge. It won't drive him. I think it's just the, the sheer confidence. I touched on it about the arrogance almost. Um, Careful, I'm, Neil. Uh, Careful. Well, well no, I know. No, <laughs> no, about a six foot three Dutch journalist standing beside me. Go on, Neil. <laughs> no, but he's miles away from me, and I've still got a bit of pace, Kenny. Neil, um, Neil, tell, tell us about that Dutch arrogance. Yeah. Tell us about that. Ah, but I think there's more of that stuff. Right, well, listen, I don't think the big man will get too upset. I've, I've seen it with the boar and all that. I'll, I'll just move out of your way here. I think. But no, I think I think that comes across clearly. And as I said, that there's a fine line, a fine line between being super confident and arrogance. And sometimes you got it back that uh, supreme confidence up and, and, and that does give you that arrogance De Boer and Van Bronckers and Newman they all had it yeah. the, and clearly it's screaming out of this coach fancies his side tonight yeah well we've been joined by Dutch journalist uh, Rick the Elfling. thanks for joining us in sports and Rick I know you did so at this time last year yeah. so how does this PSV side compare to the one that Rangers get the better of last season well, the biggest change is, of course, that they have a new coach, Peter Bosch, and uh, yeah, he's playing a different uh, playing style. So PSV will play more offensive than last year. Uh, yeah, they want to play on the half of the opponent. So that's a big difference compared to last year uh, when they played a little bit more uh, defensive-wise. Um, yeah, I think one of the, the biggest changes is also on the, on the pitch that they have a good uh, left winger in, in the person of Noah Lang. He's a very dangerous striker. Um, yeah, of course, Luc de Jong was also here eh, last year, the, 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 the number nine, the striker. He's a famous player, of course. He played for Barcelona. Um, yeah, and, and I think that is the biggest change. So the trainer, the trainer coach, and uh, yeah, the left winger, uh, which is Noah Lang. Yeah, uh, for sure, uh, the coach of Rangers will, uh, will know him and he will know that he is a big danger for, uh, 
for uh, for Rangers. What about this word revenge then? Because there's no doubt it really hurt PSV last season, didn't it? It was a sore one. Yeah, for sure. Uh, PSV was really knocked out, uh, as you say that in uh, in Scotland. Yeah, it was a, it was a very big big disappointment last year. So I didn't hear anyone about revenge or so because the team is a little bit different and the coach is different. But of course, last year was uh, yeah was really for PSV uh, a big shock because they wanted so badly to to qualify because there were some financial problems. They, they, you know, all Champions League it brings in like 30, 40 million euros. Uh, yeah, that that's a real that's for for a club like PSV it's really big money that that you can earn here. So uh, yeah, of course there there is a lot of pressure always on this game, uh, the play of Champions League. It is one of the yeah the biggest matches in a year for for a club like PSV. Maybe it is the biggest match of the year. You you, you spoke about Lang on one side of the pitch. What about Bakayoko on the other? 20 years of age. Yeah, this kid looks a flyer, an absolutely very very dangerous player. Yeah, Bakayoko is uh, is a player who is uh, developing uh, developing uh, really fast. Um, yeah, a couple of big clubs are watching him, like Paris Saint Germain, Liverpool. They are all uh, yeah watching. I, I doubt if it will be for this transfer period, but it wouldn't surprise me if the coming days there will come out some big news about Bakayoko because what I hear is that there are clubs which we are which are wanting to, to spend 35, 40 million euros on him. So it wouldn't surprise me that the coming days there will be a bit, but I think PSV doesn't want to sell him because it's a young player, he's 20 years old, uh, he's a Belgian international and they think one year here, uh, yeah, one extra year here, that he will develop even more and maybe bring in more money uh, next year. And, and De Jong, still dangerous. He's 30, what is he, 32 years of age, still yeah. banging in the goals. Of course, uh, everyone in international football knows Luke De Jong, and that is, of course, because he's a, he's a great header. And uh, yeah, that is one of the biggest. Uh, yeah, that's one of the biggest things in, in the in the PSV uh, squad that you can always play a long ball on him, and he's always capable to score goals with his head. So that is one of the biggest things of PSV, of course, Luke de Jong. Uh, but they are also vulnerable. They play with a lot of uh, space behind the defense because they want to play offensive, and for sure Rangers will know that. So I think Rangers will also play with long balls. They will try to uh, um, de-organize. The, the PSV defense and uh, yeah, Andre Ramalio is not in his best form, the central defender. So I think they will put pressure on him. What do you make of Danilo? What, what, what are your thoughts on him as a player? How good a signing will he be for Rangers? Who do you want to, want to talk for, about? For Danilo. Danilo. Yeah. Yeah, Danilo is uh, uh, in Holland. He was a was a good player, of course, but by, at Feyenoord, yeah. he didn't have a, uh, he didn't have a place in the first squad because uh, Santiago Jimenez was the first striker of, of Feyenoord. He did it really well last year, and uh, that is why Danilo lost his uh, yeah he lost his, his place in in the first squad. But I think he's a real quality player, uh, Danilo. Uh, Dessus is, I think, playing as a number nine now. Eh? Uh, Cyril Dessus, who's also, uh, yeah, uh, PSV knows him because he he hurt PSV in the past. He scored two times uh, in in a game for Feyenoord against PSV. So yeah, um, of course uh, they are not very big names, but they are really good names, and they can hurt a club like PSV for sure. Do you expect Malik Tillman to force his way into this PSV side? Yeah, well, Malik is not um, currently is not 100% uh, because yeah, he came in very late at the PSV squad. But um, yeah, Malik will, will maybe uh, take his role in the second half. So we have to see. Um, but he's now not playing. It could be in the second half that Ismail Saibari is going off. So he's now the number 10, and that Malik will uh, replace him in, in like an hour or so. Is there confidence among the PSV side, the management, the fans? Do they expect to get the job done this season against Rangers? Are PSV favourites? No, I don't think so, because uh, I think it's really close. This is always a 50-50 game, and, and of course Rangers made some changes, uh, uh, PSV made some changes. I think last year they were favourite with, with, with players like Gekpo and uh, uh, Madueke they had, so they play now Premier League. But Gekpo was, was not in his, in his best shape last year against Rangers, so that was also bad luck for PSV. That Cody Gakpo, yeah, he, he's a real quality player, we see that at Liverpool now. And uh, last year he was not in his best form. But we will see. They have now Noah Lang. Uh, they have Johan Bakayoko, as your colleague uh, already uh, said. And um, yeah, of course, they are also uh, uh, strikers with qualities.
and finally Rick you will follow the Dutch sides all across Europe how does the atmosphere in Scottish grounds compare? Yeah well it's great uh, Ibrox is one of the most famous stadiums uh, also in Holland so yeah, everybody uh, talks about it there's a lot of respect for the Scottish way of, of, of um, yeah, uh, 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 believing in football uh, living with football yeah that, that's great so of course uh, we, we, Dutch, we Dutch people could learn something about that of, of that for sure fantastic Rick thanks very much indeed for joining us in BBC The Disc Golf and enjoy the game tonight what a pleasure thank you thank you Dutch journalist Rick L. Frank there how are you feeling then Neil McCann are you confident at all it's imperative Rangers got a strong start tonight yeah I'll be, I'll, be, I'll be feeling better once the big man gets past me before I take in the back of the head as well um, <laughs> he's a no, big lad I, I'm a, I would love to feel super confident Kenny but th- this atmosphere seems as if it's building into something really special and we've all experienced special nights here at Ibrox as, as, as Rick says there I, I think there will be space in behind I, I feel that they will go Dessert and Sim up top that allow them to go a little bit direct if they want to but need a fast start if they get a fast start get themselves into the group here then it could be another wonderful night but it's going to be a tough one Kenny it really is this is a good side of playing Do you share that Stephen imperative they go off to a fast start do you, do you think they can go to Holland with an advantage from tonight? I think they can, I think there's no doubt about that, but it's going to need an absolutely top performance from Rangers, a 90 minute performance that we've not seen so far this season, they've got to embrace this energy, and the crowd that you're hearing just now lifting, which will even go through the roof even more when the players come out, and they've got to, fast, they've got to have a fast start, the problem is they're going to have to defend tonight an awful lot, as far as they're not, they can keep this PSV team out, I do feel as though Rangers will score, but I'm not entirely convinced they can stop PSV from scoring. It's absolutely electric in here tonight, Tom, isn't it? The yeah, atmosphere yeah. is incredible. Yeah, look, it's very, it's very, very noisy. It's like a Champions League group stage atmosphere rather than a, a, a qualifier. Whether this crowd's going to kind of lift Rangers, you'd hope that that would be the case. But I look at, I look at PSV. I look at the pace they have in the team out wide. I look at a young, proven goal scorer. This, this is a, this is a fine team, and it's a great test of where Rangers are at. Well, I hope at home you can pick up this amazing atmosphere as the players come out of the tunnel. It's electric in here tonight, a huge display in the Broomloan stand from the Rangers fans, the PSB fans, of course, away in the far corner. They've been very, very noisy tonight. Who will be singing? Who will be in good heart at the end of this game? It's time now to sit back and enjoy the action. It's Rangers against PSB in their Champions League playoff with Neil McCann, Stephen Thompson and Liam McLeod. It is judgment time for Rangers as they try and exercise the ghosts of last season's Champions League group campaign. to be they want to be dining at the top table Rangers and PSV Eindhoven go head to head for the second time in as many seasons for a place in the groups over two legs and the first leg as it was last season right here in Glasgow well you can see the blue skies above being covered mostly by clouds but it's perfect conditions really for the game and Rangers line up with just three of the starters from last year's first leg starting this one and that is James Tavernier Connor Goldson and Borna Barisic apart from that it's a new team from the one that started the playoff last season Butland in goal Tavernier, Goldson, Suter and Barisic Sifuentes, Jack Raskan Cantwell, Seaman, Desers PSV, six of their starters started at Ibrox a year ago. Benitez in goal. Tez, Romalo, Bascali and Sardinio Dest, who only joined yesterday on loan from Barcelona. Veerman, Singari, Saibari, Bakayoko and Lang 
either side of De Jong. Noah Lang there brought in for a club record 15 million euros in the summer from Club Bruges in Belgium. The referee there, Clément Turpin, 41 years of age, to charge a Rangers defeat at Anfield in the groups last season and also their victory in the Westfalen against Dortmund in the Europa League the season before as they made their way to the final also coming to Eintracht Frankfurt. PSV Eindhoven are trying to win their first title in six years this term as they look to wrestle it from Feyenoord's grasp. And last term they spent some money and they haven't lost a competitive match since Sevilla knocked them out of the Europa League last season. It's 3-0 in mid-February. They won the other leg 2-0. They also beat Arsenal in that competition in the group stage after Rangers got rid of them from the Champions League just about ready to go Rangers in the blue shirts white shorts black socks with the red tops will shoot right to left towards the Broomlone Road end of the stadium PSV in their change colours their white cream shirts with the grey shorts and the cream socks left to right as Rangers kick off and PSV shooting towards Copeland Road in this first half so important for Rangers that they get a good start in this one as the ball is launched forward by the right back days. It's a difficult bouncing one for Dion to chase on to. Goldson gets there before him and nods it back to Butler. He plays it short to Goldson. Now across the course before on the European nights for Rangers. His long ball finds Cyril Odessa as he chases down the far side. And the Brazilian centre back Ramalo puts it out for a Rangers throw in. Level the PSV 18 yard line. Just a wee indication there, Liam, that Rangers will be prepared to go from from back to front very, very quickly in one pass with a long ball up to Dessers. He's physically good, and I think that will be a ploy at times. Cantwell robs this man, wins it back. It's in the side, the penalty area, and it almost broke there for Raskan as it goes over the crossbar. Ricocheted off the defender, back off the Belgian, and over the bar for a PSV goal kick. Really good, positive start to proceedings by Ranger Stephen Thompson. Yeah, it was, but he was incredibly slack from PSV, trying to dribble out from the back. Cantwell, as we've seen him do on a number of occasions, he's always hounding people, wins the ball. He had a couple of options inside him if he wanted to look uh, for this. Stevie, I thought he should have gone inside. He went in driven the inside. inside. I think he should have come in. He had a couple of options for yep. passes as well. He goes on his own and the, the shot's cleared, but yes, a very positive start. Interestingly enough, Liam, I thought it might have been the two up top with Sema and Dessers and Cantwell in behind like they finished uh, the game last week. Cantwell's actually going off the right, but he's coming into a 10 when the ball's over the left, so he's got a slight adaptation of the tactics. A little bit loose from Raskan, Suter can only, under pressure from De Jong, fire it into touch for a throw-in on this near side. He's getting a couple of apologies there from Raskan, who was excellent in the second leg against Servette in Geneva last Tuesday evening second ball in the pitch which Bakayoko has got rid of so it's Jordan Tays playing it to Romalo to his central defensive colleague Olivier Boscali and the Frenchman out to that left hand side for Des the America international lovely run he's away from Zipuentes driving down the left fires a really dangerous ball across the six yard line it's going to come out for a throw in on the opposite side of the pitch but that is why they've brought him to the club on loan yeah. for Barcelona Des what a cross yeah, but uh, how easy was it? I mean, he just faces up. Tavernier, for some reason, has come in narrow and left Sifuentes basically one-on-one -on -one with a full-back who's obviously lightning, knocks it past him and puts an incredible an incredible ball right across the face of the goal for Rangers. But for me, Tavernier's position was wrong well, in the first place. You're spot on, Stevie, and I, I, was, I, mean, I was perplexed myself because what Noah Lang had dragged him inside, Tavernier went as if Noah Lang was going to get the, the little ball fed into him. And this is just absolutely burning Sifuentes. It's a lot like the last week with the out side uh, midfielders of the three so Fuentes will go on the right and shut down the fullback but that's a warning shot Called by Cantwell on Veerman in the PSV half just left of the centre circle three goalless minutes in here yeah, and def <laughs> definite sharp pull 100% from uh, Cantwell there no arguments about that one Ibrahim Samgari in the centre circle he's had it pinched off him, Sima with the head, knocks it into his own path down the left-hand side of the box, he goes, Sima, it's a good challenge back against him, there was Sangare helping his defenders out, having been robbed in the first instance, 
the man who scored the opening goal in the 2-2 draw in the first leg last season. Here come PSV, though, driving forward here with Saibari. He's got it back here. I mean, worked the 1-2 with De Jong. Out wide left. Chance here for Noah Lang to attack the box. He shoots a goal. Butland spills it. De Jong gets onto it. Forced wide left. Little short ball back the way for Lang. And now it's Des, through disguised ball, looking for De Jong. Passes it straight to Ryan Jack, down by his own byline, over to the corner flag for Tavernier, who's under some serious pressure. He breaks Cantwell's way, and now it's with Sifuentes. He's a bit nicked off, though, by Dest. Here's Sangari, sizing up the Rangers box, just playing it short forward to Juan Bakayoko. He elects to pass it back along the deck to Dest. Here come PSV again, oh, loose ball beat. from them, though, straight to Suter, but he's given it away, but Cantwell wins it back in double quick time off Bakayoko. Cantwell over on that right-hand side, trying to get away from his man, he's done really well. Squeezes it through to Cifuentes, just inside the PSV half, forward to Dessers. Little touch from him, kind of lets him down, he gets back onto it, he goes down, and referee Turpan gives Rangers a free kick midway inside PSV territory right of centre that just relieves the first real spell of pressure from PSV Eindhoven in the match five minutes in 0-0 yeah Dessers actually does well on the end up there I think that's going to be a key for him tonight when the ball goes up to him because at times he's not going to have the support around him either in the two tens with Cantwell and Sumay needs to hold it in better Cantwell did ever so well there he bought time because there was nothing in front of him and his uh, composure has allowed Rangers to get up the field but been a breathless, what, five, six oh, minutes? That, that counter-attack from PSV was absolutely lightning. They're going to need to watch that Rangers when they're overcommitting. Seal Desser scored against PSV when he was at Feyenoord on loan from Genk a few seasons ago. Sparisic clips the free kick in, comes off the head of Desser's Goldson goes for it, but Mallow beats him in the jump. There's an optimistic appeal for a penalty from the Rangers supporters behind the goal there as Raskan beats Land to it. It's now with Tavernier, he's giving it away though. As James Tavernier and it's picked up here in the midfield for PSV Eindhoven and the ball's flipped out to that left-hand side by Bascali but given away Raskan for Rangers now to Cantwell back to Raskan looks up ahead of him looking for really Sima he's clipped it with the right foot to Sima left of the D at the edge of the box the overlap from Barisic low ball across comes off the defender and it falls kindly for Walter Benitez in the PSV goal he holds on at his near post and it remains nil-nil but what a start yeah it's back and forth isn't it it's, it's, it's really going uh, 100 miles an hour is it it's not, it's not settled down. It was really good from Raskan there, Sima. I just wanted to see it go 1v1, but Barisic on the outside. I'd love to see Todd Cantwell then get into the back post and not hang around 18 yard box. I thought Raskin could have made that yardage up. It's really important that when they get into the final third positions, Liam, with Barisic and Tavnia, that Sima and, and, and Dessers make up the box, but one of the other midfielders must get in there just to create more numbers, more ratio to score. When Barisic picked the ball up, he was in a good area, but he lifted his head and only had Dessel, so yeah. he was making a run across the front exactly. post. There's not another option for him. You've got to get more bodies in the box. Romalo sweeping it right to left to the centre circle for Pascali. Down that left-hand side for Noah Lang, the record signing in the summer. Tavernier gets there just as the ball down the line was targeted for Serginio Dest. It's out for a throw-in to PSV midway inside Rangers territory over on that far side yeah, he's rapid he's rapid Liam I, I think that's going to be a, I was saying about uh, Tavenier might be able to expose Noah Lang but if he goes inside and he leaves the Fuentes out there with Dest Rangers could have massive problems because he's electric chance here for PSV it's Saibari out wide right for Bakayoko level with the penalty spot left foot cross comes in smashed away on the volley by Tavernier. Dest tries to take it down over on that Left-hand side of the central area. Now comes to Saibari. He's going to get it back. Oh, a really good block there by Suter as De Jong tried to flash it back into the path of Saibari. It remains goalless. PSV looks so dangerous, though, particularly coming down that left-hand side, as Neil was highlighting. Their manager down there, Peter Bosch, has won here a couple of times in recent seasons. He was in charge of Bayer Leverkusen when they won here in 2020, just before the lockdown, and then he came back here with Lyon in the Europa League a couple of seasons ago and won that one as well, so it's a 100% record as a visiting manager here at Ibrox, the PSV boss, it was Ruud van Nistelrooy against Giovanni van Bronckhorst this time last year, of course, the two former Dutch teammates, as Des picks up again wide in the left, support from Lang, up against Cifuentes, gets away from Cifuentes, but not from Tavernier, but he loses out to Noah Lang, and it's passed back the way to Joey Beerman, 
Long ball forward will come all the way through to Jack Butland and it will remain 0-0. We're approaching the nine-minute mark at Ibrox. Here's Connor Goldson, side foot ball forward, finds Much Dessers better halfway line. Dessers. Sima is on this near side, flicks it out to Sima. The unknown Brighton man, he's got the overlap from Barisic. Sima uses him as the decoy, low ball in field, square to Cantwell. First time back to Sima, now with Jack, right footed out to the left-hand touchline, Barisic looking for Cantwell, blocked by Taze. And Cantwell can't keep it in play as it goes out for a throw into PSV Eindhoven on this near side. Should have done better that for that one, Cantwell. I yeah. think he was almost trying to just get ready for a drag back. The ball was still in play, and he just seemed to. I, I tell you, his possession of it. Sima, I don't know what you think, John, but I mean, he can clearly run and he's he's rangy, but sometimes when he picks the ball up, it's just. It's, I think he's waiting for Barisic. I know. I think he's waiting for Barisic. He's he's waiting for Barisic to overlap him. That's what he's wanting. But actually, you're right. Just go. He receives it in space. Just go yourself. Go and yeah. make things happen yourself. You don't need to always use that Barisic outlet. PSV got it back with Bakayoko. He's deep inside his own half. Got it back from Sangare. And the clip ball forward up towards De Jong. He does win it in the air, but to a Rangers player up into the air more height and distance and it'll break back favourably for Connor Goldson who's over on this left back side really and he rolls it back to Butland inside his own box he clears with a right foot across the halfway line it goes killed in the chest by Bascali and his next touch is to turn it out to Dest on the left just shrugging off Seema Dest then chops and feel away from Tavernier how good's he been on, in these early exchanges yeah. up the line for Lang the challenge from Goldson and out for a PSV throw in yeah, I mean he's, he's very robust as well he's, cut, he's come through a couple of challenges there he doesn't look like an out and out fullback does he does he? not <laughs> no, I was going to I mean, say the exact get, same thing yeah, he's got feet of a winger he looks there. like a winger 100% yeah. One game in League One tonight, incidentally, Falkirk leading Sterling Albion, local derby, 1-0. Spencer goal on 11 minutes, here in the Champions League playoff, 0-0. Jordan Tays for PSV, flashing it out to the right-hand side, Bakayoko up against Barisic, onto the left, dropping the shoulder, Raskan meets him, Bakayoko on the turn, and uh, eventually comes back to Barisic in his own box, and he puts it out for a throw-in on this near side. They'll uh, know each other. Nicolas Raskan and Johan Bakayoko, the two young Belgians. Sack is out of play for a throw-in on this near side. He's just so desperate to get onto his left foot all the time, Bakayoko, yeah. isn't he? Even though he's playing on the right, he's always looking to chop in and feed a cross into the box or a pass square, but he's got pace, he might be served better just going down outside the other time. He was uh, an unused sub in both legs against Rangers last season, Bakayoko. He's gone on, though, to win four caps for Belgium. An assist in his debut against Sweden. European Championship qualifiers. The PSV number 11 out in this right flank. Throw in Rangers, level with their own 18. Barisic over it. No goals as yet in this Champions League playoff first leg. Up the line, flicked on by Sima. Cantwell goes for it. One back by Sangare. And he returns it to his goalkeeper. Benitez playing it to his left for Dest. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, only arrived at the club yesterday, straight into the squad. The seems, left seems to have settled all right, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Hasn't he just? Couldn't get a game at Barcelona last season, so he's on loan for the campaign in Eindhoven. And he's certainly started really well for the visitors. It's Pascali, plays it short to Sangari, and now it's Ramalo who played both legs last year. He's also come up against Celtic in Europe four times with Salzburg. Lang picks up from Dest down that left-hand side, midway inside the Rangers half. He's found Lang in the overlap, moves in field, lovely touch into the box, shows too much to Tavernier, who goes down. Rangers play on, Sima, three round him, he's lost out. Dest has it back, but gives it away to Raskan, knocking it forward, looking for Sima, read by Taze, who clears out to that far side. Again, though, Liam, uh, Sima, again, just, just not really having control of the ball. He, it's as if his mind's seeing things before he's even got it under control. He just needs to relax a little bit, get, get the ball secured, and then go and commit people. Here's Saibari, low ball to the edge of the box for De Jong. Rangers under the cosh here. Saibari, right-footed, cross to the back post, headed behind for the corner by Tavernier. There will be some duress on the Rangers. Rear guard here, 13 and a half in. PSV 
have their first corner. In fact, the game's first corner over on that far side. Come and stand side. Rangers have started the game fine. You know, you can obviously see that PSV have got real pace and danger within their side, but they've not really opened Rangers up yet. And Rangers have looked threatening when they have got into their final third. And the Dutch have had 70% of the early possessions. The corner comes in. It's a little header from Sangari, which he doesn't catch, and it goes behind. Well behind, actually, he's ended up flicking it towards the corner flag on this near side, but any kind of purchase on that, and Rangers are in big trouble. I'm sure he scored one similar where he just runs off of someone. I tell you, I think he's on it, and, and he's his hands across his face because he feels that that's a, a really, really good chance for him. And well, first time ball out to Barisic wide in the left, approaching the halfway line. Across he goes on this left hand side, Sima ahead of him, decides to turn it back to Raskan. And then back into his own half for Jack. Look, it might open for Seema there, perhaps. He Do you know what? That he was going into an offside position. Lima, I, I want him just to stand, just to put the Have brakes the on. Line. Just, just go and then put the brakes on and let Barisic bounce him. And then if the fullback goes to him, Barisic can go in the overlap. If he holds his position, he just gets 1v1. He's running into nowhere there. Goldson, long ball, looking for Seema. Again, he might have just gone a little bit too early. It's headed away by Taze. Here's Raskan collecting on the near side. Flicks it infield for Seema, but one back by Bakayoko. And Taze, who boots it off a Rangers player now for a throw-in to PSV on this near side. Yeah, I mean, obviously, Neil, it's the position you played in when you were playing. He's playing this evening, Seema. To me, it looked like he ran himself into position there, but he wasn't going to be able to receive the yeah, ball well, from th- Raskin. And Raskin's looking going, exactly. I need better movement from you. And exactly. then the crowd got on on, on uh, Barisic because he's had to check and pass the ball backwards, but actually had no option because the winger's movement wasn't good enough. Yeah, well, Tez is just... It, he can see the movement as well, so he's just covering the run, so it's going to be a big a big foot race and he's not really going to gain any advantage so if he goes goes long and just checks short then he gets to the feet he'll be able to face the full back up PSV knocking it about pretty confidently though it goes back to the goalkeeper Benitez out to Pascale charged down by Campbell and he's trying to get the crowd involved some more over there he's waving his arms and hands around to try and get the fans on top of the situation, it's going to be a PSV throw-in. Dest will take a bit level with the edge of the D of his own box. Over on that left-hand side for the visitors. Bold into the midfield. Jack pinches the loose ball back into his own half for Barisic. He goes back to Suter. John Suter striding forward, rolling it out to this near side for Barisic. Under pressure from Bakayoko. Turns and plays it off him and out for a Rangers throw. Big Mike. John Suter's good at that, Liam. You know, he's, he's prepared you to You need that, in. though, don't you? You yeah, need that in the, yeah. the modern game. But Ab- even, even back in the day, you, you always needed your centre-half to, to make those kind of driving runs. Well, sometimes if, if you're under immense pressure and you're cutting across someone, you'll draw a foul and, and, and you get yourself out of pressure. Or, or if you're good enough, you step in, commit a midfielder. The key is then is to, is to find one of your teammates and don't get caught in possession. You get caught in possession in the midfield area, that means there's a gap in your central defence. But Big John, is, uh, I think he's, he's shown already this season, there's been times where he steps in there and he's really composed. There's a few of the Rangers players rested at the weekend as the long balls pinged forward towards Noah Lang, got in behind momentarily there, but combination of Tavernier and Goldson do enough to win it back for Rangers. It's picked up by Barisic, long ball up to halfway. Down goes Dessers, fouled by Romalo just on the halfway line. And that'll be a Rangers free kick. And it's nil-nil at Ibrox, 17 and a half minutes played. Yeah, he knows what he's doing, doesn't he? He's just backing in and feels the, the contact, goes to ground, gets his team 40 yards up the pitch. But that one just earlier, the ball over the top from Sangari. If Lang had taken a better touch, he might have been in. Seema collects on this near side level with 18. Poor ball, though, he's giving it straight to Saibari. That's not going to do him any favours with the fans here. A little bit frustrated after that as Falkirk go 2-0 up against Sterling Albion. A Callum Morrison penalty. Spencer and Morrison, the goal scorers. Falkirk 2, Sterling Albion 0 in tonight's League 1 game. Kicked off at 7.45. It's an 8 o'clock kick-off here at Ibrox. 18 in, it's PSV doing the attacking with Bakayoko down the right of the Rangers box. Left-footed ball back to Tays. Now with Lang, who's popped up on this near side. Decides to side put it back to Ramalo. Into the midfield. He sweeps it out to the left for Dest on the touchline. And Saibari's out there now. Plenty interchanging going on between the front players of PSV. 
with the skipper De Jong leading the line. Yeah, he's a, he's the one that's pretty constant, Liam. He's, he's staying through the middle at all times, occupying the two centre backs. But Noah Lang in particular is getting some freedom. And Dest is going through as a, an inside left. It's a chance here for Saibari down the left hand side of the Rangers box. Level with the penalty spot, rolls it in field to Dest, trying to look for some space. Rangers put the block in, though. No. It's one back by Cantwell over on the far side, jinking around, looking to try and shrug off a couple of players. He goes down. And the referee gives Rangers the free kick midway inside their own half over on that Govan stand side. Touchline here at Ibrox, 0-0. I'll tell you what, he does well, this Campbell, because when he receives that ball, he's not got any options other than probably just a hopeful punt up to Dessers. And he man manages to hold on to the ball for, say, four or five seconds to try and draw in pressure and eventually wins the fill. But it has been a, a, something that I've noticed that at times when Rangers are on the ball, their options aren't great off the ball for them and they're getting caught the odd time on the ball. Suter at the edge of his box, under no pressure, squares it to Goldson. He goes back to his goalkeeper. Butman takes a touch, looks up at the pitch and smashes it forward with the left foot. Dessers oh. Romalo, I think he's just had a little uh, arm good. swing out at the defender there. The referee spotted it. Romalo's on the deck inside the centre circle. Cyril Dessers. He's uh, certainly caught him with the uh, back of the arm, was at the elbow. Yeah. It might well have caught Romalo is back on his feet now. It's just a word of warning from Monsieur Turpan, who's in charge tonight. I suppose I can't really comment. I probably would have done the exact same thing, Neil. I'm just waiting on you having a go at the boy. You didn't know he was going to jump in. <laughs> no, I was worried that he'd actually <laughs> caught him worse than he had. He hadn't. He was just trying to block him off with his arm. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Roll back by Dest to Vascali. Left of the centre circle, pings it onto the chest of Akiyoko with a big switch over to the right. Under pressure from Barisic, toes it back to Taze. Infield for Sangari, it goes back to Romalo. And then he squares it to Muscali. Forward to Sangari in the centre circle. Right footed ball, out to the left. Here's Sergio Dest again. The USA International just steps in field, squares it to Sangari. Showed too much of it to Raskan, but enough about him to find Tays just when it looked as though he was going to surrender possession and here come PSV again down the left hand side Des getting it from Lang looking to drive it across looking for the corner goal kick goal is what's been given as it comes bouncing off Goldson it must have come back off the PSV player Des from behind for the goal kick and it stays Rangers nil PSV nil Michael Beale down on his in his technical area right the edge of it as much as Rangers started the game well and, you know, they were getting up into PSV's final third for the last... I mean, pinned a wee bit. 10, 12, 15 minutes, they've not really... Oh, there's a chance here for Sima, he's got away from the defender, he's inside the box, Dessers in the middle, he goes himself, and it's a comfortable save for Benitez at his near post. As Sima tried to profit, right-hand side of the penalty area, he head down, drove forward, had the ball at his feet, elected to go for goal himself. And it's a pretty simple save. Yeah, it was R Romalo had the situation under control, but then slipped on the turf, which allowed Seema to go clean through. His first touch takes him a wee bit wide, and then the angle is very difficult for him to get the shot off. But as I was saying just before that, I feel as though Rangers are struggling to get up the pitch, and we're wondering whether they were going to go direct at the start of the match and then try and work their way up the pitch. That way, that hasn't really transpired because they've been locked in a wee bit by PSV. Yeah, but I, I agree. I just... I don't know, I, I, I think Seema's been out of, start, uh, out of sorts for the first 20 minutes, so I know he had a, 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 good, a good chance there, but we can't well play almost as a front three rather than in the 10. I think it's allowing them a wee bit of comfort to go and press the ball in the middle of the pitch, because Singari can just, uh, he can screen Dessers, and then when they're in possession of football, they can get a man overload in the middle of the pitch, but I tell you, that the one thing that Rangers don't have in their favour, as you said, uh, rightly said, Dess to just come into this side, Liam, there's probably been no, little or, very, uh, or none, in terms of homework done on the boy, don't know what he's like, so they're almost trying to trying to kind of work it out in-house, in-game play, about how quick the boy is, what he does, what's his relationship with Noah Lang. I know they wouldn't have had a relationship, but already they look as if they've got a, a, a bit of a... It certainly looks more dangerous yeah. down the left than it does on the right with Bakayoko, purely because he keeps cutting in the pitch into trouble, but both rapid down that left-hand side, both actually very similar-looking players. Yeah, comfortable on the ball. Dest, he's got 26 caps and two goals for the USA and played at all of their World Cup matches last year, including their last 16 defeat to the Dutch. 
Jack keeps it in play, but only to the benefit of Jordan Tays, who's driving down the right-hand side of the Rangers box, looking for the cross, cut out by Barisic, and out it goes for a throw into PSV on this near side. And our time is when perhaps he just let the ball go out of play. Yeah, I'll just one of them. Yeah. 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 Sangari back into the centre circle for Romalo. Appears to have shrugged off the earlier knock with Cyril Dessers. There's Lang. Back to Vascali, left of the centre circle, steps into the Rangers half. Forward to Joey Fearman, who's been relatively quiet in these opening 24 minutes. Long ball from the goalkeeper Benitez. So far, Rangers have completed 53 passes. PSV have completed 165. That's where this game's sitting at in the stats right now. PSV with about 70% of the ball. Saibari at the edge of the Rangers box, infield the back of Yoko. Back to Saibari, back to Bakayoko, little back heel to Saibari again, shuffles onto the left and loses his bearings completely, and he fires it a good few feet wide of that left-hand post. But that opened up beautifully for PSV Eindhoven, and they created it themselves, just little giving goes at the edge of the penalty area, and it was Saibari, the Moroccan, who let fly, but it was a, a poor effort in the end, and it stays Rangers nil, PSV nil as we approach 25. Yeah, it's a poor effort, but he's a little, he's a little dip in the shoulder just sent Barisic down the line. And then he went inside and played the one-two with uh, Bakayoko. But I mean, he, he's he's a player I remember um, from last season. Had been a real threat. He's sort of playing in a ten position, but he's got the ability to drift from that ten position out of this right side. When he does that, then Noah Lang comes in. So there's a real freedom of movement. But we just have to start getting a grip of the game and getting into higher areas, making PSV defend because as it is, as Tom has pointed out, they're controlling the line, share of possession and territory. Can't well for Rangers out to Tavernier. Rangers doing some attacking this time. Level with the edge of the D of the PSV box. Tavernier looking for some support in blue and white. Gets it eventually from Cifuentes down the right. He's found Cantwell level with the penalty spot. Drives it off the defender. Bouncing ball headed away by Boscali. Back up to the air off the knee of Cifuentes. Tavernier in the box. Can't make it work, but Cantwell wins it back over to the far side. But gives it away in double quick time. And Noah Lang has it infield to Sangari. And then Fearman forward to Bakayoko, and suddenly PSV are three on three here. Bakayoko driving down the pitch, up towards the edge of the box, shoots for goal, and Butland holds on. Good goalkeeping. Bakayoko certainly caught that one. And Butland holds on. 26 in. Rangers nil. PSV Eindhoven nil. It's just another example of how quickly they can counter attack, and they leave numbers up the pitch. They're not afraid to do that. The whole Rangers midfield was wiped out from that one pass. I actually felt as though Bakayoko could have done better. They had three up there, he had two options but his head was down, he was thinking about the shot but on his favoured left foot, it was a decent strike but straight down the throat of Jack Butland he'd probably be disappointed that they didn't make more of that situation but it's just a wee warning to Rangers that if you're going to have everybody ahead of the ball there then when the ball gets broken down in a transition, you're under P Chance for Raskan for Rangers in the PSV half, goes back the way though there's Jack to Cantwell you can, you can hear the Simultaneous groaning every time Rangers pass the ball back. Here they are coming forward though, down the right hand side. Tavernier gives chase. Dest gets there first. Down in front of that pocket of PSV fans. Tavernier puts enough pressure on to force Dest to put it out for a throw in to the hosts with Cantwell after it was taken quickly. Poor ball into the area, cleared by Boscali. The Goldson heads it down that right hand side. And it's headed clear. Picked up by De Jong. Left of the centre circle. Works it back to Fearman, forward to Saibari. He's got a runner in Jordan Taze, the fullback on this right hand side. He's at the right angle of the Rangers box, looks up, it's a oh, clever a ball. ball in and headed behind for the corner by Connor Goldson. With Luke de Jong waiting to smash it home behind him. It stays Rangers nil, PSV nil. Yeah, a wonderful cross in from the fullback. It's just first time as well, shaped in there, beautiful cross. De Jong thinks he's maybe. Just going to walk onto that, but fair play to Connor Goldson. John Shooters across the front post, and there was Connor Goldson just making sure he's central just to clear up the danger. He'd have probably rather that it hadn't just, just gone a foot past his own post. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I think he yeah. caught it a wee bit square, but it cleared the danger. It was good defending. Joey Beerman will take the corner out, swinging with the right foot in the main stand side. It's allowed to bounce in the box, but it skips away to safety, relative safety. Ryan Jack under pressure from Lang, who pinches it back off him. Noah Lang, really good play from him. He goes down, it'll be a corner at the least, and then there's a little bit of afters between Ryan Jack and Noah Lang. Just in the wake of all that, I think it's actually gone behind for a goal kick in the end up. 
but there was a little bit of afters between Ryan Jack and Noah Langneal. Yeah, I mean, it's right up Ryan Jack Street, that. There was a bit of physicality, there was a lot of pulling of the jerseys. You see, Noah Lang's actually got a big hold of, of Ryan Jack's jersey, and then Jack gets a hold of his. It's when they go to the floor, Jack stands over the top of him, tells him to get up, and then Lang has a little kick, but I mean, there's nothing in it for me. Nah, not Absolutely enough. not. Nothing for me, it was a right good tussle. Jack does well to hang on to him because he's very, very quick. Um, if anything, it would probably be pulled back for a full four. Rangers for Jack for the, the the jersey pull was the first action. And I, li I like the fact that Jack got touched tight and was not prepared to let Lang get his foot on the ball and shape him up because that's the last thing Ryan Jack would have wanted because Noah Lang is very good at going both sides, would have committed him into the penalty area. Remember last season, well, last season's first leg was actually pretty even across the board. The things like shots and the, the other statistics in the match, but this has been weighted in PSV's favour so far, albeit Sima did manage a shot and target earlier for Rangers. Ramalo on the left foot back to his goalkeeper. Benitez at the edge of his box, short to Bascali. Into the midfield it goes for Veerman. Dutch international stepping away from Dessers, good play. Then he decides to switch it back out to the left for Serginho Dest. It's it under control and he's got a little bit of space if Wentis trying to close him down. Short to Lang. Lang then back onto the halfway line for Bascali. To Veerman, out to the left-hand side it goes again for Dest. To Lang. And then one back by Tavernier. Got in the way of that pass and gets it back from Cantwell over on the right-hand side, level with the edge of the centre circle in the PSV half. It goes over the line, though, for a throw-in to the visitors. Just but at the half-hour mark here, nil-nil. Yeah, can't get up the touch, Liam, sorry. Tavenier's looking up there, he's got Dessers, but he's got he's got three or four PSV jerseys surrounding him. They don't give you a lot of time in the ball, no, that's something I've noticed as well. They're, they're really very hunt, quick to press. And, and hunting packs, yeah. Stevie, so they surround it, you're passing options. That, that's, that's when Rangers need to get the head up quick. One pass to set and switch to the other side. It's set up for Barisic, particularly down that right side, because they hunt over there really, really well. That should be a setup. Michael Beale and his coaching staff should be watching that scene in the second half of that presents itself. Have a little bounce pass and just ping it to the other side and open them up. Malo under pressure from Sima goes back to his keeper. First time from Benitez to the left of Bascali. Chips it down that left hand touchline for Des. It was a difficult one for Des to deal with. Comes off Tavernier though and out for a throw in to PSV over on that far side. Neil, if you're Michael Beale, what are you thinking right now? I, I think they're reasonably, uh, Michael Beale's reasonably pleased. I don't, as Stevie said there, I mean, De Jong, um, I think it was Noah Lang had a shot, but Butland maybe spilled, and then the one from uh, uh, Bakayoko. But other than that, it's been reasonably comfortable. Listen, they can they can three times Rangers passes, but if they're not really hurting you, it's okay. I think it would look a little bit tidier from Seaman in particular, Cantwell, when I mean, they're in good areas. But just now, they're just, they're just, they're not clicking yet, but they've not found a groove, Rangers, and I think that's purely down to the tempo yeah. that I at uh, PSV are playing Saibari, De Jong's in space as well, Saibari attacking the box, he decides to shoot, blocked by Goldson, that pings out onto that far side for Dest. Rolls it in field for Bascali, left of the centre circle. And then back into his own half for Romalo. You're listening to Sports Sound this evening here at BBC Radio Scotland Extra on 810 Medium Wave on digital and online at bbc.co.uk slash sports Scotland. Champions League playoff, first leg, Rangers nil, PSV Eindhoven nil. The rematch. As Veerman plays it to De Jong, just inside the Rangers half, back to Sangari, first time ball, flashed out to the left for Lang. Three in PSV colours in the middle. De Jong's one of them. Low ball for De Jong. Really Plays good. it off. Jack, who did really a suitor rather, who did well to slide in and block the attempted low ball across by De Jong at the expense of PSV's latest corner. Yeah, really good covering from John Suter. Goldson gets dragged to Noah Lang. Tavernier caught inside the pitch again, but that's due to the movement of PSV. But John Suter across, really lively. In comes the corner. Butland holds on. Good clutch in the six yard line. He'll be happy with that one. The goalkeeper having made the save from Bakayoko earlier on as well. Liam, I was talking about range of shape and, and Cantwell sort of playing off the right, Seema off the left and, and Des is through the middle. That's probably set up to combat uh, the fullbacks of, of PSV going forward, but it's not really worked and I think it's something that... Oh, Romalo under pressure from Seema and then it's going to go behind, I think, for the corner here only. Rangers first of the match, that all came from Seema harassing Andre Romalo into the error and Rangers have their first corner of this Champions League playoff. 
there's twice Romalo, the same players, had problems. This time, Sima chasing a kind of hopeless ball, if you like, putting him under pressure. He does have a tug on Romalo's shoulder. I don't think it's enough for him to go down. And in the end, he kind of panics and slices it out for a corner kick for Rangers. Tavernier to take. Top scorer in the Europa League two seasons ago as Rangers went all the way to the final. And he's going to take this corner on this main stand side. At the Broomloan Road end. On to our left, Tavernier. In front of an expectant crowd at Ibrox. And it comes from Tavernier. It's a deep one. It's a relatively comfortable take for Benitez, the goalkeeper, though. One of his defenders in his way gathers at the second attempt and pulls it out to Joey Veerman midway inside his own half. He's having to twist and turn and burrow his way out of trouble there. He eventually side foots it to his left for just Serginio Des down the line. And a chance for Saibari to find Lang down the left hand side. They've gone from one end to the other in a flash here. Lang's cross way too high and over the bar. And that'll be a goal kick to Rangers and it will stay nil nil. He's got the corner. Noah Lang, he's actually started his PSV Eindhoven career off superbly well. He missed the victory over Vitesse Arnhem at the weekend with injury. He was an injury doubt for this first leg. And he scored a couple of goals in his first couple of games, including the clincher in the Super Cup against Feyenoord inside their own stadium in De Kuyp in Rotterdam before scoring against Utrecht in the opening week of the Eredivisie. Having made that 15 million euro move to the Philips Stadion in the summer. He's uh, throwing his ball back the way. PSV with a 100% start to the campaign, having beaten Sturm Graz in both legs at the previous qualifying round to this, the third qualifying round as Rangers were beating Servette. Those three domestic successes so far, they won their oh, one back-to-back -back Dutch Cups last season as well. PSV is the yellow card comes out for James Tavernier. Over on the far side, you heard Neil in the background there. It was clipped forward towards Lang. Super he was movement. brought down. Get a really good movement, Liam. Honestly, brilliant. Uh, watching a lot of spin here, look. Just goes and spins in behind him. He's getting tight because Noah Lang wants the ball to feet. He's so talented and, get, and get great great control and gets 1v1, but he just spun him there. Tam, you're too tight. That's not ideal. No, it's not, particularly because that's been the main source of threat for me yep. down uh, PSV's left side. You've seen Bakayoko now and again on this side, but you're right, it's the combination play of Dest and Lang and Saibari helping out both wingers. To be fair, he's on this side now, but that's going out for a throw into Rangers level with the edge of the centre circle. We're in the final ten minutes, in fact, the final nine minutes of the first half here under the lights at Ibrox. And it's a throw-in to be taken by Barisic down this left-hand side, headed out for a throw-in by Tez. Barisic now level with the edge of the centre circle in the PSV half on this near side in front of the watching PSV manager Peter Bosch. Barisic pulls it looking for Dessers, the big long leg of Sangari comes out to win it back for the visitors as De Jong meets it first time on the halfway line, pressing it back to Lang. First time ball out to Saibari on the near side, now back to Yoko to Saibari again, midway inside the Rangers half. Back into their own territory for Ramalo to Sangari to Ramalo and he squares it to Buscali. Square ball for Ramalo again. Tays wants it out wide in the right, gets it in defeat now. Been met by Abdallah Sima. Infield to Sangari. Lovely one two. Bakayoko back to Sangari. Back to Bakayoko. Brilliant build up play by PSV. Sangari has it on this near side against Raskan into the midfield for Fearman. The little chip ball out to Bakayoko on the near side, controls it, rolls it infield to Singari. The Rangers fans getting frustrated because PSV are well and truly on top here. They're dictating the ball, weaving it around this playing surface. It's now out wide left with Dest, down the line for Lang. De Jong's in the middle. It is a low ball across and Butland holds on at his near post in his six-yard area with De Jong lurking and it stays Rangers nil, PSV nil as we tick on to 38 minutes. But this has been a, a difficult period in the game for Rangers, this one. Yeah, I mean, the PSV's possession of the ball has been brilliant at times to watch their passing. On that occasion, they worked from one side of the pitch all the way over to the other. That combination again between uh, Dest and Lang, the ball gets fizzed across the front post. I felt as though De Jong could have made more of an effort to get across the front than he did, but 
thankfully for Rangers, Butland there to kind of scoop it up around about the six-yard box. But yeah, PSV, the, the quality of pass and the quality of movement off the ball is far superior to what Rangers are offering. Just a moment ago, Liam, I was just talking about if Rangers can get a set-up pass to switch. It happened there, didn't it? Uh, and Raskin just unfortunately handled it, come off his elbow um, when he tried to control it. But it's certainly an area that Rangers could expose uh, PSV because they are getting really shifted across in the game, particularly the wide boys come inside, Noah Lang comes inside, uh, Bakayoko on this side. It's something that I think they make a joy of in the second half. PSV are bossing this game like they didn't boss it last year here. It was a more even match. Jackson trouble. Here's Saibari moving towards the Rangers box now. Rolls it to the overlapping desk. Little chip ball comes off the defender. And PSV Eindhoven have another corner. Over on that left-hand side. This is their third of the evening. Yeah, unfortunately for Rangers, it's just been kind of waves of attack for the last 10 minutes or so, even longer than that. The bonus for Rangers is that so far in the final third, that killer pass or the killer touch hasn't quite been there for PSV and they've managed to kind of ride this period out, but whether or not they can sustain that for another 45 minutes in the second half. Another five minutes of this one, the corner comes in, to cleared at the near post by Seema, it wasn't a good delivery. And uh, Rangers get it away, but it's going to come right back at them here, you suspect. Tays right to the centre circle, long ball it's poor though, so you look for Lang who gives him the thumbs up anyway but it sails into touch for a throw into Rangers over on that right hand side to be taken by the booked James Tavernier gets it back from Jack digs out a ball down the right, Dessers gives chase Pascali gets there first though, and now Dest down the line and PSV have it back switch of play from Fearman. now it's Tays. loads of space to operate in here, rolls it to the right of the boxer, Bakayoko steps onto the left and then his attempted cross, it's cut out, Saibari has it, Sima battling with him, trying to win it back and he's done well, Sima is back in possession for Rangers but Saibari reacts and wins it back for PSV and redeems himself having given it away in the first place and goes back to his goalkeeper, final five minutes of the first half. It is nil-nil, and this is a tough old watch for the Rangers supporters. You can hear them in the background when they don't retain possession. Yeah, I tell you what's difficult, though. See when good players work hard, what this PSV team are doing, it's, it's, a, it's going to be a tough night. And that's when the, the fans are letting Seema know that it, when he stopped there, when he got bounced off the ball by Saibari, he just stopped. That's unacceptable to these Rangers fans. You have to put an output out. For Fowl and Romalo, they've taken a free kick. They don't care the fact that their defender's still in the the ground and pain, they attack the Rangers box, Des to the left hand side, he's found Noah Lang who rolls it back to Fearman Fearman on the turn away from Cantwell and then Fearman switching it to Taze on this near side Taze recently managed to get himself into the Dutch national side as Fearman did it's a brilliant turn by Singari. He's just taken Raskan right out of the game. He finds Saibari, he finds De Jong, but it's an overstretch from De Jong. He comes off his boot and right back to Jack Butler. Then it stays Rangers nil, PSV Eindhoven nil. But they're probably looking for the half-time whistle at this point, these Rangers players. Yeah, I would say so, Liam. I would say so. I mean, I'm just looking at Dessers there. I'd be interested to know how many times he's touched the ball in this half. And it's not necessarily his fault really because Rangers have been so reluctant or, or found it so difficult to get up the pitch that he really mustn't have touched the ball too often in the game and actually sent her forward Honestly Liam at half time if Kenny's listening we'll get in a wee bit attacked because Rangers need to adapt here because they're getting murdered down this wide side now there is Lang, right-hand side of the box, he finds Taze early, low ball in, no takers, it's still alive though, pulled back and cleared by Goldson on the six-yard line. That was just needing someone in PSV colours to get in the end of it, and it's one nothing. It stays nil-nil. What a ball across it was. The Rangers just seemed to leave it. Here's Taze on this near side. Short ball to Sangari. This is the one playoff first leg that hasn't got a goal tonight so far Bakayoko picks up on the right hand side teasing Barisic into the box shoots wide of that near post he's looked for the top right postage stamp corner couldn't find it goes behind for the goal kick it stays nil nil on 43 yeah we're right behind that they are He's going in and Barisic is right side, which is always going to be weak on his turn. It's not going to be it's a strong... It's, we're right behind it. It's, it's always going wide for us, but I don't, I'm not sure Jack Butland 
knew that, but they're starting to wind it up now. I was talking about that left side for PSV being really um, fruitful out there, uh, but, uh, but Taze is getting some amount of room, and it's because Raskin's getting dragged into Singari, it's then getting popped out of Taze, and he's getting a free run to put balls into the box. They've, they've really got to get a grip of the, the shape here, Rangers, they're really suffering. 3-0 Falkirk at half-time against Sterling Albion. It was a Ross McKeever goal made at three before the break in League One, rearranged because of Sterling Albion's cup duties last week. Here's Cantwell down the right for Rangers, across the face of goal. Dessers is being howled at here because the Rangers fans feel he should have driven into the six-yard area to get onto the end of that. Instead, it went across the face of goal with no takers. I would have to agree that that's what he should have done. You know, you see that the winger, or in this occasion it was Cantwell, got to the byline. He's going to flash it across the gap between the six-yard line and the goalkeeper. Dessers had pulled out slightly. Rangers win it back here with Dessers inside the box, pulls it back towards Raskin. Seema shoots, goal! Oh, what a finish then. comes from PSV trying to overplay from their goalkeeper into the centre half, he gives it away, the ball breaks kindly for Rangers right to the edge of the box, and there is Seema who's not had a good half at all but this is an incredible finish, right into the top corner, showing a lot of composure and talent there and you, you, you couldn't have seen a goal for Rangers coming No, it's certainly not from Seema he said he's not had the best of halves, a difficult night but I'm telling you that is world class finish Benitez can dive all he wants for that because he's he's just a spectator. But it comes from Raskin jumping. I've been saying about him jumping when the when when PSV are, are in good positions in control of the football. They weren't there. He jumped. He created the pressure. And, it, and when it came back to Sima, what a finish that is! There's pace. There's accuracy. I mean, it was just precision stuff. We're into one minute of injury time or stoppage time at the end of the first half. Desk goes for goal. It's blocked and Rangers who at one point there would have been quite happy to get in at nil-nil. Now desperate for the half-time whistle. 1-0 up they are. Saibari, though, for PSV. Low ball from the right-hand side towards De Jong is cut out by Suta and cleared. And that is the half-time whistle. And what an end to the first half that was for Rangers. And in particular for Abdallah Sima, who exploded a stunning finish into the top right corner to give Rangers the lead here and edged them perhaps towards the Champions League groups again. Came from absolutely nowhere. PSV have had so much possession, so many passes, 326 completed passes. Rangers, by contrast, just 83. But it doesn't matter. It's about putting it in the net, and that's what Sima did. Butler made a couple of saves up the other end. But that magical moment from Sima in the final minute of the opening 45 of this playoff is what's given Rangers the edge against the Dutch Cup winners. Half-time at Ibrox in this Champions League playoff first leg is Rangers 1, PSV Eindhoven 0. And this evening we are live from Ibrox. Incredibly, Rangers lead PSV Eindhoven by one goal to nil in their Champions League playoff. Abdallah Sima with an absolute screamer on the 45th minute. That after fairly constant pressure from their wayside, they look very, very tidy. So many good players, so good in the ball. Fantastic movement. Rangers were struggling to get up the field and have any impact on this game. But that goal from Sima hadn't been having a good first half, you'd have to say. His touch wasn't great, his confidence looked to be going. The fans were on his back. But right in the stroke of half time, he made himself a hero here, Tom English. This has been an incredible first half. That's surreal. You know, I mean, I think everyone, obviously, in the stadium was, was overjoyed, but I think utterly shocked as well. Yeah. I mean, the quality of the finish, as the lads were saying, was just unbelievable. Unbelievable. Um, the quality of everything that went before belonged to PSV. They looked so slick without, without creating uh, uh, cutting chances. 
they, they, the quality of what they were doing was class, one touch, two touch, slick, uh, quick. Uh, it looked like Rangers were just hanging on. They were doing well to crowd them out at the back. They were defending, defending well, denying PSV chances, but not denying the possession and territory and all the rest. And then this goal just, just literally drops out of the Glasgow sky. I mean, it's, it's, I'm genuinely shocked. But what a finish. We, we all are. What incredible scenes when that goal hit the back of the net, Stephen Thompson. I think shock, bewilderment, but real quality from Seema. As I was saying, that he hadn't been having a great game. No, he hadn't. I think he struggled down this left-hand side. I think you're right to point out, he looked low in confidence a couple of occasions where you want, you wanted him to go and run and commit a defender. He was kind of turning back. He hadn't really been involved. But then you only need one moment in a match and the goal kind of came out of nothing really but PSV trying to overplay they've been caught do, doing that probably on about two or three occasions it's what they do it's what you see the top teams doing but if you get your press right and Rangers did have good pressure on at the time um, you can break that and when the ball rolls back to him what is he like 19 yards out on a pretty tough angle we are standing right, we're sitting right behind it, and he just curls it expertly right into the top corner. I did not, as I said in commentary, see a Rangers goal coming because after the decent start that they've had to the match, they have been camped pretty much in their own half, and it's been wave of wave after wave of PSV attack and PSV possession. And Rangers have had to try and absorb that. I thought if they get in at half time at 0 0, then you know try and rearrange a few things and you'd be reasonably pleased with that however to go in at 1-0 up now it gives them something massive to try and hold on to get a clean sheet in this next 45 minutes and then you've got that advantage to take over to uh, the Netherlands next week I, I give the Rangers fans uh, a lot of credit half an assist for that goal because just a minute before <laughs> they were on Desser's case he wasn't allowed yeah. to the cross looked flat footed looked a little bit a little bit lazy for their liking Oh, when, it, when the came, moment came, he didn't. He, he, he was very much alive to it. Hustles, I think it was Sangari out of it. Yeah. And lays it off, and lo and behold, the ball is in the back of the net. And so, yeah, well done, the Rangers. Fans. His layoff, <laughs> his layoff actually takes a wee deflection. What is it? It, it, it takes it into the path of Sima, um, which was the fortuitous. But but actually, you've got to go and press, and you've got to go and make your own luck. And they did that, and you're right to point out because there was once when Sima didn't do it, and Dessels <clears> didn't do it, and here, believe you me. If you're not chasing lost causes and you're not looking like you're absolutely busting a gut and busting a gut, then this support will not accept it. And these are two new players. They will learn that very quickly because nobody wants to be getting pelters off the fans. <laughs> but you're right to point out, on that occasion, they did and they got the result from it. Neil, I love when you guys talk tactics. We'll, we'll do that in just a minute, but we must show appreciation for this PSV side. At yeah. times, they're an absolute joy to watch. Well, you can see why Bosch before the game was, was pretty bullish in terms of what his side are about. Good in the ball, good football inside, confident company, Ibrox. They did dominate possession, just looking at the stats, almost three times the uh, amount of passes. They played 362 passes, 328 of those have made their mark. So they're a good side. Um, I think the freedom of movement they've got when Noah Lang comes in. So Barry, uh, he sits in the 10, and when he vacates that, it allows Noah Lang to roll into that 10 position. It frees up uh, Dest out in the left-back position. And it was, it was a main source of threat for PSV. But... It got to about 25 minutes, half an hour, and what was happening, Kenny, was that Raskin was then starting to jump because Sangari was starting to control a little bit of the, the, the central midfield area, and when he was bouncing, it was it, Taze was, it was getting on the overlap, and it was giving Barisic a problem because he's getting sucked in the back of Yarrow. So there's so many moving parts of this PS, PSV uh, team that are giving Rangers... Sorry, if I just uh, said the wrong name there. Sorry, I'm away in a wee flow of tactics. Leave me alone, Tomo. <laughs> I, keep going, um, I love the tactics, So, so, so the point I'm making is, if you're playing, if you're playing with a, a central striker of, of Dessers and Cantwell sort of playing to the right and, and Seema to the left, it's really there to guard against uh, the fullbacks getting on easy possession. But they're playing slightly in narrow. So the fullbacks are almost, in particular, Des standing out on the, the left wing area. So if that's not going to work you have to combat the midfield area because what they're doing is Jack's sitting central Raskin and Sifuentes are then being asked to bounce to the fullbacks and it's too much for them because when they go the wide players are coming inside and they're getting so much of an overload Kenny and it's hard to paint a picture when you're just 
talking quickly but I'm seeing things and yeah. it's giving them real trouble although Rangers are in it they're 1-0 up here they can't they can't just expect that this PSV team will continue to play like they did in the first half and not test Butland more they will has the quality Mike, has, has Mike, to come through has Michael Beale changed anything throughout that first half did I, he do anything to counter it I haven't seen it just now but the good thing is he's sitting in there 1-0 up yeah. and he can look at that uh, he did it last last week um, he was able to change the tactics because the same thing was happening if you remember the fullbacks particularly the right side were bombing forward and he adapted it by uh, by getting Cantwell on the 10 and then that that allowed the two wider midfielders of the three to bounce because when the wider midfield Sapuentes and Raskin bounced to the wide area Cantwell dropped into a central position so they weren't getting outmanned in the middle of the park so it worked really really effectively and he's, he's already proved Michael Beale is an astute coach the beauty is here that they're 1-0 up they might have surrendered possession they might have surrendered to maybe a, a better sexier football side on the night but they're 1-0 up that's a really good position to be in Talk to us about Dessers, Tomo. What, what do you see in him as a striker? Where, where do the problems lie? Is it confidence for you right now? I just he's been starved of service for a start and you know I've played that role a number of times as a lone striker when you're playing against a better team that have got tons of possession and you're feeding off scraps but you've just got to do that and you've got to show the right application when the ball does come to you chase lost causes try and get your team up the pitch when you can he is you know a bigger player than Danilo that's for sure but um, I'm not entirely convinced he's a target man type player there was the one occasion when the ball got flashed across the box by Cantwell I felt as though he could have bust himself to get in there and the crowd kind of maybe felt that as well it's a difficult game to judge him in because when you're ha having so few touches of the ball, it's difficult to to make an impact in the game. He had an impact in, in the goal. It was actually Raskin who went right in on Singari, chased him a good 15 yards, anticipated and put the pressure on him. The ball then broke to Dessers, his cutback takes a nick and then Seema puts it in the top corner. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't expect Rangers to play further up the, the pitch in this second half, so I, I, I really do feel he'll still be starved of the ball I wonder whether Rangers will say like we've got this 1-0 lead can we actually sit on it we've managed 45 minutes there without conceding alright we've not had a lot of the ball we've not but really you've had the long shot um, from Bakayoko or his Bakayaro as Neil likes to call him that's his middle name and, um, <laughs> unforgiving Neil isn't it I'll tell you what, it's a long night though Kenny <laughs> <laughs> and, and I tell you what when I'm doing sports scene on Saturday night I'll be just waiting you I watch. can't wait I'll let you from that hey, it's, it's just good to get my own back because I make mistakes all the time and you're sitting there with your wee smirky face on when I do them and that's on telly so anyway right but yeah I mean I think it's it's, it's, it's hard to be too critical of Dessers yeah. right now because he's been starved of service talk to us Neil about John Suter at the back he's been an edge tonight hasn't he he's been really really good I, I think both centre backs at times have covered each other really well there was an occasion where it came out to Taze on the right side here um, I think it was Taze and, and, and as the ball got flashed across John Suter as a centre back has to be across the first post it's really important then that you're tagged in with your other centre back there's a relationship to make sure that he's immediately behind you for the striker coming into that area Goldson did that the same on the other side when uh, Goldson went short got dragged out of position there was John Suter covering but he's, he's, he's good on the ball we spoke about stepping in it'll be important listen they're going to come under some heavy pressure in the second half I feel uh, Bosch looks like the type of manager it, it doesn't it doesn't settle for uh, mediocrity um, I think they're playing at a good tempo PSV but I really do believe that they'll, they'll take more risk I think they'll, they'll ask more demands uh, of the front players in particular uh, I don't think there's any necess necessity for uh, Vermin and Singari both to sit, so he'll ask one of them to get in touch. That'll place more demand on the central midfielders. But I think John Suter, after a really difficult start into a Ranger jersey, yeah. you know, coming, picking up a lot of injuries, I think is looking really, really good. And I'm so pleased for the boy because he's been through so much trouble. But he's looking like a good partner there for Conor Goldson. Yeah, the pressure in this second half is going to be incredible, Tom, isn't it? The quality that PSV have got, you just know they're going to carve out probably four or five really good chances. Well, you'd have you, you said that, given the amount of possession they had, the amount of passes they had, the amount of class they showed, that that, that would automatically uh, kind of uh, transfer into, into really good chances, but it hasn't really. I mean, Rangers have defended very well. They've crowded them out, they've... The kind of scramble and scramble defence has been very, very good. Block shots from distance. 
PSV, for all their class, haven't had too many clear-cut openings, if any, actually. So will they come in the second half? Possibly. They're good enough to do it, absolutely good enough to do it. Rangers' concentration levels, I think, at the back have been very, very high. Discipline has been has been good, apart from the early Tavernier yellow card. You began to fear for him at that, at that point with Lang bumming down that left-hand side. But the discipline and concentration have been, have been excellent, and then the goal arrives, and I think we're all a little bit, still a little bit in shock about that. Yeah, no doubt about that, Neil. And we experienced Rangers in the Champions League last season. You know, they were outclassed, and you can see the step up here tonight, can't you? From being against Servette, this is a real high-quality team. This is going to take an exceptional performance in the second half. Yeah, absolutely. Huh? Yeah, I think the fans will, will play their part. I mean, it's a very special ground, Kenny, and it can have it can have serious effects on opposition players. Yeah. I've no doubt, uh, as, as, as Tom said there, I, I'm pretty sure that the fans played their part in that goal. The good thing when Raskin jumps, he's jumping in a good area, aren't he, Singari? It, it, as, I, as I try to point out, sometimes he's jumping in a central area and opening up the wide position. But it's, it's so important that the distances of this Rangers side in this second half are, are closed. They don't try and... Um, they're not they're not encouraged to, to, to go and, like Dessers or, or Seema, go and press on his own and leave spaces in between because this is where this outfit are really, really dangerous. I, I think you'll see that the, the compactness of the side will be good. I think Michael Beale will encourage them to stay connected. And if they can do that, and try and hit in the break. Yeah, this is where you might see little Danilo coming on. Yeah. His pace and his sharpness. Maybe for Seema, we said that he didn't have a great a great first half until he comes up with that absolute world-class goal. Um, that might energise him. But the but the ability to, to hit in the counter-attack might suit Rangers in the second half. You know, I, you know, a lot of these Rangers players wouldn't have played, played in Europe, or some of them wouldn't have played in Europe for Rangers if they didn't understand the power of this crowd when things are going your way, they understood it when the ball hit the back of the net because the roar for that goal was something else. The Rangers team are now out here for you about for a minute or so. An incredible atmosphere here at Ibrox this evening. Liam gave you an update earlier on from League One. Falk at three, Sterling Albion, Neil Spencer, Morrison and McIver with the goals there uh, for John McGlynn's side. But our main focus, of course, tonight is in this Champions League playoff. Somehow, Rangers had their noses in front thanks to a wonderful goal from Abdallah Sima. Can they hang on? Can they take an advantage to the Netherlands next week? We shall find out in the company of Neil McCann, Stephen Thompson and Liam McLeod. Rangers continuing this fantastic goal-scoring record they have in home European matches. They've only failed to score in three out of the last 31 European home games now. Slavia, Prague, Lyon and Napoli all emerged with clean sheets, but they've scored at least once in the other 27, including this one this evening. 28 as it is now. As PSV prepare to get the second half underway, no changes for either team. French referee just having one last look at his watch, gets it started, blows the whistle, and PSV in the white coloured cream tops with the grey shorts go right to left, shooting towards the broom loan. And Rangers in the blue shirts, white socks, or shorts, black socks with the red tops, moving towards the Copeland Road end in the second half as they tend to do. The ball slipped through towards. The final third, Jack Butlin reads it, comes out to the edge of his own box and clears as Seema, the hero for the Rangers supporters, driving down that left-hand side. He'll be absolutely buzzing really just now. Shows too much of it to Ramallo, but he's put it out for a throw into Rangers up the pitch over on that far side. But it's what he didn't do in the first half, and you can see how energised yeah. he's been from that goal. It's the first time he's opened up his legs and took his full back on down the line. Door was taken, Cantwell helps to the right-hand side of the box for Tavernier, Sequentes back to Tavernier, goalkeeper makes the save, Rangers were almost in for a quick fire second there, as it's booted to safety by Sangari into the centre circle, what a start to the second half that would have been, when you consider how they finished the first, free kick PSV inside the centre circle, meantime as Saibari has his legs taken from him. Yeah, they're a wonderful little one-two there. I just wonder whether there was a little tug in the jersey on the arm, the left arm, maybe. What a on James Tavenier from, from Dest, is it? But I tell you, it's a really good save. I wonder, Tomo, I think you would have stuck the big head in that, would you not? Yeah, probably would have gone on my head. I was thinking yeah. that at the time. But actually, when you watch that replay back, he gets a good connection on it, does Tavenier. The ball's kind of sitting about waist height. The goalkeeper's only a foot away from it. He manages to, incredible reactions, flick his arm out and clear the danger. 
Long ball for PSV towards the young one in the air by Goldson, flicked away by Jack into the centre circle, but it's met by Singari. He heads it to his left for Fearman. Pascali manages to work it to Singari as it's played to the right-hand side for Taze down the line. And there's an opportunity for Bakayoko, who goes down. He's going to win the free kick as well. Yeah, well it's over on away. that far side, touch line, a bit level with the edge of the D of the Rangers box. And the yellow card is out for Borna Barisic as well. Yeah, that's both fullbacks now on a yellow card. Cynical. Bakayoko is just too quick, takes a nice touch with his right foot and just shifts it with the left. Chance this for PSV, they've loaded the box. They've brought Pascali and Romalo up for this one as well, the two centre backs. Rangers with Butlin in goal, Tavernier, Goldston, Suter and Barisic, Sifuentes, Jack, Vascan, Cantwell, Dessers and Sima. That is how they start the game, it's how they start the second half. PSV free kick over on that far side. The feet from the touchline, Veerman. Romalo attacks it and he kind of flicks it back out to this left hand side of the box. He stayed down inside the six yard area. Dest keeps it alive, crosses in, Butman commits himself and clutches on with both gloves and it stays 1 0 to Rangers on 48. He just seemed to lose his balance in there, did Romalo? He makes a good run into the box, just gets caught under it and when he lands, that's the problem. That's why he stayed down. Jokes is going. That's a good chance. He's just, he just, he missed he times the jump a wee bit. Yeah, he just doesn't hang long enough, but he got a, a, a run inside. Dessers there. Rangers going zonal marking from a wide free kick, like most teams do now, but with that zonal marks, it's really, it's really important that you, you cover the space between and in front. Makayoko attacking the box, right hand side of it, rolls it back to Saibari, he shoots, blocked by Suter. He'll break to Noah Lang here for PSV. Left hand side of the Rangers box, now level with the six, down towards the byline, dancing into the box, winning the corner of Tavernier. Good positive play by Noah Lang for the one time European Cup winners. PSV Eindhoven under the legendary coach Gusidink when they did so in the late 80s. Also. UEFA Cup winners in 78 as well, PSV as the corner comes in, but it's way too close to Butlin, who holds on to it again with both hands, and Rangers maintaining their 1-0 advantage in this Champions League playoff. Commanding on cross balls, isn't he? He don't want to tempt fate, but he's really good for a centre-back, it's just brilliant, your eyes light up when you see the keeper coming, yeah. and his decision-making is good. Pascali down this near side, Cantwell goes down as if he's been caught, Lang plays it back away to Serginio Dest and uh, play's going to stop to allow attention to Todd Cantwell here seemed fairly innocuous Cantwell wasn't the man in possession as he was caught the guy's getting a chance to see a replay it's just I think he's been caught in the follow through from Pascali's clearance yeah if anything Cantwell's kind of filled in but he's come in kind of a, a fraction late just as the defender was clearing the ball maybe just get caught with the follow through a wee stud on the ankle should be okay this is the fifth time these two have been drawn together in UEFA competition the eight previous meetings Rangers have won four PSV won the other ones were drawn 3-2 Rangers last year in aggregate of course Cholak scoring in both legs Tom Lawrence if you remember him he's uh, not stripped tonight he was on the bench the League Cup tie against Morton at the weekend after a timid first half performance, Rangers lost the previous meeting to that 1-0 at Ibrox after a goalless first leg in Eindhoven back in uh, 8 09 And uh, the tie before that was much more memorable as they swept them aside in the Champions League groups. I've got the name McCann written in bold black letters in front of me, scored the third in the home game against PSV. Well, I don't know what to say again, Liam. <laughs> Not again. <laughs> Game's back underway here, meantime. Cantwell's back in his feet, seems to be moving around OK. It's collected by Romalo. Out to the right-hand side for Tays, just toes it away from Raskan. But Jack gets onto the loose ball for Rangers, but he gives it away as well. A little bit sloppy from both teams. Bakayoko collecting out wide on that right-hand side against Raskan, who does well to win it back. Terrier like from Nicholas Raskan. Here's Dessers driving forward into his stride, runs into Romalo. Bobbling ball, breaks Joey Veerman's way. He 
plays it to Tays, who sweeps it back to the edge of the D of his own box for Pascali, who turns it to this near side for Test. No ball in field for Pascali, switching it to the right for Tays again. Back to Romalo. A walking pace for PSV. Rangers now have something to cling on to. A 1 0 lead given to them by Abdallah Sima just before the break. But here come PSV down the left desk. has found Lang, loads of space. Been closed down by Goldson. He does really well. Blocks the cross at source and puts it out for a throw into PSV Eindhoven on this near side. That's, read that superbly well yeah it did but Tavenier get dragged right in with Des there and, and if that's going to happen then Sapuentes must go with the runner on the outside otherwise if Tavenier just stays there and lets the ball go wide just, just don't, don't encourage big spaces in behind you down the right with Bakayoko of the Rangers box taking on Barisic cross comes in Barisic with a challenge goal kick given can back off the PSV player last the young Belgian open on the right hand side for the visitors, Peter Bosch down there, their coach, arms folded, steely faced. He's been here and won twice before as a manager, but he looks a little bit perplexed down there. Perhaps wondering how on earth his team is behind in this game. Yeah, but for all the all their dominance on the ball, Liam, creating chances have been at a premium for them, really. They've not really managed to force Rangers too much into working Jack Butland. Yeah, Barisic having to do some defending down by the byline though, as he knocks it out for a throw in the PSV on the far side. They were 1-0 down to Vitesse Arnhem at the weekend at half-time. Eventually turned it round and won 3-1. They'd equalised by this point though, they were level within three minutes of the restart. And as uh, the goalkeeper Benitez fires it out to this near side for Dest, under pressure from Zifuentes. The Rangers fans liking the press from their players. They're not giving PSV an inch. And that's gone out off Cantwell for a throw in. Again, Cantwell waving his arms around trying to get the crowd involved. Yeah, he likes a wee bit of that, doesn't he? I tell you though, I have to, I have to compliment him because the press is ignited by him. His decision making on, on, on when to commit and when not uh, is the reason why Rangers got into a very, very good position. Good play by Jack, finds Fuentes, back to Jack on this near side. Over by the touchline to Tavernier, and now Fuentes, right-hand side of the box, is crossed though. Takes a touch off the defender and the goalkeeper holds on in the six-yard line. And on 54 and a half it remains Rangers 1, PSV 0. Really good play from Ryan Jack, it looked like he was going nowhere there, but manages to pop away. Near Saibari up the other end though, Bakayoko charging on the right, lays it back to Saibari, time to pick his spot, and he shoots over the crossbar. What a chance it was, just inside the penalty area. He looked up, but he leaned back, and it goes over the bar, and it stays 1-0 Rangers. Yeah, Ryan Lightning. Jack does unbelievably well to get back, to get back from where in. he was. You know, he'd just been up the other end of the pitch. It was a lightning quick counter attack from PSV, and the man putting uh, uh, Savari under pressure was Ryan Jack, who I was just seeing down in this right hand side. Looked like he'd gone nowhere, he had no avenue to get out, but managed to pull off a one two, work it into the box. Unlucky of Savantes when he tried to smash it across the face, and it just deflected into the goalkeeper Benitez's arms. Well, sometimes, or most of the time, I think, the teams like to have the deciding leg, the decisive leg at home. The Rangers have come through four of the last five ties that they've seen them play at home first against Red Star and Braga in 2020. PSV last year, as we were discussing earlier, and Servette in the last round. The only reverse was against Bayer Leverkusen, who were managed by the current PSV boss at the time as... Pascali loses out, the referee sees that as a free kick on him in the centre circle. Looked relatively soft. This is one of, not just UEFA, but FIFA's top referees who's here tonight, Clement Turpin. Yeah, I can't say I saw too much in it. A foul on Veerman. Rangers win it back, Vascan got in the road of his countryman back at Yoko. Here's Jack, out wide left for Raskan again. Passes it back to Barisic, who in turn goes back to his goalkeeper. Short ball, Butland to Suter, sweeps it up high into the Glasgow sky, drops down onto Cantwell, but he can't control. Veerman picks yeah, it up. And Tavernier. Yeah, try to thread it through to Lang, Tavernier gets in the way. Given away by Sifuentes, who I think has been on the periphery of this tonight, he's not really got involved. Agreed. Here's Lang, infield to Singari, loses it, Cantwell collects. 
and then he gives it away. Here's Saibari, and then Cantwell will be yellow carded because he's just had a cynical trip out at Saibari. And that will be the third Rangers player into the book, and Cantwell just letting his frustration boil over there, having given the ball away really cheaply. He is the third Rangers player in the book, and he joins Tavernier and Barisic in the, the yellow card stakes here. And PSV have a free kick around about, what, 20, between 25 and 30 yards from goal. It's pretty central, and it's in an attacking position, Neil McCann. Yeah, it is. Um, <laughs> as you touch on there with Cantwell, he's, he's, he's got caught in possession of the football, he needs to release it. So Fuentes, you're absolutely spot on. I think he, I think he has been on the edges of the game. I think Rangers have been guilty of trying to bounce it quick the first time rather than just taking control of the football I think that's why PSV get themselves in so many good positions because when the ball goes into tens or, uh, or midfield areas they're confident enough to take control of the ball but this is an opportunity for PSV I mean I know it's I know it's quite a distance out well we shall see Joey Fearman's lining it up right footed he's gone for goal Butland packs it away behind for the corner diving to his left PSV corner Butland tested perhaps uh, if that goes in, he's disappointed, so he's got yeah. to make the save, but it was there to be made. Yeah, it was a fairly standard save for him in the end. I mean, Thierman gets the accuracy right, but there wasn't enough pace in the ball to really test Jack Butland. He made no mistake with his clearance. Now swinging corner for PSV Eindhoven. It's been taken low to Taze. First time ball, looking for Romalo. Goldson's strong against him. Sliced clearance by Cantwell. It's still in his area. There's Goldson push there. nods it away, but he's been pushed at the same time. And that's going to be a Rangers free kick just to the edge of their own box, which they are trying to take quickly, but <laughs> it was taken from nowhere near no, the scene no. of the crime. 20, 25 yards further up the pitch from the, the foul. Tell you what, a big header from Connor Goldson there. PSV took the corner shot. It wasn't a brilliant ball into the box, but it could have been one of those ones that just get helped on at the, at the near post and flicked towards the back. But Connor Goldson met it well. What a week of European action it is. Tomorrow, Hibernian against Aston Villa. Live here on Sports and on BBC Radio Scotland and on Sports Scene on the BBC Scotland television channel. Then on Thursday, that of course in Conference League qualifying, Hearts take on Pauk, but in the Europa League, it's Haken Aberdeen. Six for the Dons game, 7.45 at Tynecastle. Again, coverage, BBC Radio Scotland and the Hearts match live on the television as I'm, well uh, sorry William I'm not so sure there well I mean the, the striker coming up centre back there's a bit of uh, maybe uh, yeah, you can just see there it's, uh, it's a left arm across the throat Dessers on Biscali as the long ball was played up to him yes yes it was and I wasn't sure if it was just six or one half a dozen or the other but you can see the left hand come up again from Dessers he likes that one he has a little look at Biscali and then just uh, catches, uh, catches him on the throat well, he knows the Dutch league well, Cyril Dessers. He was joint top scorer in the season that was ended because of the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, they called the season without awarding the title that term, but he was, at the time of the football being stopped, joint top scorer in Holland. Romalo picks up in the centre circle. Side football to the left. Across the halfway line goes Boscali. Out to Noah Lang on this near side, midway inside the Rangers half, down the left-hand touchline. Pascali whips a wonderful ball in, no takers. It's picked up by Bakayoko though, and it's going to break to Sangari, who level this match! Smashed home by Sangari, who got PSV's first goal at Ibrox last year. It's a brilliant ball in from the left, there were no takers that time, but when it was worked back to just inside the area, there was absolutely no mistake from the Ivorian Ibrahim Sangari, who squares this Champions League playoff. Rangers won, PSV Eindhoven won. Oh, what a ball in from the left, but unbelievable vision from Sabai. Watch the body when it comes into the box. The ball's been shoved in the line by, by Noah Lang, and this is a wicked cross into the box, and when it goes right through to the other side, it's rolled back in. A little step over from Saibari. Saibari is absolutely beautiful. There's clearly information given by Singari, and it's just dispatched with power, accuracy. It's a quite wonderful I hadn't wonderful actually given goal. him the credit for that when it happened live in front of us. I hadn't spotted that he'd done the over. It is That's because you're not get that in the bag, Tom. I'm not getting that vision, <laughs> no. But uh, it's a phenomenal wee over for him, and when it comes out to Singari, I mean, he's only, what, seven yards out he's just got to guide it past the goalkeeper into the back of the net how do Rangers respond to that? Well, PSV will feel a 
Uh, that is well deserved. We've bossed big spells of this game. And now they're back in level terms. Barisic almost caught out. Suta reads the danger and slides in. And then Raskan helps it on its way. We'll need a positive reaction to that, that's for sure. Real class from PSV Eindhoven, though. Dummy from Saibari made all the difference. Here comes Sima at the other end, though. Dessers wants it in the middle. Sima across, looking for Dessers. It's half away. Raskan putting the pressure on, but PSV had enough numbers in the box to be able to deal with it. It's 1-1 one, one on 62. Again, more positive from Sima down that left-hand side. This, again, like he did at the start of the half, driving, opening up his legs. He does have pace once he gets going. He's got a long range of stride. Puts the ball into the box. I thought for a second it was going to fall to Raskin, who'd made a late run into the box, but PSV cleared. Here come PSV again down the right-hand side with Luke de Jong, looking up at the penalty area, where he'd love to be right now. The right-hand side of it, he knocks it back to Taze. Cantwell wins it back for Rangers. Good battling by Todd Cantwell over there. He turns and hooks it up the line for Seema, infield for Raskin. Raskin, though, caught by Fearman, and now it's lying at the edge of the box, he's popping it through to the right-hand side for Saibari, pulling it back, looking to try and find Fearman, I think. Eventually, Rangers with Barisic, but he loses out to Lang. Look, like he had the situation under control. Lang reversing it, back down that right-hand side touchline for Bakayoko. Back it comes to Lang at the right angle of the area, up against Barisic, low ball, looking for De Jong, sliding in Suter to put it out, for a throw-in over on the far side, or might even have gone behind for the corner, in fact. Throw, it I swung, think. It looked like it might have swung behind the corner flag, but it's going to be a PSV ball either way over there on the PSV right as they attack the goal to the left. It will be a throw-in only for Bakayoko. Oh, no, he's given him no, the he corner. he has given the corner, yeah. Did you. not look like it went out at the corner. Looked like a throw to me. Bakayoko will take. As we approach 64, in swinging corner from Bakayoko into the area, is headed away by Sima. And picked up on this near side from for PSV with Sardinio Des taking on Cifuentes, driving down the left, strong against Cifuentes, who battles with him. It's Des who comes out on top though, rolls it back to Saibari. As this game's gone on, has become more and more of an important figure. As Cantwell comes in, makes the challenge, and out it goes for a PSV throw-in down on this near side. Cantwell's done awfully well in terms of not on the ball tonight as much, but off the ball, he's won a lot of balls back for Rangers, or at least put PSV under severe pressure. He's working hard to close them down. There's back a Yoko down the right, taking on Barisic again, gets the early ball in, sliding in Suter to block. It goes behind for a PSV corner again right in front of that vibrant bunch of PSV fans over on that far side. All the players went over there to celebrate with the goal scorer, Sangari. It looks as though John Lundstrom's going to be on shortly for Rangers. Well, this match sitting at one apiece. Remains 3-0 Falkirk in League One, going into the final seven or eight minutes. They are 3-0 against Sterling Albion in League One. 1-1 here at Ibrox, corner for PSV, right-footed, outswinger towards the penalty spot, Romalo wins the header, and it comes down into the six-yard area and wide, with Pascali looking to get something on it, he's always shaking his head, he's not happy, feels he should have done a bit better there. Yeah. Anyway, it stays Rangers 1, PSV 1. I would agree with him, Barisic just got caught on his heels and they get flicked on with Romalo. Pascali was there, he just missed it with the left foot. We've already seen it, he's, he's, he's got decent control in that left foot as well. He probably should score. Tavernier finds Cantwell, heavy touch though, allows the challenge from Veerman. Break back to Goldson. Swings the ball forward, Cifuentes with the control as well. Can find Sima though, cut out by Taze, long ball forward. De Jong is there, but so too is Goldson. He heads it back to his goalkeeper. Here goes Suter, striding forward, rolling it to the left along the deck to Barisic. Looks up, looking to get Seema in behind again. Can he keep it in play? No, it's gone out, swung over the line. That's going to be a throw-in to PSV, and it's going to be a double change for Rangers. Ravi Matondo and John Lundstrom are going to come on for the hosts, Neil McCann. Yeah, Seema coming off, but he might not be too happy, but he's had a couple of runs, positive runs in the second half. Um, and outside his goal, I mean, a quite brilliant goal. He's, he's kind of struggled in the match, so Matondo coming on will, will give a different threat, probably down this right side. 
Um, maybe Cantwell will play off the left now, I'd imagine. Ryan Jack coming off, he's going quite. I know he worked back ever so well about 15 minutes ago to stop what looked like a certain goal for PSV and Lundstrom, just to give a little bit of extra solidity. And, and Lundstrom can also drop into the, the centre-back line in between the two, in it, between Suter and Goldson as well, should he need to. On comes Lundstrom, who in a couple of special European moments in Rangers colours, most notably that Europa League semi-final late winner against RB Leipzig. As PSV prepare to make a change and bring Goose Teal on in just a moment. Next off in play. PSV have it, played from one side of their box to the other, and then Des loses out to Cifuentes, who finds Lundstrom, where Des looks to try and flick it into the box, but it's cut out and it's cleared. Cifuentes again on this near side, looks up, right foot cross comes in, it's cleared by PSV once again, this time through Pascali. Back towards the edge of the box for Rangers. Dessers wins it. Now Tavernier. Now Raskan loses out as he tried to knock it forward into the box. It was cut out by Taze. But here come Rangers again with Matondo. Gets the pick of the ball. Not once, not twice, but three times. He drove towards the six yard area. Eventually his luck runs out. And PSV get it out. Oh, oh, no, he's gone. It's crazy. Cantwell's already on a yellow card as well. I tell you what, he's got a jail here, I think, you know. Is the not going for it? He's already he's on a yellow, Todd Cantwell, as PSV make the change. I tell you, his heart must be beating. I know he slides in there. It's, it's a yellow card leg. all day long, isn't it? Yeah, the trailing left leg. Just cut, I mean, the warned, referee... He's been warned by the referee. Yeah, he's done him a real favour. That is a rush of, rush of blood to the head from Cantwell. Well, I mean, he has been rushing about and pressing ever so well tonight and putting the PSV players under pressure, but he's got to realise that he's on a yellow card now. That was a crazy, crazy challenge to make. Goose Teal comes on, another Dutch international, five caps, one goal. Scored against Turkey in the most recent World Cup qualifiers. And he is on. Actually scored a hat-trick on his debut for PSV in the Super Cup win over Ajax last season. As he replaces the Moroccan Saibari. Game on again. Rangers, incredibly, still with their full complement. I mean, that just looked like a standard yellow card for Todd Cantwell. He's already on one, because the VAR cannot be used for second yellows. Lundstrom loses out the edge of the box. Here's De Jong, his PSV attack. Chance here for Lang, out wide left for Dest. Short ball to Lang, who's eyeing up the byline here. Up against Tavernier, gets him to the byline, and it... He runs out of pitch in the end and it goes behind for the goal kick to Rangers and it will stay 1-1 in the 70th minute of this Champions League playoff first leg. As much as Lang's looked really dangerous tonight on the ball and his movement, you can see how sharp he is. I'm looking at end product and I've not see it, seen that much from him. You can tell he's a very talented player, clearly. But, you know, sometimes... Sorry. That's yeah, from right. John Suter. Yeah flip forward towards Matondo attacking the PSV box and he wins the corner off Andrew Romalo really good positive play by the Welshman Matondo yeah good from him but superb from Suter spoke about him in the first half stepping in and an exquisite little ball over the outside his right boot to release Rabi Matondo who's found himself in at the Champions League squad ahead of Yanis Hadji Michael Beale has been saying about he's looking quite direct he's looking a real threat and you can see there he's certainly got the tools he just hasn't shown them at Rangers yet maybe this is his big breakthrough came on against Livingston in the league game recently and made a big difference PSV have had eight corners this is just Rangers second as Tavernier digs it out headed away by Romalo who gave it away in the first place as Cantwell throws it back into his own half for Raskan he goes back to Butland, takes a touch and takes it outside his box. Looks up with a long right foot raking ball forward towards Dessers. Dessers does win the header against Jamalo, but only for Taze to clear down that right-hand side. Suter will pick it up and mop it up and put it back to his goalkeeper. And it is Butland with the right foot, clipping it out to this near side. Cifuentes with the header in field, away by Buscali. Down the line goes Lang. Goldson read it. And Goldson well, I think Goldson made a bad one here. Connor Goldson, who for most of his Rangers career has been injury free, but he's had injuries over the last year or two to deal with, and the two of them came together. Their clash of ankles as Lang chased the bouncing ball. Goldson came across and 
Two of them have ended up hurting each other. Is that a clash of shins? Oh, I'll tell you what. I think Golson just there. gets to the ball fractionally before Lang and absolutely crunches his own shin and knee onto Lang's very, and it was too. Very committed players I don't, I don't going see, I don't at full have, speed. Yeah, I don't have a problem with either. No, Steven. I don't actually. No, I don't think there was any malice in there. They were both just going for it. But the actual connection, when they collided, they were going at such a pace. I was worried for Conor Goldson's knee. I'm pleased because sometimes when you go in like that, you open the inside of the knee up. Uh, he's holding his shin. Yeah, there, looks, I think. right above the ankle. He catches Noah Lang in the side of the knee. Lang's back up. He seems as though he's going to be OK. If he's just having a word with James Tavernier, the Rangers captain. Wilson being told to get off the pitch before he can come back on, as is the rule. A ten apiece. Noah Lang's off the pitch as well, isn't he? Yep. Uh, he's coming back on. But they're both back on now. Picked up by Taze over on that far side. Leads in the other Champions League playoff first legs tonight for Copenhagen against Rakov of Poland and Roy Antwerp 1 0 up on AEK Athens in Belgium as PSV come forward. Slip to the left hand side for Lang. <laughs> Yeah, a slip there as Goldson tried <laughs> oh, to make the challenge the end, he didn't even make yeah. the, have the, to make the tackle and the ball touches I'm sure it touches his right because it, it goes to hit him his left it does we've all done it and then you just kick fresh air the fact that you're laughing at him as well I thought was poor no I've done that Fellow professional. tell me you've done that I've done that <laughs> I've watched you do it I've watched you do it Oh, no, okay. but as he, he called it spot on. It just catches his standing leg. He's, I tell you, he's just about to whip it across to De Jong in the middle of the box as well. It's 1 1 here at Ibrox. 73 and a half on the clock. Long ball towards Cyril Dessers, who tries to flick on when it comes right through to the keeper. He's getting an awful hard time. Dessers. Yeah, yeah I mean. So early in his Rangers career. He didn't do too much wrong there. I mean, he was just going up for a header, didn't get any direction on it, and it goes through to the goalkeeper. But, yeah, I mean, they're on his case, that's for sure. I remember the, the man he, who he's taken the number nine shirt from, Antonio Cholak, started his Rangers career brilliantly, scored, of course, the, in both legs of this one, including the decisive goal in the tie in Eindhoven in the second leg he started really well and I suppose if you're coming to a big club then you have to start well Dessers he's managed a couple of goals though in the early part of his Rangers career as uh, I think the foul throw is going to be given against he's going to give him a second Bakayoko. chance he's, well I think Bakayoko's point is that it slipped out of his hands rather than it was an attempt to take the throw in he's perhaps fortunate to get a second chance at that leaves it for Taze this time and Pascali moves it out to Serginho Dest on this left-hand side for PSV. Across the halfway he goes. Infield to Lang, back to Dest, back to Lang. Inside his own half, he has to go, though. Rangers looking pretty solid, even though they've conceded in the second half. I would say over the course of the match, they've kept PSV at arm's length a lot of the time. And we need to do that for the remainder of this one. And obviously next week in the Netherlands, too, as uh, Bakayoko... Works it back the way, Singari gives it away, and now Raskan jinking between he and Beerman. Raskan, well read by Pascali, comes to meet him. Comes to Matondo on the far side. Down goes Pascali, and he gets the free kick out of the referee. Over on that far side, about level with the edge of the centre circle, with the scoreline at one apiece. It's an interesting point in the tie, actually, when you think about it, looking at the second leg next week, clearly. But these last 15 minutes could potentially hold the key to the Champions League groups. It's an important time as Veerman comes forward. He's found Dest inside the area, disguises the ball, and then the tap by Teal is cut out by Goldson. And Sifuentes finds Cantwell, gets it over the head of Biscali, driving forward, rolling it to the right for Dessers. He's onside. It's an early ball by Dessers. Chance for Matondo!
just what Steve and I looked at each other was it just offside from Dessers I think it is but Canwell picks him out but what a ball from Dessers and a beautiful little finish from Rabbi Matondo whether this will be allowed to stand or not I'm not sure my initial uh, reaction you're watching it, it live be. and it wasn't foul in front of us was that it was offside yeah but what a finish it is oh, it's brilliant I mean the whole, the whole play's good initially from Cantwell nicking it over the defender's head plays it out to Dessers the first time pass across the face Matondo with a lovely side footy finish but yeah, I, having said all of that offside, yeah. I do think that he's off oh it's so, so tight close. isn't it it is so close I felt Dessers just went early He's, he's given it, yes, he's he's given it all. The goal stands. And Rabbi Matondo, who's had such a difficult time trying to make an impression here, has scored his first Rangers goal. What an one of the biggest goal. goals that he'll ever score comes in this Champions League playoff. And one of the biggest goals potentially of Rangers season already. They lead PSV 2-1. Well, Liam, we spoke about it at half-time, about being able to hit the counter-attack. You need speed to hit the counter-attack. And Ravi Matondo, another really big decision from Michael Beale to leave something on the ability of Hadji out the team and our, our squad in favour of Ravi Matondo. Well, there's the rewards. Well, um, first, first thing that springs to mind is Gesser's involvement in that goal he's come in for some criticism but what a way to pass it was as Lang goes up the other end he shoots blocked by Goldson and behind for the corner double change for both teams in a moment PSV behind again 12 to play of the first leg if Rangers can hang out these next 12-15 minutes it's absolutely huge for them to take this lead over to what's going to be a very difficult tie next week uh, in the Netherlands it's just such a big goal here comes the corner for PSV, headed away by Lundstrom, albeit he's headed it behind for another corner on the reverse side of the goal as the corner came from the left. Rangers are going to bring Danilo and Dabal on in just a moment. And it's going to be a corner for Bakayoko to take in front of the PSV supporters over on that far side. Inspringer with a left foot coming up here. The Rangers have their lead back. After Sima and Singare had traded goals, Matondo restores the advantage. He'd survive the tight offside VAR check. And here comes Bakayoko. The referee's not happy with something in the box, though. I'm just telling a couple of the players in the goal line to behave themselves. It's Pascali and Barisic. Here comes the corner for PSV. Bent into the area. De Jong's header! Goal! 2-2 Luke de Jong arms out stretch celebrates in front of the PSV supporters Rangers were 2-1 up for just a couple of minutes from the set play Bakayoko onto the head of de Jong who bullets it past Putland and it's Rangers 2 PSV 2 as we approach the final 10 well if there's one man you don't want to leave slightly unmarked in the box it's Luke de Jong there was so much jostling going on in the middle of the the box on about a penalty spot. De Jong just... John Suter just gets slightly underneath it. In fact, he gets a nick which takes it on to, I think, De Jong's head and puts it into the far corner. The thing is, he's, he's in a wrestling match and he's just making him... Um, he's just making himself really big and strong and, and trying so hard to stop De Jong getting across in front of him. And actually, in doing so, catches himself under the ball, Stevie. Slightly. Right with, yeah, yeah. And, and that allows De Jong just to get his head on it. I mean, that's a hammer blow. I've not enjoyed uh, the lead enough to take the sting out of the PSV side. But it just showed you, I mean, De Jong is such a threat in the box. It's a wicked corner as well, I have to say. Yeah, the delivery and swinger, good. left-footed, really dangerous. Dest and Lang have come off to be replaced by young Dutchman Shirandi Sambo and Jorg Vertesen, a Belgium. Belgian under-21 international who can play right across the front he's come on for Lang on the left-hand side Pierman will take a throw in here so nine minutes left of this first leg throw-in's taken into the box for De Jong comes back to Vertessens good play and then a chance here for Bakayoko to have a swing at it but it's blocked still an opportunity here for PSV Vertessens after it Rangers clear and we're back to where we were at the end of the first leg last year. Two apiece it was in Glasgow. The PSV. 
100% record so far this season. Looking to preserve that. Mascali shifts it to the right of the centre circle. It wasn't long before the Matondo goal when I said the last 15 minutes you're looking at could potentially hold the key to this tie. Well, there's been two goals since then. We're back to where we're... The scoreline is different, but we're back to the situation where it's all square. And as Briscali picks up on this near side and turns it back to Ramalo, he'll go back to his goalkeeper. Rangers' lead lasted just shy of four minutes, the second lead. Header won by Suter in the centre circle, but the referee didn't like his challenge on Luke de Jong, whose goal has hauled PSV back in terms for a second time, and John Suter's been yellow carded as well. And he is the fourth Ranger to go into the book tonight. Yeah, there's nothing in that for me. Eyes on the ball, there's isn't he? Nothing in that. John Suter goes up and wins the ball cleanly. You're not telling me it's the first time De Jong's been caught once or twice by a centre half. He's such I mean, a good really... striker, though, isn't he, De Jong? Yeah, I mean, he, really he is. is. He is. I mean, he's, he's for somebody his size, his link-up playing, his intelligence, and his kind of quickness of mind right about the box are excellent. Of course, he's a good goal scorer as well. But was, for me, there's nothing in that. He was, Absolutely not. He was involved in 28 goals last season. Luke De Jong. He scored 18 of them himself. Set up the other 10, and that's him now having scored that one onto five for the season as the long ball comes forward but it's the evades the two PSV players who were going after it there Teal and De Jong and it's right through with Jack Butland seven minutes of the 90 left two apiece Lundstrom to Tavernier up the line to Dowell first time to Lundstrom does well into Cantwell can he slip it through to Danilo not quite it's back from Romalo to his goalkeeper Danilo who replaced Dessers Dowell came on as well to replace Cifuentes. Fearman, the edge of the centre circle, rolls it to the right for Taze, down that right-hand side for Bakayoko. Teal at close quarters. Turns back, facing his own goal, and passes it back to Taze, in field to Sangare, now with Gush Teal. And then Sangare to Fearman. And then to Ramalo in the centre circle for Boscali. Out to this near side for Sambo. He's going to get it back here from Vertes and Sambo into the box, rolls it across. Chance for Bakayoko. Rolls it back to Sangare just outside the area. To the right hand side. Teal smashing it across. Blocked by Barisic. Picked up by Danilo. Runs into Ramalo though. PSV have it back on 84. Here's Sangare down the right hand side. Up against Raskan. He's got the cross in. Headed away by Suter. Rangers are going to bring Sam Lammers on in a moment as they try and dig this out, but PSV come again, Ramalo. Short ball to Bakayoko. Now it's Veerman. Rolls it to the right-hand side for Teal. To the overlap. And the cross comes in, headed away by Suter. Good play again by PSV Eindhoven. And this is some proper pressure they're putting on Rangers here. Cantwell goes down, Danilo turns and finds Lundstrom back towards his own box. Clipped out to the left for Matondo, but it was into touch for a throw-in to PSV, and Sam Lammers is going to come on here for Rangers, and Cantwell will come off. Yeah, it's probably the right decision, knowing that Cantwell's on that booking. They can't afford to have him missing. It's been a little, probably one, definitely if not two close decisions by the referee he's put an absolute power of work in tonight as Todd Cantwell he really has maybe not been as effective on the ball tonight although he was heavily involved in that second goal but he really has worked his socks off How are you reading these last five minutes plus stoppages Neil? Um, I think Rangers are going to have to weather the storm PSV have got, they've made their own substitutions they're slick they're moving it around do they settle for a 2-2 now then? No, uh, the Rangers, you mean? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think a 2-2 wouldn't be a bad result, you know, um, to take over to Eindhoven. I think this PSV team will go for it. I think they'll try and take a lead back to the Netherlands. But I, 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 was, I was sort of looking at myself there and, and thinking... Danilo's got some of the, the treatment that Dessers has got. Yeah. Two, two have bounced off him and he looks a little bit shy all of a sudden. They need him, they need him big because he's the spearhead so far. If the ball comes up to him, the little man needs to secure it and start eating the ground up to get Rangers out. They don't want to be camped for the final five minutes. Here is John Lundstrom 
for Rangers. Back to Suta. He was caught there, surely. Yeah, for Tyson. And the foul. That's a free kick to Rangers. And it's the first yellow card for a PSV player. And it is Jorbe Vertesen who is booked with a scoreline at two apiece. Finally poised, as it was 12 months ago. Rangers went out to Eindhoven and won 1-0 to end a 12-year long wait for Champions League group stage football. Can they repeat the trick this time around? It is... Rangers clearing through Connor Goldson. Look to that left, Matondo giving chase. Looking for space. Winning the throw in. That's gone out of play on the far side for PSV. And it's going to be Tays to take. Incidentally, finished Falkirk 3, Sterling Albion 0 in League 1 tonight. We arranged because the Beanos were up against Aberdeen in the League Cup last Friday. 87 and a half on the clock here in the Champions League playoff. Rangers 2, PSV 2. Tavernier comes forward. Clip ball, looking for Lammers. Lovely spin and turn. Shoots, block. Danilo on the follow up, but it's gone wide with the deflection. What a chance for Danilo, who missed that incredible opportunity in Geneva last week. And that is a huge chance. Michael Beale down there. The look of frustration on his face is there for all to see. Just put it high. Just put it high. Even if the defender doesn't block it, oh, the goalkeeper's yeah. saving it. You're right, you've got to get your foot through that and lift it. Just smash it into the roof. I'm just thinking, just smash that high because they're on the deck. Well, Lammers hits the shot. The goalkeeper makes a right mess of the save. It was an easy save to make. He kind of pads it out right out to the feet of Danilo, who takes a good first touch. At that point, he's got two and a half yards out, three yards out, swivel and hit that high into the roof of the net. And Rangers probably go on to win the game. Massive chance. Romalo is down with cramp inside his own box here as Rangers prepare to take their third corner of the evening. As we approach the 90th minute. There's a really good spot from James Tavenier. Takes a good touch. Great ball. Uh, sees a vision of, of uh, or gets vision of, of Lammers just going into the box and the big fella took a nice one, didn't he? And then it was, as you said, Tom, it wasn't a brilliant shot across uh. Benitez, but Danilo could have made himself a massive hero there. They're going to bring on PSV, they're going to bring on Yerdi Schouten, defensive midfield player, who was uh, in the same midfield as Lewis Ferguson at Bologna last term. One of the new summer signings they've spent big money on. And he's going to come on now by the looks of things. He's going to replace Pascali. And uh, double change, in fact, for PSV. They bring on Isaac Babadi. Dutch under 18 international, he's a PSV Academy graduate with his debut actually in their Super Cup win over Feyenoord at the start of the season but, uh, they are going to come on now, sometimes you wait and, you know, a defensive team will wait until the set play has been taken but yeah and you're bringing off a 6 foot plus player for Babadi who's about 5 foot so it could affect things a little bit taller than five foot. Did you check that height on Wikipedia, <laughs> Tomo, before you said that? Six minutes of stoppage time have been added. Two apiece. Have you got his height there, no? Rangers corner, Tavernier sweeps it in, Goldson attacking it, it's away. By Shouten, who's just on. Now PSV look to hit in the counter, Vertesen gives chase. Raskan's there, and he boots it out into touch on this near side, and it stays Rangers two, PSV Eindhoven two. Just Is about all Raskan could do there. He was under pressure. Just clear your lines. Throwing to be taken on this near side. Bold forward by Sambo. Looking for Vertes and Suter gets in the way. And away it goes for Rangers into the PSV half. Danilo beaten to it by Sangari. Here's Lammers on this near side. Up in the air, spending a lot of time in the sky at the moment. Drops down to Raskan. Beats it forward to Lundstrom. Was he caught? Referee tells Lundstrom to get back to his feet. Tavernier playing it forward for Dowell. Dowell's not going to get there. Sam will get there first and clears with the left peg. Lundstrom's underneath it for the header. We played one of the six minutes of stoppage time at the end of the first leg here. Two apiece, as it was at full time 
after the first leg at Ibrox a year ago. It's been a topsy-turvy game. Twice Rangers have led. Twice they've been pegged back. Lammers for Rangers. Powell, though. Free kick PSV. Midway inside their own half. And Lammers almost getting involved there with the man who he was embroiled with there, Veerman. The free kick has been given. It's a PSV ball. Just got a wee bit scrappy in the last five or so minutes. Probably suits Rangers, really, because PSV were knocking it about. Perhaps the changes haven't helped their rhythm. Lammers picks up and rolls it out to the left for Barisic. Down the left-hand side for Matondo. Matondo testing the pace of the defender. Right-hand side of the box is brilliant from Matondo. His efforts blocked it. Almost came back to Lundstrom. He's going to slide in to try and win it back for Rangers. He's done well. Teal was after it, Goldson's header, finds Raskan, out wide left, Barisic, Raskan continues his run, out it goes for another Rangers throw, taken quickly, Rangers smell, blood here, Matondo with the up and under into the box, headed behind for the corner, is there a winner in it for Rangers here? There's been an element of uh, tempo raised by Rangers in the last couple of minutes, Matondo done really well on that left side. He's cutting inside the box. He's definitely added something. He has. Tondo, I mean, obviously he's scored a goal, but I think just in terms of his pace frightens defenders and he's very, very direct when he runs at them. Sometimes he, he gets his head down and gets lost a wee bit, but he, yeah, but he's he puts panic defender into the defenders. defenders. He took his goal really well. A great ball to him by Cyril Dessers as well. The weight of pass was perfect. Now then, three out of the six of stoppage time have been played Barisic with the corner into the back post headed towards his own goal there by yeah, Singari I yeah. think it was Suter's claiming he was barged to the deck there inside the six yard box yeah did he get a barge in the back here by De Jong watch here the hands across him nah mm, nothing in it for me no not enough no he's made the most of it he's still appealing to Clement Tarpan the referee and he's already been booked so he probably wants to be a little bit canny there. In comes the corner from Barisic, headed away by Singari. Matondo. Oh, oh, oh. So close from Rabi Matondo, who caught it flush on the volley at the edge of the D. And that's just gone over the crossbar. Oh. What an effort it was. But it's just gone slightly wide as well. But it stays Rangers 2, PSV 2, four minutes into stoppage time. Six were added. He's flushed that. He's absolutely... I got a bit excited. He's absolutely flushed that as a foot wide of the post. The trajectory, the perfect. That was right in the postage stamp there. Header forward, Danilo putting the pressure on. Sangari gets there first, though, and clears with the right foot. Rangers, who are finishing the game strongest here. Coming close a couple of times, Danilo and then Matondo there as they try and take a lead to the Netherlands next week. It's the first time in the game that you felt that PSV look a wee bit uncomfortable or yeah. really uncomfortable. This last five minutes have been brilliant from Rangers. Yeah, I think, William, you're, you're, you're absolutely on the money. They've made changes and I don't think it's helped them. It's knocked the rhythm out of their game. Here's Lundstrom for Rangers out to this near side. Low ball Tavernier, his cross cut out by Vertessen. Throw in Rangers, level with the PSV 18-yard line. We're into the final minute of stoppage time. 2-2. Tavernier takes the throw and Dowell hits it but it's poor and he slices it badly wide and it will be Rangers 2, PSV 2 and not much more time of the minutes that were added on by the French referee are left there might be a little bit more on top because the subs made just the start of the stoppages but it's looking very like deja vu here guys it certainly is Liam yeah and on the face of it, I think Rangers have finished a stronger team, but taking a two-each uh, draw over there, if they can replicate these last ten minutes over in uh, Eindhoven, then not over they've yet. Got a chance. Yeah, not over yet. Here's Babadi, who's not long on, attacking on that right-hand side, squeezing it into Veerman. Now back Yoko leaves it for Babadi. He's trying to get back onto it, but the French referee has seen enough. Michael Beale and Peter Bosch exchange handshakes down below us, the two managers. A thrilling night here at Ibrox. New managers, but the same scoreline between the same clubs as the playoff meeting last season. 
and a real thriller. PSV dominating for big spells in the game, particularly in that first half. Rangers couldn't really get going, but they led at the break. Abdallah Sima with an outstanding goal just before the break, final minute of the opening 45. As he sent a rocket into the top right corner. It's a fabulous goal. Both Rangers' goals were of the highest quality tonight. And that one from Sima gave Rangers the boost they needed at the interval after PSV, albeit they had lots of the ball, lots of corners, only threatened Jack Butlin's goal a couple of times. Then into the second half, things really kicked off. The equaliser coming for PSV Eindhoven as Rangers were looking for another one. The equaliser from Sangari, who got the first for them here in the first leg last year, just beyond the hour mark as he smashed home after a good work down the right-hand side. The dummy from Saibari, Sangari latched onto it and hammered it home to make it one apiece before Rabi Matondo's first Rangers goal came in a Champions League playoff here at a jam-packed Ibrox. There were 14 minutes left. Cyril Dessers rolled it through to him, right-hand side to the left for Matondo, and he calmly hit it into the bottom right corner. It was another brilliant goal and Rabi Matondo's first real moment, real proper moment in a Rangers shirt arrived at that point. But the second lead lasted less than the first. Just four minutes later, Luke de Jong, the big number nine, the PSV skipper, heading home from the corner to bring the Dutch Cup winners level for a second time on the night with the... Rangers going close a couple of times late on through Danilo and Matondo again. See, so he hit a screamer from the edge of the box, high and wide. It wasn't too far away, and it would have been quite the finale had that one been on point. So it was 2-2 at Ibrox after the first leg last year. It's 2-2 after the first leg this year. This Champions League playoff tie is on a knife edge yet again. It finished here with the return a week tomorrow in the Netherlands. Rangers 2, PSV Eindhoven 2. It's a big week of European football right here on BBC Radio Scotland and what a match to kick us off here at Ibrox this evening. Rangers 2, PSV Eindhoven 2, it was end-to-end in the second half, some great chances. We thought Matondo had just nicked it for Rangers at the end there after he scored a quite terrific goal, but it wasn't to be the ball flash just past the post, about a foot wide of the post. A lot of the Rangers fans are staying in here to salute and clap off their players after a tremendous performance, you'd have to say, against a very, very good PSV Eindhoven side, a real challenge for Michael Beale's team in the Netherlands next week. Full coverage of that one right here on Sports and Neil McCann. I think the first thing to say is, what a terrific game. It really was, aye, and I, and I think a lot of Rangers fans, um, other people outside the, the game, maybe looking at this fixture and the form that PSV were in, looking at how they've been playing, scoring goals, might have thought that Rangers... Um, where they get rolled over tonight and I think they've, they've really equipped themselves well um, at times defended superbly I think John Suter and, and Goldson were, were excellent tonight John Suter one mistake but this is the level you're playing at Kenny you get one mistake at this level with someone like De Jong a class operator and you get punished and the, and the ties then uh, back in the balance again but on the whole I think it's a, it's a good result to take over to Eindhoven they'll be encouraged to come and really really attack we've spoken about their attacking threat all night tonight but Rangers will be able to go and try and play on that counter attack with the score that I mean an exquisite goal I said the quality of that goal there's so many good elements yeah. in that second goal there's a uh, Cantwell's technique bravery uh, decision making to find Dessers his first time pass the weight of the pass the vision to see it and the first time finish from Rabi Matondo was beautiful but on the whole um, yeah a really really good game of football tonight some really technical players on show and the endeavour from both sides I have to say was superb yeah I was trying to think of examples there Tom during the game of, of, of players that have just had that turnaround like Matondo had. I think maybe of Ginelli at a time early last season at Hearts, but looked at his, his way out, didn't have a future, and then he came right back into things, you know. And I think Matondo, this could be the game tonight that really kicks him on. Yeah, I would say so. Um, I mean, if you're not going to get a boost confidence-wise uh, from scoring a goal in a, a, a Champions League playoff game against a top side, and it was an excellent finish, you have to say, and out with his goal. 
I felt as though he offered something different for Rangers. He offered them a threat. When you look at Rangers' kind of front three or the four, four uh, new players that they've got, um, you look and you think maybe there's a lack of pace at times in uh, the options that they've got. He brought that pace and he, he kind of terrified the defence at times because they, they were dropping deeper because they were scared of his threat in behind. Um, he takes the finish ever so well. It's right on 18 yards. And to hit it first time like that, it's not an easy skill. Opens his foot up and puts it past the goalkeeper. We said before the game, or I said before the game, Rangers need to be in this tie for the away leg. And I think they're in the tie. Uh, you know, basically you start this game next Wednesday evening. Uh, it's a one-off game to reach the Champions League. And Rangers showed in the last 15 minutes and in other parts in the second half that they're capable of causing PSV problems. For all PSV's amazing passing and movement off the ball and they've got incredibly talented players I don't feel as though they really cut Rangers open you know at will if you like the second goal um, comes from a corner kick which probably you should deal with better so on the whole I think Michael Beale will be really pleased there were times when Rangers had to dig deep and they had to defend and Michael's right to point out the two centre halves at times the defending was excellent tonight um, but can you think of really Jack Butland being tested too often throughout the game? I can't really. He'd won, he parried around the post. I actually, yeah, he could have held that actually, but yeah, yeah, it was a fairly routine you save, know, that wasn't was, it? That was from you know a, um, a set play. So uh, Rangers will be really pleased, I think, with this evening's work. And there was a wee bit of fear going into the game tonight, given that Rangers' start to the season hasn't been overly impressive, and PSV seem to have been in this incredible run where they're scoring so many goals and looking really dangerous. A lot of people probably had written Rangers off before this game and they've shown enough tonight that they can go over there next week um, with a bit of confidence. It will not be easy. It will be very difficult in a very hostile atmosphere and as much as Ibrox and this crowd were right behind Rangers tonight, it's going to be the complete opposite over yeah. there and it's another big stadium with a big atmosphere. They're going to be under a lot of pressure, no doubt about that, Neil McCann, when they go to the Netherlands. You used a word in commentary there in terms of Jack Butland, you said commanding. He seems to give that back line an awful lot of confidence. Yeah, he does when he's coming for things. Uh, he'd won it the weekend where he maybe didn't look uh, great where he got under the ball, but when he comes, he listen, keepers make decisions and sometimes they, they can make mistakes, but I thought tonight he looked, as I said, very commanding, um, takes the pressure off of your two centre-backs to go and win the first contact. Um, they're going to need him, like they did against Servet, uh, to come up with big saves because although, as Stevie's pointed out there very well, that as much possession and passes they had and threat on the pitch, they never mm. really they didn't cut Rangers open too many times, they didn't pepper Rangers goal but I believe it It'll probably be different um, in PSV. I, I, I feel that I said there's a responsibility uh, on their shoulders to really come out and attack Rangers. There's maybe one or two disrespectful comments made uh, coming into this game from their camp, um, from one or two of the players. Uh, that comes from their, their, their confidence, their own ability, and what they like as a team. Probably looked at Rangers and thought. As we're probably all done looking at them at the start of the season, yeah. but they're not they're not jailed right. No. They're not clicking a hundred percent. But Michael Beale, I feel will be really, really pleased with tonight going over there. Um still in the tie. We, we spoke you have to still be in the tie for a second leg. Um and Rangers are right bang at it. It might suit them to go and play in the counter-attack. I think Matondo, as you, you, you opened up there, could that be his lifeline at, at Rangers to really ignite him? Because he, he probably was thinking coming back in pre-season, he might have been one of those players that's looking for the exit door. Yeah. Um, does tonight ignite him? Does it does it throw him back into the, the starting slot? Because they're going to need speed. If you're going to play in a counter-attack, you need speed. I'm not sure Dessers has got that. Danilo has it, but you can see that his lack of physicality can be, um, can be a problem. But um, again, he's another player that could have really, really made himself a hero tonight with that chance. Yeah, and, and you know, it's, sometimes it's tough watching a player struggle there. And you guys have been through it, you know, tough times in your career, and you just feel, you just want something to happen for him, don't you? And it, he's struggling right now. Yeah, listen, it's, it's going to be confident, there's going to be belief in his own ability. He got, he got a bit of fortune at the weekend where he's deflected shot, finds the back of the net, sends uh, Rangers into the next round of the cup. And sometimes that's all you need, but. <laughs> Tonight is a is in Champions League football or Champions League qualifiers. Sometimes chances don't roll about too often, and when they come begging, uh, and you've got a, a big price tag in your back and a, a big reputation coming to a club like Rangers, 
that's the ones where you need to step up, smash it into the back of the net, and suddenly you've you've guaranteed your your, uh, your hero status. But he still has an opportunity. As I said, it was so important. You're going to um, Eindhoven, banging the tie, and Rangers are. We will hear from Michael Beale later in the programme, Stephen. What does he take from this game tonight? Is he starting to see this side gel? Yeah, I mean, I think... Um, yeah, it's still not the complete performance there this evening, but there were so many positives for him to take. I thought the work rate and application from the team were excellent throughout the match. I felt as though they carried a threat. His substitutions... When he looks at his squad, he knows he's got play players that can affect the game to bring them on. It'll be interesting to see wh whether or not he starts with Matondo um, over in the Netherlands because you are expecting Rangers to be under the course. They're going to need an out ball. Dessers doesn't have that mobility um, and, and uh, Danilo maybe doesn't have the physicality. So between the two of them, I, I would be tempted to start uh, Matondo just for that out ball just for that surprise element that he can bring he'll be full of confidence after his goal this evening um, but yeah I mean I think there's a lot of positives to take, um, yes they'll be disappointed that they conceded two goals here at home but they've also managed to score two goals and they've weathered the storm and it's the hardest thing to do really when you're under the cosh consistently is to keep those con concentration levels so high because one wee switch off and you're done at this level and I felt as though the concentration levels for the large part throughout the match um, from the whole team were really, really good. So I think we're, as far as he's concerned of the team gelling and being the finished product, I don't think they're near where he wants them to be and where they're probably going to need to be uh, if they do qualify for Champions League or Europa League or to go and win the title. There's improvements to be made but certainly tonight was a step in the right direction. Tom has spoken commentary, Neil, about Cantwell's work off the ball. Uh, we spoke a lot last season about Tillman. Perhaps that wasn't there for him. We spoke earlier about Hadji, didn't we? You, you, I don't think you get that from him. Cantwell is a really pivotal player for this side, isn't he? Yeah, so it scales. You know, you, you can be heavy in one side and light in the other, and, and it's about trying to find the right balance. It's trying to right, find the right fit for the right formation. If you've got a 10... Um, and he's lazy and he just thinks, right, or not lazy, maybe just work shy and maybe just thinks, well, I'm, I'm, I'm brilliant on the ball, but you're losing that um, industry off it, then it can affect you adversely. Um, I think Cantwell offers a real... Uh, he offers a real thrust from that area of the pitch. He can be a catalyst sometimes to the press, what he did, if you remember, 20 minutes into the second half, where yeah. he pinned PSV back in their own six-yard line. Um, I think he's got quality to affect... Uh, Rangers in the final third. Has he got the Hadji uh, ability? No, I don't think he has. Does he have Tillman's uh, ability? Probably not, but it's but he's probably got a better mix of all round of what Michael might be looking for. It's so difficult uh, as a manager to find the right uh, the right shape that's going to suit how you want it. I, I think, um, I can't remember who was is, is speaking about uh, at the start of the game. It's, it's escaped me, but they're talking about how Michael Beale sometimes adapts how he plays against different opposition. That was a Rangers fan, Craig, that joined us. Craig, yeah, from was, sorry, that's podcast, right. Yeah. And if you remember mm. Ange Postacoglu um, over across the city, he didn't change. It was like, you adapt to us. And yeah. I think Michael would like to get to that stage with this Rangers side where it's he knows how he's playing. He's got a, a first 11 in his mind. They're clicking, they're gelling, they're, they're beating teams freely. And it's like, OK, this is how we play. Now you have to combat us. Um, and I think that's a dream as a coach to find a formula that is going to work and it's going to make opposition change to you, not to them. Um, but listen, uh, I think tonight there's loads of positives. I think Raskin continues to improve. Um, Sifuentes will, will continue to improve. I think John Suter is really starting to get uh, a little bit of consistency of, uh, of minutes under his belt and I think he's looking a class operator. There was one time tonight where he stepped out in the second half and he just looked he looked brilliant. Um, and as I said, overall, I think his performance was really good. All's good with Big Rick, uh, the Dutch journalist, is six foot seven. He, he just gives a friendly is he wave. Right with there, me? So we're all good. He gives good, a friendly good, good. wave. It was a scary moment earlier on. I, have to <laughs> I was say. digging out the neck brace just in case. There. <laughs> <laughs> He's a big lad. It, it was interesting though to hear hear him talk about this side and tell me he thinks may struggle Tomo to get into this PSV side. And when you see them in midfield, you can understand that there's so much quality. 
Yeah, I mean, there's no doubt they're littered with quality, but it's not not just in, in midfield. You know, you saw the, the trickery of Bakayoko. I thought Lang was slightly disappointing. And yeah. I mentioned during the game about his final ball. And I'm only looking at it from a selfish po point of view as a striker. If I'm De Jong in the middle of the, the six, I would rather my winger just got it out of his feet and put it in because I know I'm a threat in there. Just get me the ball in in the box, and, I, and you know I can go and attack it. At times, you know you can see his ability is absolutely sensational. He's quick, um, such a low centre of gravity on the ball. Difficult player to play against, and he caused Rangers problems tonight. But when it got down to the the nitty gritty, if you like, of of how many um, chances did he create, how many efforts in goal did he had, have, etc., etc. You know he didn't. You know, as much as he looked at it, he didn't really cause cause too many problems. Um, but yeah, if we look at the in the middle of the park. You know, Veerman, I, I felt grew into the game. Sangari, he's a class operator. Sabari looked very good for spells in the game. So there's a team full of real quality players, better players than what Rangers have really across the board. And that's why it's going to be difficult when you go over there to PSV uh, to take them on in their own backyard because. You're going to need to replicate tonight's performance, but I think you're going to need to be not having conceding two goals because will you score two over there is going to be a big question. So they've got to make sure that they're as switched on defensively as they were tonight um, and as competitive because at times, in the, certainly for me in the first half, it, it was PSV who were really pressing Rangers and not allowing Rangers to settle. But as the game grew on, you could see Rangers feeding off the crowd and growing in confidence. Um, that they were actually starting to assert themselves on PSV and yes the changes had an effect on that but PSV didn't enjoy the pressure that Rangers were putting them under certainly in those last 20 minutes and if anything's going to give you a boost going into uh, next Wednesday you know you should go back and watch those 20 minutes the last 20 minutes when Rangers were in the front foot they were being aggressive they weren't just sitting off and, and, and allowing PSV to dictate they were trying to dictate themselves and they proved that they could do it so it's about having the confidence to go over and do that in an away game. It's it's such a uh, a kind of different um, and more difficult thing to yeah, do. Yeah, but, but it's what we've been talking about since the start of the season with Rangers. That they need to do more in terms of putting threats on, on opposition teams. Those All those players that, that, that Michael Beale have signed in the front areas of the pitch um, have, to, uh, have to build an understanding, A, of what the coach wants to do, but have the freedom... And almost like the, that kind of telepathy that their combinations will work in the final third. I'm looking at the, the stats there coming up on the screen. A moment ago, Kenny, the PSV had 20 attempts, Rangers 11. And on the yeah. face of it, you know, it's not. It, you wouldn't say it's, it was that bad. I remember Tavernier having that one where he is a little worked, a little one-two, and he, he might have That's gone with his head. Yeah. But that, I, I wouldn't say they, they in turn really kind of really battered Benitez in the, in the PSV goal either. Um, so it's just trying to find a balance um, and a confidence that they can go and threaten PSV over there. That's built on a foundation of not being pinned back because if you give yourself 70 yards to make up, it's always going to be counter-attacking all the time. That means that a counter-attacking Kenny very often is built over maybe two or three players, mm -hmm. four maximum, you know, because generally you're, you're coming from a, def a defensive position. So it's how to combat that. And I was speaking about in the first half, at how to get that make-up right that you stop them gaining territory. I felt at times tonight that Singari uh, and Veerman in the middle of the pitch um, had had uh, had loads of space to play in, and that was because Fuentes was bouncing wide to combat the fullback, um, and on the other side Raskin. So when they were springing wide, it meant there was an overload that they could go into, find Saibari who was sitting in the ten position all the time. So it always made Rangers sit deep because they're always worried that they can't squeeze up because they're always going to get overloaded in the middle of the pitch. So it's just looking at it, pouring over it, video analysis, making sure that. You're walking guys through it. These guys, they've got to go again at the weekend, unfortunately. You know, PSV, that's another thing. PSV, I believe, have got a free yeah. weekend. I was, was going to ask you about this. So, I, heard, I, heard, I heard Michael Beale speak about this. Lee Johnson spoke about it. Stephen Naismith spoke about it. Is, is, as a player, when you just started your season, do you really want that break or do you want game time? Do you want competitive game time? 
It's a difficult one. Um, <laughs> do you want to be in two days' t- time travelling up to spend the night in a hotel up in, in Dingwall for the game on Saturday yeah. when you know you're then, you're then travelling again probably on Monday or uh-huh. over to uh, the Netherlands? So it's more uh, about that side of it, Tommy, you think, than actually the game time? Well, the, the, the Dutch players, are the, no, not all Dutch, but the PSV team are, are going to be rested now for the next five days. Rangers can't afford to, really to slip up in the league, so they've got to go into Saturday's game with the right approach, and it'll be very difficult because I, I feel as though County have started the season impressively. So they've got to go and get, give this game on Saturday 100%. And you know what it's like when you've got a, maybe a cup final coming up and you've got a, a league game the week before it, and you're going, oh, right, I just don't want to get injured, just get me through this game. Yeah. Maybe do, don't meet the game the way that you would no. had you not had the, the, the big fixture coming up. So I don't think it is ideal. And I, I think... Uh, um, I think of Stephen Naismith's comments at the weekend, right? What did and, he say? I missed Well, he, he was talking about, you know, he thinks authorities need to do something, give them the break. But prior to that, and the guys have been saying it in commentary, that they look behind, actually the previous weekend, say against Kilmarnock, they look behind Kelly because Kelly had had the competitive games in the League Cup. So I, I, that's what I'm just wondering, as a player, do you want to be out there playing? Well, of course you want to play the games, aye, and it's up to you to keep your condition right. I mean, there's so much sports science around, boys, resting now. I mean, sports scientists are getting a grip of players on the training field and say, as if you're running too, too hard. It never happened in my day. It was sort of just, you looked after yeah. yourself, made sure you, go, you went home, you prepared right, um, and then you were ready for, for your, the next training session or the next match. Uh, I think the problem you're, you're talking about, getting into the League Cup games, the, the, the teams who are in European competition feel like they're maybe just slightly behind. Yeah. Oh, do you know what? Do you want to be in European competition or do you want to be in the early stages yeah. of the League Cup? So, yeah, I, good I, point. I, so I, I'm pretty sure I know what the, the board's feeling would be in that and the supporters. So you want to be in the big competitions. I do feel that um, they, they have the massive advantage of having more preparation time, not only to get the lactic acid out of their legs and travel home and relax, it's a preparation time where they're just gearing towards next week now, this PSV team. They're not having to um, maybe rotate the squad, refresh the, the group and prepare for, by the way, a really decent Ross County team who have improved on last year. Um, under Malky Mackay. So that is no easy. They're already points behind Celtic in the league. Mm-hmm. They're going to Dingwall in a difficult place and they've been sitting um, watching how Rangers are going to play tonight. They're fresh going into that game. So it's not easy for Rangers. Maybe I think as a, as a, as a nation, we could help our European side. I, think sides. The other I thing, agree with that. Terry, the other thing is kind of tactically and getting all your video analysis and getting the hours in on the training pitch to prepare for Tuesday. So Michael Bilo have an idea of how he wants to approach this game and he's got to get it spot on. He's got to get it absolutely right. They've got to go pile through all the analysis and and but you cannot approach that game until Sunday. <laughs> yeah, I know. So you're you're looking at a couple of days. Yeah, but you're travelling as well. Ah, so you're looking at a couple of days prepared, preparing for the biggest game of the season potentially so far. Well, probably would be if they were to get through to the Champions League. It's absolutely huge for the club. Whereas PSV have now got the best part of a week to sit and prepare and come up with how they think. So I do think it's slightly a disadvantage. Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't think you could deny that. It is what it is, and Rangers will need to go up and approach the game in Dingwall in the right manner on Saturday. Um, I do think that he'll freshen the team up for it. I do think that he will do that. Um, He's got plenty of options, hasn't he? He does, he does. Matondo's probably earned himself a start. Yeah. Um, he might play Danilo instead of Dessers. He's got options in the middle. Lundstrom come on and look decent tonight. He might rest Jack um, for the game. Uh, so he's got options of what he can do and uh, but the problem is they can't afford to weaken the team or they can't afford to go up there and, and not get a result either so the, the pressure but that is the demands of being at a big club like Rangers the big games never stop they just keep rolling around and you've got to deal with that as a player and as a staff and as a group uh, and unfortunately that's just the way it is and it will never change when you're a big club like this you've got to just next game's coming round you've got to deal with it however I do feel as though right let's jump in Uh, Peter Bosch the PSV manager is first in the media room he's speaking right now they think we take a lot of risk but for me it is not taking risk at all it was a big mistake of Ibi to lose the ball there Uh, he has the qualities to play well Um, so I believe we play well and uh, yeah 
No, not yet. But I, I don't believe it's it's that a bigger problem. I don't know, but I don't think so. Can you say something about the situation of Patrick from Arnold? Will he be affected? Uh, he, no, he, he's out for a couple of weeks. Um, yeah, mixed feelings. Um, difficult game um, in, 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 the, in the end. In the end, yes. <coughs> it was also possible. Um, you have no history with, with this game. Eh? That, that may be an advantage because people in Eindhoven may be a little bit, yeah. Um, yeah. It, may be, it may feel difficult after this evening. And eh? 2-2, that may be an advantage for you that you have no history with this game. Yeah, but not only because I have no history with the game. I'm never afraid for nothing. This is really bad if you are afraid of what can happen. Or I always think that go for it. And don't think if we don't succeed, then that's not the right mentality I believe in. So even if I was there last season, this season we're going to make it. This must be the mentality. Uh, if you play at home and you play against this opponent, against every opponent. Okay, good luck for that. Michael. Thank you. Uh, Peter, what can you tell about Dest? That I was really pleased with his performance. If you can imagine that yesterday was the first time he trained with the group. Uh, I told you yesterday that I think he didn't know all the names of the, of the players. But you couldn't see it. He was already connecting with uh, Noah. Of course, they played in Ajax together. But um, if you didn't train with us and you have a performance like this tonight, it's, it's incredible. Really good. Absolutely. And what do you think of uh, what, what are your thoughts of the performance of the opponent? Did they, is it what you expected? Yeah, this is what we expected. Uh, I already thought that we will play dominant here. Um, that they, would, that they can play the counter-attack really well and really fast. That's how they scored their second goal. Um, the energy in the team when the crowd is there behind them, uh, you see it a couple of times when they press us and they succeed, then the, the, the atmosphere was there. On the other hand, I think we played really well, a good position game, and then it goes down a bit. So it was more or less what I expected. I saw you angry in the first half a couple of times when they played the long ball too early. Yeah, um, you, you must change the side. This is what we saw. Uh, it was so easy to change side every time and then they run and, and in the end they will be tired. But we played too quick the long ball. Uh, after that we did it a little bit better. Is there something for the return to do a lot better, a lot better? No, we have to play a lot better, the return. If not, we will not go to the next round. And what must, what must go better? Oh, <laughs> easy. <laughs> Score more goals and don't concede the goals that we did today. <laughs> easy. <laughs> and what's your plan Football for that? It's not that difficult. No, what's your plan for that? <laughs> Sorry? What's your plan? For yeah, to do that? exactly what I just said. Score more goals and don't get the stupid <laughs> goals against you. Okay, and one more thing about the defense. Um, the window is one more week. It's open still for one more week. Is this something you demand as your technical director? I want a central defender. No, but it's not, it's, it's, it's not a secret that we are looking for a center back, a central defender, absolutely. And why is it taking so long? Because we want to have the right one. Okay. Good luck. You, we are here. Peter, how important it is now you don't have a match in the weekend, so you have seven, eight days preparation because all the players look very tired, tired of this match. Yeah. Oh. yeah, no, I agree. But, you know, the thing is that if you have between the games three days off, it's not a problem. If you have two days off and this happens more, <clears throat> then you will see that it is hard because you're not fully recovered when you play the next game. And this was an intense game. So, therefore, I'm, I'm glad that we don't have a game this weekend and we can prepare for next week. And how uh, will the program be? Uh, you will train every day or you give two days off or uh, you already figured it out, I think? Yeah, we, ha we have a program. And uh, 
I first must tell my players. So if I tell you now and they will read it on, on, because they're always with their phone, that's not the thing. I will tell you later. But we have a program for, for, for the guys already tomorrow. And yes, we will have a day off and also Sunday off so they can recover. But Why was it you were so dominant in the first half but no real chances? What, what did Rangers so good why you didn't get any real good chances? No, but they have a good team and it's not that easy to create a lot of chances when they are well positioned and uh, well organized. And they were well organized. But on the other hand, quick they had with their fullbacks yellow cards, one in the first half and in the second half also. So this was something that I believe we, we should have challenged more to provoke the one against one from Johan and the one against one from Noah. Um, but I agree, it, they were well organized and, and, and in the last third we must do better. The last few minutes were very shaky, of course. Uh, no yeah. central uh, centre backs. Uh, uh, Ibrahim and Jerdy, Jerdy uh, defender. How uh, how nervous you were at that, at that time? Oh no, you don't have time to get nervous. <laughs> you try to help your team and, and as, as best as you can. It's hard because they will not hear you in this stadium. But you don't have time to get nervous. Thank you. Any other questions? Possibly asking just what you said in Dutch at the top, but just if you get an idea of, of how you think the tie is balanced going into the game in Eindhoven. I always believe in my team. I, I, I believe we have good players, and I, went, I came here to win this game. That's why I'm a bit disappointed that we didn't. Uh, so we have to win next week. And you mentioned the bookings for the two. Rangers fullbacks. Were you a little bit surprised that Todd Cantwell stayed on? He had a, a challenge in the second half already on a yellow card. Oh no, I, 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 I no, n not at all. No, I just talked about my players. That if the fullbacks they have a yellow card, you have to try to get to, uh, them in the one against one immediately. <laughs> and maybe yeah, because the question was why you didn't have so many chances. Maybe because they already had a yellow card, they couldn't be that aggressive in the one against ones. So maybe we should have provoked them more. <laughs> Yeah, that was uh, the PSV manager, Peter Bosch. There, I have to say, from a media perspective, sounds like a joy to deal with. Takes a straight question, gives a straight answer, quite entertaining. I'm also thinking as a player, super positive, super confident, simple messages. Yeah, I like it. Was your interviewing technique book lying down there for the Dutch boys, no? <laughs> it was nice to hear some good questions. <laughs> I have to say, better than Tinglish, is not it? I think... Uh, <laughs> I really enjoyed that interview. He's, yeah. he, he's straight. We said it before the game. Straight. No yeah. nonsense. Very relaxed. Very bullish. Aye, very confident <laughs> in his own ability of his team. Um, I liked him just batting away that last question about Todd Cantwell. Um, not wanting to disrespect in, uh, Rangers at all in any way or looking for any sort of excuses or anything. He's just talking about his own side. I, he came across um, very, very well there. What, what screams out to me is that He's super confident for, for oh, Eindhoven. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and what I like uh, from a, for our own perspective, he's backing up exactly what we've just been, doing, what we've been discussing, Kenny, is the, the luxury of, yeah. uh, of an extended period of time that these guys can recover. He said there, I mean, you can't go at that if you've got a game at the weekend after the, such a tough yeah. game. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, the Rangers have to go. Um, they don't have that luxury. Um, but no, I, I liked the interview. It was very refreshing. And um, you can clearly see, or clearly hear for a, from, from that interview, that they will be really, really aggressive in Eindhoven. I think he'll ask more of, of Noah Lang. Well, he uh, said Bakayoko, that, didn't he? he was yeah. talking about in the final third, for all, the, just reiterating what we'd said about the amount of possession that he had, the amount of entries into the final third that they had, that they didn't manage to work the goalkeeper more often, and that was a big disappointment for him. That's something that he'll be looking to change going into the away leg which will be difficult for Rangers because you do feel as though they're going to be coming right out of the traps after Rangers over in over. I think they have to weather an early storm over there and try and find their way into the game um, but he's also concerned about Rangers on the counter, spoke about their second goal which was a brilliant counter attacking goal um, and that is why I think that Matondo might have a sniff a starting because when you do play in the counter to have somebody of his speed, which I don't think the rest bring. I don't think Lammers brings it. Seema, to be fair to him, in the second half, had a couple where he opened his legs up, but 
he's not got the pace of Matondo for me. So I, I think Matondo, you know, wouldn't be a, a bad shout going into this game for the away leg. Yeah, it's going to be an absolute test of discipline, composure, concentration. It's going to be a real backs to the wall effort out there next week, isn't it? It's going to t- it's going to take an almighty performance to get through this tie. Yes, um, but even more so than last season, Neil. Yes, uh, but I think uh, Liam came up with a stat. Was it five out of seven uh, that they've played at home and gone away? Maybe four out of five. I was almost there. I heard the five. Um, <laughs> four out of five. Uh, where they've played at home first and gone away and got uh, good results, um, and they're capable. Uh, but it's going. Uh, the prize is so big, Kenny. I yeah. mean, the prize is enormous. It really is. And um, well, before the game, there was two ninety minutes to get there. Mm-hmm. Now there's one, one, and it's nil nil yeah. starting from. So it's like you know. Yeah, the, I think most pe- most people connected with Rangers would would take that. But um, there's got to be a frustration hasn't it? because that they couldn't hang on after that sensational team goal that they could. Yeah, four yes. five minutes or something was yeah, it? Yeah, so they, they equalised on 80 and it was 70, four minutes, 76 yeah. the Rangers goal. Yeah, and and a disappointment. A John Suter, I thought was superb. I've already said about the two centre backs. I thought acquitted themselves, acquitted themselves really really well. Um, and he just get caught under it, John, just by making sure that De Young's not getting across the front of him. Because when you're talking about it, he should probably make sure he's on the inside. But because De Young's probably a couple of inches bigger than him, a threat in the air, he's making sure that he's not going to get across him. So he's so keen to make um, that certain that he just, then when he's in position in front, he gets caught under it and doesn't get enough purchase on the jump. And then uh, they succumb to an equaliser. But... Um, yeah, these, these are all fine details at this level you get punished on, unfortunately. Why do we see, Tomo, an improvement from Rangers in terms of an attacking threat in the second half? Was that a lot to do just at the confidence of that goal right in the stroke of half-time or, or, or was something different in that second period? Well, again, Matondo brought a bit to it, but I think um, the team as a whole started to play higher up the pitch and they weren't camped in. Uh, they managed to get a bit, better grip of things in the middle of the park and they... Um, it, it was nothing to do with uh, the forward players necessarily that were on. As a unit, everybody just took 20 yards further up the pitch and they weren't allowing PSV to basically dictate where the game was going to be played. And it makes you wonder why you don't do that from the start of a game. But when when you're playing against a team that were keeping the ball like PSV were in the first half and you find yourself in these kind of deep moments defensively as a, as a team and as a unit it is very difficult to get up the pitch and as much as you say to the back four get out squeeze up squeeze up and you try and move everybody out when the ball is getting fired round about you like it was in that first half it's such a difficult thing to get out as a whole team and get up the pitch they managed to get to grips with that round about they were better Uh, Stevie and like Servette Michael has obviously seen that and adapted it slightly because I remember I mean Tease um, Tease and um, Dest on the other side enjoyed so much time uh, in the final third as full-backs we spoke about the balls getting flashed across the face of the the goal for Rangers I don't remember that happening too many times indeed it was it was a centre-back uh, Biscagli uh, that, that fired the cross and that ended up going to towards the equaliser it wasn't the full-backs so I think in play Michael's shown he's capable of uh, identifying where trouble is coming uh, adapting the tactics on the field and, and improving things and I, I think that's um, a real good compliment that he that, that was able to do that We spoke a lot Tom before the game about the Rangers fans and the part they would have to play tonight and it was an experience they're probably not used to here at Ibrox being in the back foot for long periods certainly at the start of the game but they played their part tonight I mean Daniil got a bit Dessers got a bit but they, they played their part tonight and the noise in here particularly that second goal when that went it was electric wasn't it yeah, the atmosphere is always good on European evenings, uh, unless of course Liverpool are scoring their sixth goal last season. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I mean, like the, the players feed off it. The players feed off it, and you could tell that the last ten minutes, especially. And actually, they mentioned that they had the reference that in that press conference uh, with Peter Bosch that it was ropey for PSV the last ten minutes because the players were feeding off the crowd and they were thinking, right, we can go and get the winner here. Uh, and they very nearly did. They pushed PSV hard at the end. All right, they'd lost a centre half, and the kind of shake up had changed a bit for them in terms of personnel. But um, it's huge. I mean, it can work two ways because, as I've said previously, having 
played here and when you are getting stick it's, it's difficult there's no hiding place out there and you can feel very small at times on the pitch if you give the ball away to have the brave I felt small all the time well you do <laughs> there's a reason for that um, but if you do give the ball away or you are getting a bit off the crowd to have the bravery, bravery to go and show for it again and, and take the ball again uh, is a difficult thing to do and you, you, there was times when Dessels was getting a wee bit and I felt sorry for him because you know he's he was so detached from the rest of the team and getting so. Do you get frustrated as a lone striker? Touch. You do. Well, of course you do. But you've got to just make sure that you're doing all you can for the team at that stage, and that is working as hard as you can. And when the ball does come up to you, fighting for scraps and trying to even winning a throw in, you know, 20 yards far up the pitch gets just everybody out. And there's me talking about how deep Rangers were. It just brings everybody up the pitch. Um, so and and Danilo. That's him that had, you know, two good chances in the last two European ties. I'd love to have seen him score that one. It would have given him a huge boost. He yeah. looks like he needs. He looks like he needs a boost. He's come with you know a, a decent uh, price tag. Um, not quite hit the ground running, but um, again, that's a chance. I feel as though he should have scored. You know, we both said in commentary, if he just lifts it, if he just lifts it, it's it's in. And when things aren't going well for you, you tend to kind of snatch at things a wee bit, and you're kind of overthinking every scenario instead of just playing with more freedom. And I get the impression, looking at Danilo, he's he is playing quite tense and and not as free as he would be um, if he, he was banging the goals in and everybody was loving him. So. I'm hopeful that that will come for him and for the other uh, forward players at Rangers. It's going to be so tough out there, Neil. But they've shown in the past, you know, Cholak did it last season. You go back to one of the, the most memorable Rangers goals, 1978, Bobby Russell uh, against PSV. You know, it can be done out there. But I, I, I've heard Barry Ferguson talk about this before. And you speak here about what it's like as a home player from the crowd getting your back. But what it's like when you're in a cauldron like they're going to experience next week. And that's when you need leaders and guys are going to puff the chest out and lead from the front. Of course you do. You're going to need bravery. Um, you're going to make good. You're going to need big decision makers, good decision makers. Um, cohesion in the team. I think the distances I spoke about it tonight. Don't detach yourself at half time. Don't detach yourself from from the the components of the side. So if it's a if it's a striker, don't run away and press yourself and detach yourself from midfield because the good teams will play through you. Or if a midfield don't get up in that, if your centre backs are not up because you, the ball get dropped into a ten or a striker coming off the game. I've experienced it, Kenny. We've gone out to Eindhoven and uh, I think it was one 0 we won that night yeah. uh, in a very hostile environment. Uh, as Tomo speaks about, Big George scores a typically brilliant goal strike, uh, dropping down, volleyed it. Remember it? I was just making sure that I was getting out of the way. Um, <laughs> and really pleased to see you hit the back of the net. So, I mean, there's enough in the in the history books to show that you can you can travel and get big results. Only in recent times have Rangers proved that they can do that. And I'm so desperate uh, to see that. All our uh, teams who are performing in the, in the European competition progress, um, none more so than getting to the, the Premier uh, European Competition Champions League. And I hope that the Rangers can go out there and do a, a, an amazing number and on PSV and come through the tie. Well, the masterpiece has been completed. Tom English. We is back. We're just padding for you here, Tom. <laughs> Come on then. <laughs> That'll be on the website soon. Tom's taking the game. So much to talk about today. It was, it was terrific, wasn't it? It was a brilliant game. Uh, brilliant atmosphere. Uh, really good goals. Um, you know, it was very intense from start to finish. Rangers fans must be exhausted by it, you know. <laughs> Wouldn't expect under the cosh for the first 44 minutes and probably fearing the worst and maybe thinking, gosh, this Champions League thing may not work out this season. Then a miracle goal. Then an equaliser. Bit more pressure from PSV. Then they go 2 1 up with an outstanding team goal. I mean, absolutely sensational. And then they can see it again straight away. So, and and like at the end, like there, I think PSV are a better, better team. They're further down the down the track as a team. They're better individual players, better collectively. But Rangers have a heart. They have a stomach for the fight. And if they didn't have it tonight, I think that they got that they got well beaten. I'm not sure if it's going to be enough for them next week. I think there's still too many question marks at their attacking players, the ones that have just come in into the club. Um, I don't think they'll get through. But I think Michael Beale will probably be encouraged by the fact that they stayed in the fight. They were up against it. They defended well. As the boys were saying in commentary, I think Cantwell is a ball player. 
but his best work tonight was Donovan. He's hard work. He's honesty. He's you know galvanising the crowd, chasing everything. Yeah, the lost causes. Off it, he they? was he was everywhere. I bet he did more kilometres than any other Rangers player out there tonight. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised, Tom. I'm very taken with how he played. You know, and the leadership that he showed, and they're going to need that. I just think there's too many question marks about too many players in the team because they're new players still settling in to go to Eindhoven next week and win. I, I, I can't see it happening, but they're, they showed a lot of a lot of character tonight. You're not shy in having your say on the authorities. Now, it's not going to change at the moment, but if we don't bring this up and talk about it, nothing will change. Mm. And we spoke there about Stephen Naismith saying last week, Lee Johnson saying, Michael Beals had his say. We just heard from the, the PSV manager, delighted that they've got the weekend off. This is surely something we've got to look at. Yeah, but we've been talking about this forever, Kenny. But, and, but how, does it, how does this change? It, it cha- it cha- I'll tell you how it changes. It changes if the if the t- 12 clubs in the, in the league they go they go to the board of the SPFL and say we want this to change, then it changes. But they haven't. As a collective, they haven't gone there and done it. It's not like Neil Doncaster or Murdoch McClellan is going. No, you can't have this. They can have it if they want it, mm-hmm. if they push for it, if they campaign for it, and they say we want this. But they don't. They don't as a collective of clubs, a majority of clubs. They haven't. I don't know if it's gone to a vote. I don't know if they've gone to the SPFL board. But we keep saying the SPFL uh, made up with the clubs. So this is coming from this, the has clubs. Come, this has come from the managers. It's not necessarily been echoed by those above them at the clubs. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, they can they can moan all they like. They have. I would imagine that they have it within their gift. If they really, really want this to happen, the clubs can get together and say, "We want this to happen." Celtic and Rangers are the two most powerful clubs in the world. Hearts in the world, in Scotland, <laughs> in Scotland. Sometimes it just feels like that. <laughs> and Hearts and Hibs and Aberdeen are also very powerful in Scottish in Scottish football. Those five clubs alone, yeah. they go and they say, "We want this to happen." Then it will happen. What are you expecting to hear from Michael Beale tonight? Um, I think he'll be. I think he'll be satisfied with uh, the work rate and the character and all the rest of it. Um, I think he will praise um, Cantwell and a few others, Raskin for digging in, Suter, uh, Golson showed a lot of leadership. At this rate, we'll be kicking off at Eindhoven by the time we hear from him. I was going to yeah, say, I'm yeah. hoping to hear his car running so he can get home. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, he's I, taking I, his time, isn't he? he? Well, he is, yeah. I don't, I, don't know, I don't know what the delay is, but I, just, I think... Broad Lenny will say, look, it's 2-2, as we were last season. It was 2-2, and Rangers did the job in Eindhoven. Um, I think this is a better PSV team. I think there's more kind of question marks about this Rangers team. But I think he'll be. I think he'll be, I think he'll be fine. I think he'll be OK. Do you think this Rangers team's stronger than the team of last season? See, the, the European team. So before the additions come in, before the two boys come in, have done really well in January not not at the moment but it's still as I say there's too many there's too many uncertainties in the team I, d- I don't know how how they're attacking I don't know how um, Dessers is going to work out or Sima or Lammers or Danilo I don't mm-hmm. know I haven't seen enough of them mm-hmm. they might hit their stride get a bit of confidence and they might become very effective I know Morelos was a kind of busted flush last season I know Ryan Kent was a busted flush last season they didn't contribute a lot kind of living off their reputations Things needed to change. The, 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 the beginning and the end and the in-between of Rangers is how has Michael Beale signed? Has he signed well or has he signed uh, poorly? And we still, we still don't know that. We won't know it until months down the track. And that's... Until we know that, we can't say whether they're better or worse or the same. Huge week, as we've been saying, Neil, for Scottish football in Europe. What a game tomorrow night at Easter Road. Full coverage yeah. on sports and should be a cracker. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. I mean, Aston Villa last year um, really, really improved um, and had a terrific finish to the year. Uh, watched them start this season. <laughs> I mean, they're a good outfit. They really are. Um, Lee Johnson will be relishing it. I mean, I'm pretty sure, I'm, sh- I'm sure that Lee Jono was manager uh, and took his team to play Man City or maybe they, they came to his ground when he's Bristol City, I think. Um, and I remember him just really been up for it. I, I feel that Hibs um, have got players that might be good on a counter-attack 
I say we're talking about Rangers, talk about Yuan, um, Martin Boyle. You need electrifying pace to be able to use uh, counter attack. And um, you I don't know who you're going to get from Hibs, do you? I, that, I think that's gonna, the thing. Oh, listen, I know, but <laughs> my goodness, this is a this is a tough. Aye. Tough game. Um, we're all wanting Battle of Britons. We're all wanting to see yeah. how we fare against the, uh, which is renowned and spoken about uh, as the best league in the world down in uh, the English Premier League. Well, this is an opportunity to see one of their their, their big sides um, coming here to Scotland and playing Hibs. Um, I was going to be really kind of naughty there and say. Uh, no, not a big side for Rudd, because uh, I'm a Hearts fan, but uh, <laughs> uh, I can't. Careful. No, I can't see it. I can't see it. Um, but no, I think uh, I think it's brilliant for uh, for a team like uh, Aston Villa to come to Easter Road. It's um, it's a wonderful opportunity for our league to showcase um, what we can do, and hopefully. Hibs put on a really good performance and get a good result. Yeah, I saw something interesting on, on, on Twitter uh, the other day. I take it as accurate. It was just looking at the, the financial gulf that's developed between Hibs and Aston Villa. So go back to 91-92, 2.2 million turnover for Hibs, 7.4 million turnover for, for Villa. Two seasons ago, 11.8 million for Hibs, 178 million for Villa, it, it just shows how tough it is now, doesn't it? I mean, and listen, we, we saw that first hand here last season when, when they were uh, looking at the just, That's what your wages are against mine. <laughs> <there as well. laughs> they've just spent 80 million in two players in the last few weeks. Yeah. I mean, they're coming here with a team full of top, top players and stars. Um, I think for Hibernian, it's going to be a very difficult evening. They have got players, and, and Neil's right to point out, their forward players can cause problems. Mm -hmm. I think they can. Um, but you just don't know what Hibs team's turning up at the minute. Yeah. They've been very kind of inconsistent. It'll take an absolutely huge performance to get anything from the game. And actually, uh, looking at Villa's record under Unai Emery, down at Villa Park, which is a fantastic stadium. Brilliant. Absolutely superb place to go and play football. It'll be a brilliant experience for all of these uh, Hibernian players and... Uh, for the manager and the backroom staff and for the club uh, to go and experience it. Um, but it's going to be so, so difficult. Um, just hope that they can get through tomorrow evening with without taking you know a bit of a beating. If you look to last weekend's games, Villa, Villa took four off Everton. And I know Everton aren't the mm -hmm. team they maybe were in the English Premier League, but they're still, they're still a right good team. And for uh, Villa to have taken four off them at the weekend, it does fill you with a wee bit of fear. Uh, when they come up here to to take on in, uh, it, Hibs in Edinburgh, it's it, it's amazing how teams like Everton and they're not the only one can spend so much money to look so average. Man, Man United probably the same Man, boat, are they Man, not? Man, Man United even <laughs> even even worse. Yeah. Chelsea the same. Spend hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millions of pounds to look mediocre. That, I mean, that's almost an achievement when you think about it. <laughs> no, no. I mean, Chelsea, they spend nearly a billion and look at the state of them. Yeah, dreadful. I, I mean, how do they do that? Kenny, you'd, you'd be manager of Chelsea for half the, the current manager and you'd do a better job, Kenny. No, no question. Thank you, Tom. I yeah, would do it yeah. for one week. <laughs> <laughs> give, 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 give Big Kenny half a million a week and he would definitely do a better job than Chelsea. <laughs> I, 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 think I, I, think, I think I'd lose my rag dealing with these footballers, I think. You'd miss, uh, you'd miss Sports Sound. I'd miss Sports you'd Sound. You'd miss Sports Sound. Well, Sports Sound on Thursday night, Neil. Hearts, your, your former club, very, very good in Europe last weekend, but what a, cha what a challenge faces them on Thursday night. Yeah, Pauk, uh, yeah, uh, again, we keep on saying it. Unfortunately for, uh, for our teams, um, <clears throat> They're going to come up against opposition who are who are good. They've got good pedigree, Pauk. Um I think Carapides is Christoph. Christos Carapides is he is he still? Uh, I think he's he's at mm -hmm. um, the Greek side. I'm not I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I'm sure he is there. Of course, he used to play. He's an ex-teammate of mine yeah. over at Hearts. Um, but they deserve the opportunity um, after a wonderful performance against Rosenberg. Uh, at Tyne Castle. I mean, that was that's a stadium that I absolutely love, and hopefully Tom will echoes it. I mean, yeah, it's, it's brilliant. a brilliant place to play when it's rocking, and it was. Cammy Devlin, Lauren Shankland, outstanding. Big boys been up top with uh, Shankland. I think made Hearts a different animal altogether, and, and and that was a real good shot in the arm for Scottish football. That I know Rosenberg are not the the, the team that they once were, but they're still a good side, and um, I thought they were well worth. 
their, uh, their victory going through. So they deserve the opportunity to go into this game, the next one. But again, it won't be easy. But Tyne Castle can be a really special environment. Um, I'll be covering the game for uh, for BBC and I'm, I'm I'm so looking forward to it. And Lauren Shankland, they've just got a natural-born goal scorer. That guy gets an opportunity very, very rarely. Um, does he not come up with something special? Is it five? I think five and five so far already this season. Boys and five. So if they can get chances to Lawrence, if boys plays up top, they've got a real opportunity of taking something out to Greece. Yeah, and Aberdeen, of course, as well on Thursday night. Uh, they see they signed Jimmy McGrath today. Interesting yeah, to see so how, that, how he does yeah. for them. Kind of lost his way a bit. Yeah, but good, good player. Like yeah. Get him, get him back playing to his best stuff, and uh, he is a good acquisition. Yeah. It's, uh, Aberdeen, Aberdeen. I'm not quite sure what to make of Aberdeen. They've got some very, very good players. They've not started this season kind of how you were expecting yeah. them to. Yeah. Um, it's not been quite the start that I think they were hoping for. But again, very early in the season, they've got a lot of new players bedding in as well. You'd expect them to pick up. Um, but again, it won't be a, an easy tie. Um, Obviously, they're away in Sweden first leg, so um, you'd imagine it would be difficult. But if they can stay in the tie and bring the tie back to Pitodri and have a full Pitodri in the second leg, then that would be brilliant. By the way, is Michael Beale going to Ross County? Right. Sorry? I thought he's already on his way to Dingwall. <laughs> he's taking his time, but he is now in position. The Rangers manager, Michael Beale, now taking his seat in the media room down below us here. Before, haven't they? Two each can lightning strike twice. I think so, yeah, of course. Naturally, we'll go across and be extremely positive. There was moments of tonight's game where I thought we were very good. I thought we scored two good goals. I thought all night we caused them problems defensively. There was areas of the game that we'd want to improve in, for sure. Um, but everything's to play for. We wanted to set up next week. We never had the game fully under control because at this level and against the level of opponent we're playing against, it's hard to have the game fully under control. But with 10 or 12 minutes to go, we had the result under control. So we'd be super, super disappointed we were conceding from a set play because Jack had a good game without having to make big saves. And then we have the massive opportunity even after that to win the game. So we need to get rid of the frustration. It won't help us. We need to reset. Obviously, we have a game in between, which might be a good thing uh, to keep our mind on. And then we'll go across to Eindhoven and it's a cup final. You, you mentioned there, obviously, the frustration. You know, at 2-1, I guess you're looking to hold on. How, how frustrating was it to concede that, that goal? Uh, and also, in terms of going out there, it's going to be a, a different game, isn't it, on their backyard? Is it a concern that you've conceded it? It's always a concern when you concede off a set play, but we'll even that up next week. That's the, that's the message to the players. You no know, set plays are... Uh, are an important part of the game and if we defend that moment well then we go next week with, with a lead now the way it is we've got to go away from home and get a result uh, to go through the club's done it before uh, we've played a lot in Europe the last few years our away form's been good we played against an opponent tonight that's not been beat in many months and clearly it's a good team it's been well invested in but there's areas in their team we can hurt them and it's important that next week we need to show 10 percent more i think tonight for my new group of players it was a really important night there was moments in the game where we struggled but we fought really hard for each other there was moments in the game where we did well the crowd played a big part of it as well Delighted for Abdul Asima scoring. Delighted for Rabi Matondo to score his first goal. The fans now will get behind those guys for sure. But I thought Cyril Dessas tonight, he also showed why he's coming to the club. I thought he won the tussle between the two centre-backs and he comes away with two assists and I'm delighted with him. Two cracking goals, as you've talked about there. And the last kind of 10 minutes or so, you, you had a real good grip on the game. Um, how much do you take from that going into the second leg? Yeah, we take a lot from it. Look, it's a, it's a new team in terms of uh, coming together, a lot of new players. Um, there was moments in the game I'd like us to show a bit more composure and make more passes. I think it will make the game easier for us and we can stay with the ball a little bit more. That was the message, but the resistance is against a good opponent. Next week, uh, somebody has to win. And with the crowd, they'll obviously come for us, but that will give us spaces that we don't have domestically. And with some of the pace that we have and some of the players we have, that gives us big opportunities. David? Michael, uh, you mentioned there Rabi Matondo. You'd said a couple of weeks ago about perhaps bringing in a winger or finding one from within the club. Is Rabi beginning to make you think that he could be the guy that does that? 
Yeah, when I came into the club, it, it had a knee issue that was long-standing. And in every game that Rabi's played for Rangers, there's been moments for him to score on assist. And it all comes down to his final pass or his final shot. He's aware of that. He come back for pre-season and, and come back in great condition. Um, and he's had a real go. And I'm pleased for him. I think the last two or three performances, he's done really well. He gives us something we don't have. But also, we have a lot of variety and we want to keep the opponents guessing. And I think him and Abdullah give us something um, a little bit different this year that we maybe didn't have all times last year. And I just felt that the the spaces in this game, it was made for Rabi. That's why he came into the squad and and uh, he, he obviously uh, rewarded himself with the goal. Martin? Michael, you spoke about the frustration at losing that second goal, but on the flip side, how heartened are you by the response to that moment and the way that your team finished the game probably should have taken a lead into next week? I think with this new team coming together, you want to see some good signs from them. And tonight when we were struggling, we fought for each other, we run for each other, we problem solved on the pitch. We're a team that generally and usually has a between 60 and 70% possession. Tonight was a different type of performance. The weekend will be different again. This new group are learning very, very quickly. And I think nights like tonight bring them together. I don't want anybody to underestimate us next week because it's in our club to go and, and put this performance on and we'll have our thousands travelling over there as fans and as a team we're going there to get this job done and we'll give it everything we can. It's a cup final and I think tonight for my group of players, we'll, as a new team, they need like, nights like tonight. Well, I think the the tyres evenly evenly set. I don't think that them and their coach are, are travelling back home thinking this is a job done. They all know how hard physically that game was. At the end of the game, it looked like they had one or two bumps and bruises as well. So, listen, it's finely tuned. I think that the two penalty boxes are going to be decisive. It's important that you play well between them. But the most important thing is you take your chances when they come. For my team, um, the, actually the few chances we got tonight, I was actually much more pleased compared to the domestic form where we're creating a lot more and being wasteful. I thought the two goals we scored tonight were excellent goals. Caps. Michael, you, you talk about being a big night for your new team. Do you, do you feel that this was the best performance you've, you've seen from them this season? And if so, how much encouragement can that give you that in seven days' time you can improve again? It's the only time we've had to defend. It's the only time in, in the games that we've played, in all, in, in all fairness to the domestic games, the three domestic games and the two games against Sevet, we had the majority of possession. Tonight was a different type of game. There were spells in the game where we really had to defend. We had less possession and it gives you different things and different qualities to show. So it was, a, it was the best performance in a certain way. But in the way that we want to play, of course, I would like us to have more possession, more spells in the game where we show more composure because that will lead uh, to more chances. So I'm not going to sit here and say it's the greatest performance I've ever seen for my group of players because I've got I've got highest estim I've got high ambition for this group uh, domestically and in Europe. So I think we can go again and let's hope that this time next week we're talking about even a more complete performance from them. Okay, can I just get a quick word on Glenn Kamara been linked with Leeds today? Can you give us an update on that situation, please? Uh, nothing that I've heard about that. So unless anything's happened while we're preparing for the game, no, no, there's nothing concrete on that right now. Stevie? Michael, just on that, you commented on the players having to battle for each other and, and when there's a lot of kind of positives for the fans, immediate you know, kind of response from them has been a sense of pride in the performance tonight mm -hmm. and the fact that they gave us absolutely everything. Do you feel that as well? Yeah, I feel that as well. I think, listen, battling qualities and working hard defensively, it's so much easier to see that visually as a team working hard. And when we're playing against low blocks and people are running off the ball, you don't always see the same level of work. I'll assure you that the performance at the weekend, the distances covered will be very similar to the tonight. But I think for this group of players, having to sweat and run and make tackles and blocks for each other and to play against an elite opponent where you don't get it your own way are really important things in team building. I was here from, as everyone knows, for three and a half years. That team wasn't built in day one. You know, when we played Scoopy here in Europe, that team compared to the team that was beating Porto here and Feyenoord and then went on to beat Leipzig and, and Dortmund, there was a lot of grey days to get to there. I get everyone wants it now. 
now I'm at the front of that queue. No one's more frustrated than me, but sometimes I've got to be positive about it. Tonight was a step in the right direction. Let's focus on next week in what is a huge, huge game for the club. Robert, and then one more. Michael, did Todd Cantwell play that great part in the second goal, but did I see you at one point try to calm him down a little bit? This kind of challenge you threw himself into. Was that kind of, he's just trying to kind of get on me, keep his cool at that point? Yeah, because look, the, the, there's, there's times and places where you have to make fouls and tackles, and that wasn't one. You know, that, that one, uh, he just needs to be careful. And now, listen, he's usually on the end of things like that, so there's another side of it where I like him to show his grit and stuff like that. This is a new level again for Todd. You know, he's, he's not played in Europe in his career. He's obviously played youth international football, but he's not played in Europe as a, as a, as a player. So this is a new level for him again. The level compared to domestic football it goes through the roof. You know, if you look at some of the players they have, and listen, I think he would have learned a lot from tonight as well. He had a fantastic part in the, in the second goal, but it's tough to get on the ball against these teams and they counter press well and they're athletic and, and they're very organised. So it, that's why I say that this is the best learning thing for our team, but the most important thing is next week, we try to get the right result for everybody. Any final question? Michael, you mentioned there about PSV getting the, the weekend off, which I, th I think did happen last year as well. As you as a manager this early in the season, would you rather take this sort of positively into, into the weekend in another game or would you prefer the break? To be fair, we need to play this weekend in the league. You know, we had a, we had a disappointing first result. We backed that up with a 4-0 and it's important that we play this weekend. In future seasons, I think there's a discussion to be had because in this first batch of the season, we'll play nine games and some people will play four or five. So I don't think that's ultimately, I don't think that's fair, but it's the reality of being at a big club. So we mustn't moan about it. So, but I do feel that if other countries are helping their team have time to prepare, I would love time on the training pitch at the minute. We've played every three days and every three days, the team gets judged with nine new players coming in. That Everything gets judged. So yeah, I would like a little bit more time, but, we need to go to Ross County this weekend and we need to win a game of football. And we've got more than enough time to recover from that and prepare to go and give it everything we can in Eindhoven. Thank you, everyone. Cool. Michael Beale there, full coverage, of course, of all the weekend action on Sports and Tom English, your final thoughts on what we saw here tonight and where you see the balance in terms of this tie. Um, I think uh, I suspect that this this level of opposition is going to be too much for Rangers in Eindhoven, but I'd be enthused by the uh, the guts they showed. The two goals that they got were were class. Maybe that's going to breed a bit of confidence in the in the young in the new players, and I think they need it because they're still the jury's out on all of them, and it's very early days, so that's not not surprising. Um, PSV, I think they have more in their locker that they showed tonight. I think they can, you see some of the goals that they got. They weren't particularly ruthless tonight. I think they'll be better in front of their own crowd. I think it's going to be a, I think it's going to be a belter. Certainly after 30, 40 minutes today, I didn't think that Rangers would be going to Eindhoven with a 2-2 or a draw no. or much of a hope. I thought PSV were going to score one or two goals and then that would be, that would be it. But but they stayed in the fight, um, and if they've got a, they need to find a lot of class in the team. Uh, we know that they have they have um, they have a bit of heart there. That's what I would take from tonight. That they stayed in there. They battled. They battled hard. For the Rangers fans in their cars on the way home from Ibrooks tonight, Neil McCann, what can you say to them? What, what hope can they take from what they saw here tonight, and and looking at that squad and the options that Michael Beale has? Still in their car. Um, <laughs> no, I, 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 they're still in their car. I'm listening to the noise. Then, uh, we can blame Michael yeah, Beale. <laughs> yeah, as Tom said, they'll take a bit of heart from the performance tonight. They're still banging the tie and go to Eindhoven. And uh, we've seen Rangers get uh, wonderful results in European competitions in the past. And um, they can do it. Again, Michael's touched on the weekend. The weekend's vitally important to the don't lose traction uh, domestically. And once they take care of that, go to Eindhoven and try and churn out another big result that will see him take their place in the Champions League. And there you go, he wants, he wants a game this weekend. Yes, he wants to change things for the future, but he just yep. obviously feels his team needs so, that time to gel yeah, yeah. in needs, a competitive he, game. He said they need, they, need, they need a game in the league, so, so there you go, I think we can put that, uh, that one to bed for this season, maybe. And for or you, Tomo, not. in terms of what we saw tonight and looking ahead to Eindhoven next week? 
I think there's positives for Rangers uh, from tonight's game. Um, I do think that PSCB have got another level in them, especially with it being at home. The question, the big question is, have Rangers got another level to match that? Uh, and that's yet to be seen. Um, positives, yes. Still in the tie, which was the key before the game to still be in the tie, heading over to the Netherlands. And as Michael B. rightly says, it's uh, it's basically now a cup final for, for Rangers. You love a prediction, Tom English, so we've got yeah. about a minute or so left. Hibs, <clears throat> Hearts, Aberdeen, who is most likely to get a result this week? Uh, Hearts. Think so? Yeah, yeah, I kind of fancy Hearts, yeah. Mm. I think there's plenty, plenty of goals in that team. At Tynecastle, I would back Hearts. Yeah, yeah. yeah. there are plenty um, of goals in that team. They're a bit up and down, but you know, if, if they can, if they're, if they're big players, hit their stride. I think they can. I think they can get. Uh, I think they can get through. Big Aberdeen weekend. as well. I mean, you know, Hibs. Hibs. I would say, obviously, at least less likely to be. <laughs> well, so what makes you think that? <laughs> with, with, with a Hibs fan and a Villa fan of sports, and of course on Saturday Indeed. evening, Indeed. Tom, it was, it was quite interesting just to hear the, the different perspectives there. And you know, I think we put it to the the Hibs lady that was on. It's just like a roller coaster being a Hibs fan right now, and she said it was kind of forever thus. Yeah, you, yeah. You don't know what you're going to get. No, no, you don't. They're very, very inconsistent. Um, but look, you know, here, what an opportunity this is for them against Villa. Nothing, nothing to lose, everything to gain. All the coverage of that one on Sports and tomorrow. Remember, it's an early kickoff, so Sports will be on air at five o'clock tomorrow. As for this game here at Ibrox tonight, what an absolute cracker in the Champions League playoff at finish. Rangers to PSV Eindhoven to Sima with an absolutely wonderful goal, completely against the run of play, right in the stroke of half time. Sangari with equaliser for PSV on 61 minutes. A terrific team goal, a great finish on Rabi Matonda. Could this really kickstart his Rangers career? That was in 76 minutes. They could only hold on for four minutes. Luke de Jong with equaliser on 80 minutes. So it's all set up for next week. Of course, full coverage of that one on Sportsroom. But before that, a big, big week of European action continues tomorrow night from five o'clock. Please join us then from all of us here on the Sportsroom team. Good night.